This is Bob and Tom 24-7. 24-7. The Bob and Tom Show now presents the Law <laughs> Minute with ex-attorney Jack Thomas. Hello again, everybody. This is ex-attorney Jack Thomas. You know, I got a lot of mail here at the ex-law office, and today, let's open a letter. Well, this comes from young Davy Radonovich of Kokomo, Indiana. He asks, what is the difference between slander and libel? Well, what kind of idiotic, stupid question is that? <laughs> what kind of little pea brain moron would write me? I think if I were you, little Davy, I'd worry more about inbreeding than I would about the law. <laughs> Davy, that was slander. <laughs> if I would have written it down, it would have been libel. This has been the Law Minute with ex-attorney Jack Thomas. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, the law is your friend. It's the lawyers you have to watch out for. And remember this, the preceding has been a joke, not legal advice. Learn to know the difference. <laughs> hey, folks. <laughs> Boom. It's me. And you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. That's 24 days and seven hours. No, 27 days a week and 24 like the show with, with the guy who whispers all the time and saves the world. And Bob and Tom 24-7. <laughs> hey, it won't blow up the world. Stock Economopolis uh, is our guest. A Maryland burglar broke into a house, robbed a couple at gunpoint, and then forced them to play their piano so he could sing along. He was arrested for <laughs> armed robbery, wanton endangerment, and aggravated karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer Love Hewitt says she actually enjoys looking at her breasts on the Internet. Huh. Well, then I should call her. Apparently, we have a lot in common. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Apparently. The National Museum of the Native American Indian is open in Washington, D.C. Unfortunately, they now have to move it to Oklahoma to make room for the Christopher Columbus Museum. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the Marines for a while. You were. Wow. And it takes a while to adjust as a civilian world when you come out of boot camp because you're so fired up. When I came out that same week, my sister got married. She had me seat people at the wedding. I accepted the assignment, you know. People would come walking up to me in front of the church like, oh, you must be Patricia's brother. Sit down! I don't want to be your friend. Get your eyes off me. What is your major malfunction? 200 people showed up. I put them all in the same row. Tighten it up. Tighten it up. Tighten it up. We're not comfortable. Outstanding. I was outstanding. Comedian Greg oh Hahn is with us. God. Thanks for joining us with us in the studio. Comedian Billy Gardell. <clears throat> now, for for many of the comedians who visit, all you have to do is tell them that there's porno there, and suddenly there. Uh, Whoa. I, I can't. I'm married. I can't even have it in the house. Mm -hmm. She'll find it. She, it's every time I walk in the house and I'm doing something wrong, I hear that music from Law & Order. It's like, gong, gong. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I didn't do nothing. <laughs> I just, I'm so scared of her. I'm just scared of her. One twenty seven p.m., the Gardell household. <laughs> gong, gong, gong. gong, gong. She slid, and she's southern, so she'll slip a sandwich in front of me, Dad. Uh-huh, and then I did it. What? Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Yeah. Rick Schrader is our <laughs> guest, uh, and uh, Rick is uh, on his, uh, well, frankly, you're on your second marriage. I don't know if I should bring this up. Yes, but. yes, I am. Maybe men and women living together is just too much anyway. I think, you know, it's just too much pressure. I think men and women should live around the corner from each other. <laughs> <laughs> How much yeah. better let you call each other up every morning. Hello, you being a jerk? Yes, I am. Click, right? <laughs> <That's you. laughs> Go to a movie, you know, instead of uh -huh. getting up every morning and spinning the big pain wheel. <laughs> 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 Today's mind game, vague remarks about your failures at work. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. Where are you from? Brother? Patterson, from Patterson, New Jersey. Oh, sure. That's famous. Yeah, boy. you know, small, sure. thug downtown. You mm -hmm. know, it's tiny. So small, we used to get robbed by people we knew. It's the Bob and Tom Show. Fish and worms, fish and worms. Everybody's wishing they had fish and worms. Find them in the garden, turn over a rock, slip them in your sandwich, put them in your sock. That's fish and worms, fish and worms. <laughs> Well, my big sister, she don't like my fish and worms. Big ones, little ones, they scare her to death. 
she was making chocolate shake. I dropped a couple in the blender. <laughs> now she's sitting around with faded bread. <laughs> From eating fish and worms. Fish and worms. Everybody's wishing they had fish and worms. Do your English homework. Underline a word. Circle direct object and transitive verb with a fish and worm. <laughs> fish and worm. <laughs> Wrap them around a corkscrew. Twist them in some twine. Take them to the health spa so they can unwind. That's fish and worm. Fish and worm. Fish and worm. Well, I like doing everything you can think of with a fish and worm. Squishy, squishy ones. The ones that wiggle and squish. There's only one thing I don't like doing with fish and worms. And that is, of course, to catch fish. I hate them fish and worms. Fish and worms. Everybody's wishing they had fish and worms. Find them in the backyard, underneath some leaves. Make them little dresses. Just leave off the sleeves. That's fish and worms. 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 That song's are cold. It's like a cold toilet seat. Woo! <laughs> Holy hell, that'll wake you up. <laughs> hey, everybody. It's the Bob and Tom Show. Rabbit, rabbit, rabbit. July 1. All right. 21 already. Over, over half over. Over, over. Past the half. Hi, Tom. How are you? It's not over till July's over, right? No, July, July 7, right? Hey. So there's 12, so 6, 6 is done. Now we're over halfway over. Right? Okay. Six months? I now? see. I see your point. Huh? Yes, <laughs> I, I was missing the point. Hey, answer. Christy. Hi, Chick. The year's half over. christy got a hickey, Tom. Ask her about it. Hey, hey Pat. Hickey. Hey, Chick. Wished. Hey, Jashy. Hey, Chick. Ace. Hello. All right. Hi, Willie. Hey, Chick. Fire the vacuum, Christy. Somebody mess with my chair. I feel like I'm at the kids' table. <laughs> Uh-oh. There will be hell to pay! <laughs> I don't know how to make it a bunch it of mysteries going on. Someone messed with one of the cameras, and now the yeah, chair's screwed up. Yeah, I mean, up. it's like... There will be hell to pay! <laughs> are, are we going to have to... <sighs> Remember the guy we used to work Fuck with? That's building. somebody's job, okay? I remember him. Yeah. That's the, all you can do right now. Equipment would him. break. He'd go, oh, well, that's somebody's job. Go, well, sadly, no, I don't sadly, think it was somebody's so, job Gary. Him. Uh, okay. Ah, there we go. There we go. Ah, our job. long yeah. national yeah. nightmare yeah. is finally over. Okay. Christy's chair is all right. Okay. 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 Very Here good. we go. Uh, welcome <laughs> to the show. Thanks very much for joining us. Um, I think, yeah, we have Allie Breen joining us today. We missed uh, our uh, sexy time yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> sexy uh, time? Remember when that was everywhere? Hmm. Sexy time. Yeah, was that from Borat? Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll also speak with Al Jackson. And we have, uh, I think we have some mail for Al today. Uh, among other delights, we'll certainly look forward to that. We have a lot of things happening in the news, uh, both uh, serious and interesting and humorous. Uh, and uh, obviously a lot of things going on in sports. Yeah. Huge news in the world of college sports. Really? Uh, I'd say, what yeah. What I miss. Well, they make it, they kind of made it official what they've already announced. So, well, no, the NCAA is now. I like the way they board. come up with a new term. Nil. It's, it's nil. Yeah, I like that very much. Yeah, I read an article and then I finally had to Google what are they talking about? Name, yeah. image, likeness. Yeah, nil. Well, it, it wasn't in the actual article. It it's just like kept, DMV. It, it just kept referring to the nil, and I finally Googled it, and it stands for name, image, likeness. If you're writing an article, you might want to put that what that means. Usually, they the put beginning. it at the very beginning. I know. I was quite shocked. It sounds like it's somebody's job whoever wrote that article. I think it should be. Yeah. Uh, DMV is a D.C., Maryland, Virginia, if you're, if you're from Washington, D.C. I thought it was the Bureau of Motor Vehicles. No, DMV. <laughs> there, it's the Nil is a name image. Uh, here's what he's talking about. The NCAA has cleared the way for student-athletes to start earning money. I think we've already said this. The Supreme Court, didn't the, didn't the athletes win 9 nothing or something? <laughs> Pitched a shutout, yeah. right? Yeah. The NCAA Board of Directors decided to allow athletes to benefit from their name, image, and likeness after the Supreme Court said you need to let the athletes benefit from their name, image, and likeness. So if you're a wrestler, oh, okay. a wrestler at Division II school, get ready for some big cash. 
All I, right. Well, that's one of the drawbacks. It's not going to be an even playing field. But then, then what do you do? Like you say, a, a quarterback at D one is going to the Rose Bowl. Is he got to share his uh, this, that, and the other with all his teammates? I think so. My question is, if you make a million bucks in your image, do you have to pay tuition. Uh, I don't That's know what, what happens. To, what happens to uh, the tuition? What happens to the scholarship? Because I mean, some of these schools, it's sixty, seventy, eighty thousand a year to attend. And if uh, your image is making you money, I'm just, I'm just asking. Yeah, I think John, any athlete who would be making money off their image would probably be on scholarship, right? If they're, if they're that good of an athlete, that they're able to profit off it, chick. When you think, but yeah, I what mean, I'm saying is, are they still going to make on? Because some of these scholarships are merit based. So I'm, I'm just asking. It's a complicated. Question. I think Josh will back me up on this. The teachers are already there. The buildings are there. Sure. What yeah. does it cost the school to give them a free education? What does it really cost? <laughs> what else? Nothing. Yeah. No, it's a, it's like the, charging for air. Yeah, really. But for, the, for the kid who's borrowing fifty thousand dollars and the parents who are paying, I'm just asking. If I think it's a fair question. Are you trying to call, you're trying to cause trouble? And I, I'm backing it 100. percent By the way, yeah, no, I'm I'm all in favor. of The it. more we can if, hold if, this if up, you can, the if you can make a, a bunch of money, that's great. I'm just asking if it's going to affect their scholarships. Do you remember the days when the NFL players had to have an off-season job because they didn't make enough money during the season? And sure. I believe Jerry Kramer worked for a bank in Green Bay. I think he was an offensive guard for the Green Bay Packers, all pro. And he he was in the loan department at First Federal or whatever. Yeah. Wasn't one of the guys, didn't Lou Groza move refrigerators Lou, or something? I thought Lou mo uh, worked at a, a car dealership or something. I mean, yeah. yeah. Those, were, those were certainly so they had to get that. So they had to get the degree to fall back on. Right. And now they fall back on the piles of money they're going to make when they turn pro. We'll see how much money they make. I, I think, what was the famous story of the guy? It was, it was one of the... Uh, Chris Weber. The Fab Five. Yeah, when that all first started, he said he, he came out of practice and he saw a picture of him and the other guys in the window of McDonald's, and he couldn't afford to go in and buy a Big Mac. Oh. So, yeah. Oh. That's kind of sad. Very sad. Yeah. Well. <clears throat> Although I would I would think they'd give it to him for free, but. Well, you know, I, this, I, this, this, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Okay. Now the popular athletes get to have sex and won't have student loan debt. Win-win. <laughs> yeah, how about that? So you don't think they should get paid? Yeah, where are you on this? You're, no, I am. I'm just asking. I'm just asking, is it if they're, if... The rest of the parents and students out there are paying I understand, and uh, I'm, I'm tens of thousands of dollars to attend school. They're probably on scholarship. Duh. I'm saying if they're on scholarship, will they remain on scholarship if they are getting paid in the outside? I think they should because they earned it. Yeah. I'm asking. I'm not stating an opinion. Uh, I'm asking should, a fair question. If they question. get scholarship for uh, playing a game with a ball... Well, shouldn't the uh, students who are going to contribute to society more or less uh, be well, there are have all a kinds free of, There education? are all kinds of merit scholarships. I don't want to get into an argument with people that don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just asking if this will have an effect all, on there. Thank you for not using the term. You understand. <laughs> right. No, no, the arguing with the ignorant is pointless. I'm just, I'm asking a question. I just think, not to answer your question, but there's been a lot of money in college sports for a long time because of the athletes who have been paid nothing. And if they I have, understand all of that, you're, missing, you're utterly missing my point, all of you, so I'm not okay. going to continue. You just go ahead. Fun show. <laughs> no, you're, you're not. <laughs> well, I getting, get your point, and that makes sense. I mean, got, if they're if making got, millions of dollars. If you've got dollars, a guy at UCLA making a million bucks yeah. a year for his sports, do they still give him an athletic scholarship? I understand. Because you have saying. to pay tuition like many of the other students. Right. But he, he already earned the scholarship before he got the money. You know what I'm saying? The money comes from sponsors and stuff, right? Not the school itself? Yep. Yeah, the image and likeness. Yeah, it looks like yeah. It comes from like Nike or whoever. So you earn the scholarship, you go to school, you play football, all of a sudden Burger King wants you to be, a, you know, so mm. it, they're unrelated. What's wrong with me? When he said Burger King, I thought, mm. Mm. Burger King. <laughs> I, I would say nothing's wrong with you. Chicken fries. All your vitals, oh, your vitals are working wonderfully. Come on, they got great desserts man. too, don't they? Just oh. a fountain Coke from Burger King. Change your life. Oh, really? Sorry. Oh, yeah. Now what some of these athletes might do, which would be pretty cool, is go, hey, I just made a million dollars. I'm going to give 100000 to some underprivileged there foot you go. football player in my community. Mm -hmm. And they can go to school. Or buy a scholarship for somebody at their school. Like, yeah. Which is... What you just said. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see. But it wouldn't have to be a football player. It no, of just course. be anybody. Of course. I'm yeah. assuming most of... It could be of, their favorite morning show. Uh, most of the money <laughs> will probably go to a, a very small number of... People, I'm just guessing. Yeah, It'll yeah. The star football players. It's it's not going to be. Hey, that guy in the fencing team, he's got a million bucks a year to 
<laughs> oh, right, yeah. <laughs> From Burger King. <laughs> they want to well, that you, would be He's cool. going to have his own line of epes. <laughs> Weren't you quite the uh, fencing phenom? Uh, no, I was not. I took fencing in gym class. It was fun. Oh, nice. Did you wear the uh, the beekeeper mask? Oh, yeah, you got to wear the beekeeper mask. <laughs> okay. you, you lose an eye. Yeah, there's, there's a really good reason you well, wear the beekeeper did, mask. They didn't they certainly didn't have the electronic uh, uh, monitoring to be able to touch the other guy with the tip of the epe, did they? Or, or Well, not at the level of, of yeah. what was essentially a gym class. <laughs> so you you just screamed, oh, you got me. Did you scream that? Or? I, w I went to public to... school. There's no way they're letting us fence. Right. <laughs> oh, You're damn it, guys. Well, their, their idea of a fence involves stolen food from the cafeteria being resold. In the... yeah, when you're fencing, you're not allowed to go for the guy's face, are you? No, but you can't. Uh, yeah, you can't help it. Sometimes it'll you flip uh, up. Or... Yeah, you don't want to take a chance. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, uh, coming up also, we have a good news in the world of food, by the way. I'm very excited Burger about King? It. More Burger King news? Uh, better than that, a buffet oh. news. Oh, oh they're starting to open up? Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Buffets in the news. A weird story about weddings in the news. Uh, an update on uh, Harrison Ford. Uh, where, where'd he crash now? No, 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 no it's he, just... was, he was hurt on the set. And of course, we have, anyone, yeah, you jerk. we have uh, the... Uh, I shouldn't be making these movies. We anymore. get about every month, we get the... Uh, World's oldest man. Oh, <laughs> okay. There's a reason we get them about every month. <laughs> We've got to find a better sound effect. This sounds like someone going, shaking their head and that's saying, a, tisk, tisk, "That's tisk. the clock ticking." You don't like the clock ticking? Hey, sound? Listen, it sounds like a bomb. Well, it's <laughs> that's what. <laughs> of course. Speaking of bombs, we'll have more sports coming up. And let's see what I did there. I did it myself. That was a fine piece of business there, Chester. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, now, uh, Christy, do you want to give me a teaser for just a second? <laughs> You just gave all of our hey, never mind. Uh, the Suns are, My papers are uh, in the wrong place. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. The Suns are going to be in the NBA championship round. Uh, the Suns, you heard me, wow. and we're waiting for the Bucks or the Hawks. And uh, Giannis Antenna Corndog, he had an MRI <laughs> on his knee, and uh, he is doubtful for game five tonight in Milwaukee. Oh, so man. we'll see how it all shakes out. So it might be the Hawks or the Suns wow. as your NBA champion. We have an update on our parasailing shark incident, and we have a flying car in the news. <laughs> yeah. Um, You're skeptical, I know. No, I mean, it works, but they also, remember the famous boat car? Yes. It's the same thing. No one really needs this. And Not yet. If right. you're George Jetson, you do. <laughs> yeah. The average person can't drive sober. I don't want them in an airplane, okay? <laughs> Phone down. Uh, let's see. Also, the armed forces are a little upset with me. I'll uh, let you know. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. my God. Uh -oh. Every branch or just... Are you 4F? <laughs> <laughs> you hiding from anybody? Ooh. I'll Holy let you know mother why. of God, what is this? A donut. Uh, it's a donut. Well, if you've, uh, if you've been... <laughs> if you've uh, clogged your... Um, uh, piping, gents. I've got something for you. Uh, if you've uh, been thinking about maybe getting a little assistance in the uh, ED department, erectile dysfunction troubling you? Yeah, I, I bet it is. Well, if you want to take care of it, now there's a really easy way without going to your family doctor and getting all embarrassed. You go to GetRoman.com slash wood. There's a special reason to do it today. Roman is a pharmaceutical distributor, and they've got the name brands, they've got the generics, uh, they've got a bunch of different stuff that can probably help you, but you find out by dealing with a U.S. licensed healthcare professional. This person will work with you online to see if you are indeed a candidate for one of these treatment plans. If the medication is appropriate, Roman will ship it to you at their famous free two-day shipping. Josh, want to weigh in on that? That's exactly right. It only takes two days to get to you, and it's free. There you go. That's like precisely the point. The whole process, very straightforward. Uh, but how much is that online exam? Exam, Josh. That's free. That's free also. So we got the free online exam with a healthcare professional license in the U.S. of A., the free two-day shipping. Wait a second. This is unbelievably great. GetRoman.com slash wood. It's not hard to do this. <clears throat> you can. Very good. That, uh, Very good. It's not hard to do that. But uh -huh. <laughs> never mind. Uh, take care of your ED while leaving uh, uh, the troubles to others. You don't have to go in front of your doctor and go, Doc, <laughs> <laughs> GetRoman.com slash wood. Go there right now. Why? To save 15 bucks off your first month. Easy to take care of the ED. Remember, get started today to save 15 bucks in your first order of ED treatment. GetRoman.com slash wood for 15 bucks off. Uh, coming right back with a number of things, including some sporting news with Chick McGee and our brand new sports theme. I'm very excited oh, yeah. about it. Oh, yes. Here That's it comes. It. Oh, when we come back, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Hi, fellas. This is Floyd Tucker, the over-the-road trucker. <laughs> 
This is Bob and Tom's program 24-7. Good morning to everyone. It is Thursday, July 1st, Rabbit, Rabbit, Rabbit 2021. That's right. We've made it to a new month in the year 2021. July, everybody. Yay. July 4th weekend right around the corner. A lot of you will have Monday off. I think it's the official off day. We'll be running a best of here on the Bob and Tom show, but lots to get to today, including Jess Alsman, Al Jackson, and Allie Breen. Scheduled yesterday will be joining us later this morning in the nine o'clock hour. It's going to be a full day and we're glad you're along with us on Bob and Tom 24-7. Hi, everybody. Christy Lee from the Navy Federal Credit Union Entertainment News Desk. Britney Spears leveled serious accusations last week about the people overseeing her life. One of those, her dad, James Spears, said in court documents it's critical for the court to confirm whether his daughter's allegations are true. Britney told a judge her conservatorship is so restrictive she's not allowed to get married or have a baby. She says she's forced to use birth control and take medication against her will. Although James Spears has been her conservator for most of the past 13 years. He says for the past two, he's only overseen his daughter's finances, not her person. Jody Montgomery was appointed by the court to oversee Britney's personal life, and Montgomery could not be reached for comment. Roy Acuff's primary fiddle has found a home at the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum in Nashville, thanks to Vince Gill. Gill found out that the granddaughter of a member of Acuff's band was going to sell the fiddle, so he bought it, believing it belonged at the museum. It was a gift to Acuff from U.S. Army members who discovered it in a bombed-out music store in Frankfurt, Germany at the end of World War II and is now on display in the museum's permanent collection. And why did Richard Branson name yesterday's Virgin Orbit mission to space Tubular Bells? Well, it's because that was the first album his Virgin Records label released in 1973. Yesterday's mission delivered satellites from the U.S., Netherlands, and Poland into space, Virgin Orbit will do three more test flights of its rocket ship this year before taking paying customers into space next year. And that's your entertainment news. I'm Christy Lee. More of the Bob and Tom Show on the way. Small meteorite heading toward Legoland. Uh oh. Damn it, should be limited to 50 square blocks. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad. I like that. I like that one. Okay. Ace, hope you got another one. Oh my God! I think anger. Joke of the day. Well, Chick was mentioning uh, the pirates on the helmets of the buccaneers. And yeah. The smiling and the winking. Mm -hmm. yep. Pirates are great singers, Chick. You know that? No, I didn't know that. They can hit the high seas. That was <laughs> <laughs> Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24 7. Hey, it's Roy Wood Jr. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24 7. Bob and Tom, all the time in your ear. Little ditty about Jack Bauer's plan <laughs> to try and stop the nerve gas attack by the mean Russian man. <laughs> Jack is hiding in the ductwork, crawling around. <laughs> then it pops up, pulls his gun, shouting, everybody down. <laughs> Jack can just try to keep America free. But tell him a lie and he'll shoot your wife right in the knee. <laughs> Gotta get the intel, no matter the cost. He gonna give the witness to that German dude who was on loss. <laughs> Jack said, Chloe, I'll blow them schematics to my PDA. Gonna put my jacket hood on, hold my breath, and save the day. Jack said, Oh yeah, life goes on. Long after 
after they set off the nerve gas bomb. <laughs> oh yeah, I said life goes on. Long after Michelle, Tony, and Ed are gone. Little ditty about Jack Bauer was playing. Gonna whisper, then shout some, then whisper again. <laughs> Curtis, where are you? Tell me about Mr. Cooper. Tell me about Mr. Cooper. Get in the chopper now. I said I wanted a cheeseburger. Bob and Tom 24 7, 24 7, 24 7. Bob and Tom 24 7. Not on air, on. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Looking forward to a great 4th of July weekend. Oh, yes. I am going to go out and buy new charcoal. Oh, good. There well, that's a big weekend. Well, no, I'm, I'm planning on. <laughs> I can uh, bring you back in. Please make him. You do have that. extra charcoal. Please, yes. please, please, please. Kingsford. What do you mean? He's got like uh, he's a, he's a survivalist. He's got <laughs> charcoal. He's got. I know. I told you last he's last got uh, last week. I had to buy gas station charcoal, and I bought some off brand that it wouldn't light. So I'm looking forward to having a nice weekend. Get some Omaha steaks. Have some fun. That's Ace Cosby, our engineer, Chick McGee's across the way at the sports desk. Listeners know he bought a lot of rock. Um, a man back. who will not take any advice is Josh Arnold. Uh, he's wearing the white T-shirt again after. Uh, massive uh, revolt yesterday. We all told him how great, I, great he looked in the dark T-shirt. When I took the poll, it was 68% for the gray T-shirt. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. But you're, you're going this. your own way. Uh, you have a theory? What's that, but Willie? It's his, she, it's his shirt. I think, do you buy the white undershirts in like a three-pack maybe? Yeah. Okay, I think that the gray shirt you have is just a nicer quality shirt. I think we got to get you some individual one-pack white t-shirts that you feel cozy and comfy in that look nice and crisp as that gray shirt. Oh, I, I, I love these and they feel I, they feel great on me. And, do what uh, you want to do, buddy. I'm sorry. I, didn't even, I did not mean to do that to you. I'm no, you're you. fine. You're fine. Do what you want to do. What That's do you think right. this is? America? <laughs> don't you don't you watch the news? Okay, I have a, a great request here to, before we get back to all the interesting things going on out there in the world. Uh, Christy was at a bachelorette party. Um, was it last weekend? Yeah, last Friday. And you, you had a funny story mm -hmm. about, about the, the, the difference. The, you played the game, the difference between nail polish and name. What was it again? An adult film's and, porn and, or polish. Porn or polish. Very funny. Yeah. But you also said you played the game Pictionary. Yes. Uh, but you played kind of an adult version of Pictionary. Correct. Dirty Pictionary. Yeah, I haven't played Pictionary in a or long time. sexy but, Pictionary. <laughs> um, do, do you remember the way the game worked, Josh? Yes. Yeah, I, I, I haven't played it in years. What was the? How did? It, would you have a big chalkboard or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, or, or a drawing pad right. or whatever. Had a big you, drawing pad on an easel. Oh, you did. So you go. Yeah. And your you partner had to figure out what you were drawing or something. Was right. It, was yeah, you it, would have a car. You'd have a. You'd get a hint, or you'd get the, the something, and then you'd have to draw that while your your the people on your team guessed what you were drawing. Right. Okay. Was it a phrase or just the object? I think Depen sometimes it was like a phrase. It, it like depends on what category you pull, you pulled. Okay, so, right. so you, yeah. you didn't just have to draw an accordion, and it would be right. Well, well I, we were talking about that, and it reminded me of um, a friend of ours from Canada. Um, a, oh, a comedian talking about the game. Oh, oh here he is, comedian <laughs> Bruce Clark is our guest. How <laughs> <laughs> about that Pictionary? You ever play that game? Pictionary? Sure. Yeah. yeah. We almost game. got in a fist fight over that, oh, didn't yeah. we, Chick? Yeah. We hey. <laughs> I hate, dude, I, hate, I possess no artistic talent, huh? How about you guys? I don't. Oh, no. My wife, either does chick. No. My wife can draw anything, huh? You know, she gets the word, draws it five seconds, the whole team. Oh, duck build platypus. <laughs> what the hell? My turn, I have no chance unless the words, you know, like stick man. Smiley face. <laughs> That's me. And uh, you play with your friends, they're always drunk, too. You know, all your buddies are always drunk. <laughs> Playing there. I get this uh, phrase, I draw it, you know, they're hey, how about a guy frying his own penis? How about that? That's a dictionary, <laughs> idiot. <laughs> it's Peter Pan, you idiot. <laughs> Hey, Freddy here, you moron. <laughs> He's yelling at a guy frying his penis. <laughs> Peter Pan, right, Freddy? Crying out loud. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce Clark so, is with us. Yeah, so. but, uh, my friend's got a job, suicide prevention hotline. That's where he works. He's a sociologist. Oh, oh, boy, that's tough, you know. Very difficult. Depressing. 
Yeah, he is depressed because he works in the basement of this building, really small office, all cramped up, no windows. You know, all he does is talk to these uh, despondent people. And they, <laughs> one day he'll get a call, you know, suicide prevention hotline. I can't take it anymore. All right, sir, calm down. Where are you? Right behind you. <laughs> <laughs> it's me, Jim. <laughs> Bruce Clark. Um, up there in Canada. I love that. Where it's 117 degrees. <laughs> New record. Yeah. Okay. For a certain 121 in one city up yeah, there. Yeah, there's one wow. town that's on fire right now. Yeah, that's the same city in Linden. Linden, wow. Canada. Unbelievable. Uh, we were talking about uh, some big news in the world of sports with Chick McGee. Mm -hmm. uh, the NCAA is now on board with athletic comp or athlete compensation. Uh, the, it goes this way, kids. The NCAA has cleared the way for student athletes to start earning money. The NCAA Board of Directors decided to allow athletes to benefit from their name, image, and likeness after the Supreme Court voted not nothing to allow athletes to benefit from their name, image, and likeness. The move effectively suspends NCAA restrictions on payments to athletes for things like uh, sponsorship deals, online endorsements, personal appearances, I'm assuming signing pictures, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It applies to all three divisions or almost a half million athletes. The organization will also allow athletes to enter into agreements with agents though all athletes are expected to keep their school informed <laughs> of any and all nil agreements nil arrangements or name image likeness arrangements kentucky has already warned its athletes that <laughs> the deals that they already have in place no i'm kidding uh, kentucky <laughs> has already warned their athletes the uh, nil compensation could affect need-based financial aid. There that you was my go. Question. Oh, there you go. There you sure. Go. Okay. That was there my question from buddy. before. We'll there see. Okay, go. well, good. What? Uh, we'll, we'll, uh, a yeah. bunch of uh, deserving people will get uh, they'll enter the marketplace. Should be very interesting. Good for them. But that reminds me of the way it used to be. And uh, and this uh, visit from a very fine comedian. It's Dan Greeter. Dan, good morning. Dan, how are you? Good. Dan, Dan first off, nice. uh, yes. you're from Cleveland, but you went to school. At, at Ohio State. Ohio. How'd that go? I, I loved it there. I'm a big football fan. I, I love uh, college football. You know, we should have a college football team. I was in Boston a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. I was turning around. I went down to Cambridge. You know, I was walking to Harvard mm -hmm. campus. Sure. Or, you know, pretending. And, sure. uh, <laughs> and it dawned on me, Harvard, they didn't put anybody good in football, do they, Harvard, huh? Yeah. Ivy League, bunch of wimps. That Big Ten, you know, pac Ten's big business. You got the football program. Every year, I know people may take a class or two. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, it's Harvard, you get a school football game, might break out on the weekend. I think, if, <laughs> yeah. I think if Harvard ever played like Ohio State in football, the play-by-play -play would be something like, and Harvard's quarterback has dropped behind the line again for loss of 40. Harvard's... <laughs> Harvard's man there, of course, is Chad Elmhurst. Chad is an academic All-American at Harvard, majoring in physics with a minor in mathematics. And Bob, they tell me he's actually graduating a year early. <laughs> and he's not going anywhere right now because he was flattened by Big Moose McCauley. <laughs> Moose is a sixth-year redshirt freshman, <laughs> majoring in scuba diving. And Bob, there's a nice shot in the stands of his wife and five kids. <laughs> yeah. He drives a Lexus. <laughs> he, he can buy his own Lexus now. Uh, there, there you go. I want him to be a, uh, a hungry alum with a nice ticket. So. Hungry alum. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Uh, back to you, Jake. Uh, uh, Stanley Cup Finals, or as we call it here on the show... Stanley, give me that cup. That's right. Tampa Bay <laughs> Lightning, they call them the Ning, lead the Stanley Cup final. Two games to none. They beat the Canadiens 3-1 last night in Tampa. Andre Vasilevsky, Soviet spy. <laughs> <laughs> Made a playoff career high 42 saves to keep the defending champs in the game. Well, Man. You know what they say, the hot goalie. There he is. And Blake Coleman scored the game. Boy, that's a Canadian name. Is Blake Coleman. Sounds very distinguished. The outdoor equipment baron uh, <laughs> scored the game two winner on a highlight reel diving buzzer beater in the second period. Sorry, Christy. Game three <laughs> is uh, tomorrow night in Montreal. And speaking of playoffs, the Phoenix Suns are headed to the NBA Finals for the first time in 28 years, defeating the Los Angeles Clippers 130 to 103 to close out the Western Conference Finals in six games. Chris Paul tied his career playoff high of 41 points for the Suns, and Devin Booker had 22 to send Phoenix to their third final appearance in franchise history. He they should be a cop. Face Devin, Devin Booker. Booker. 
He's in the play squad. <laughs> the, only, uh, <laughs> the only negative last night, the game was played in L.A., so naturally Clippers fan uh, Billy Crystal was courtside, and Chris Paul uh, felt compelled to run and hug Billy. So if, uh, if you're a Clipper fan... That's what you got to live up to. Billy Crystal is. How's this here. affecting your uh, uh, gambling, Willie? Oh, my goodness. My gambling? I'm good, man. I'm hanging out. The Giannis, he, he messed with me a little bit. But uh, as as the, the finance people say, <laughs> buy low, sell high. Uh-huh. The cash out went up this morning, so I cashed out. I am all done. I have profited. I beat sports gambling, everybody. However, oh. I won. How much would you have won if you cashed out on Monday? Oh, I would have won, uh, oh, I won about, about 110. I would have won about 50 bucks more. <laughs> it's time See, to, get, it's time to uh, you know, now that you've dried off, get back in the pool. I think so, that's yeah. what I'm going to do. Yeah. You gotta go, you gotta, you gotta, it's the only way to watch. you got to reinvest. You no. can't make no money being out of it. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and speaking of uh, Giannis, Milwaukee Bucks forward Giannis Antenna Corndog is doubtful for uh, tonight's Game 5 in Milwaukee of the Eastern Finals after undergoing an MRI on his injured left knee. I'm sorry I have to spell around you guys. Bucks officials say the two-time MVP hyperextended his left knee? His right, right knee? knee? No. His weenie? Uh, no. His it, knee? His left knee. Oh, yeah. Uh, that happened in the third quarter. 110-88 game four loss to the Hawks on Tuesday night. He's listed as doubtful. So I'm glad you... You cashed out, buddy. Good well, call. everybody knows, Chick, you know this. My whole life, what have I been? A massive Phoenix Suns fan. Phoenix Suns. Go Suns, Ever baby. since Barkley played for them. <laughs> Barkley and Kevin Johnson and Dan Marley. Oh, yeah. No? Anybody? No. <laughs> Probably. Uh, oh, and uh, the clock is ticking on this one, so we, we better get this story in. The 112-year-old man of Puerto Rico has been confirmed to be the world's oldest living human being. Okay. This is, I guess, somewhat of a stupid world record. That's important. For on me. August... <laughs> Uh, Emilio was born August 8th, 1908. Wow. Emilio Flores Marquez. Mm. Earned, 1908. <laughs> earned the title. At, <laughs> he's 112 and 326 days. He currently lives in Rio Piedras, where he's cared for by his two children. Well, how old are they? Teresa and Melito, <laughs> and they are also old people. I was going to say. <laughs> he, he's... He's what 100 and 112. 12. So they'd be in their 80s, wouldn't they? It, probably. Yeah. Got, yeah, 80s or 90s. How right. are they caring for anybody? Who's caring for them? Wow. Oof. That's amazing. Born in 1908. Think about that. That's too old. Too old. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's when a car phone was you yelling from your donkey. Yeah. <laughs> Silly. I, I never rode a donkey. Did you ride a donkey? You didn't play donkey softball? Ace, oh, God, maybe this? I did. Maybe I did play donkey basketball. You're right. We played was donkey, it basketball or we, softball? We played both we played donkey softball. basketball and donkey yeah, softball. Yeah, I played donkey basketball. I fell off that thing. Has that, Boy. Has, have they stopped doing that? I'm sure I they have. Yeah. I think, I think so. <laughs> I yeah. The, donkeys, the donkeys had, they had the, those big foot pads on. I, <laughs> what? Yeah, big so foot they, pads? You know, he has yeah, they had little tennis shoes on? Remember the sock hop? Yeah. You couldn't mess up the gym floor. You had yeah. to wear socks. You yeah. The donkeys yeah. had these big rubber feet on. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> they not, did. Not for donkey softball. We, that was outside. The fun know. donkey basketball had the, the feet Just were shaped like human feet. Oh, that's funny. Big rubber yeah. feet. Yeah. No, that's not true. So this guy is... Oh God, 112. That's that's Didn't we crazy. have the story, uh, like last year, the, we, we had the last person who was born in the 1800s. Isn't that right? Yeah, I think so. Like 1899 yeah, or something. I think so. Right? It was a There's, woman, I remember. Somebody yeah. else out there claiming they're like 126, but they don't have the proof. Yeah. Yeah. Some... <laughs> What? Well, they've right. got a, a very old piece of paper forged back in 1914. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? This guy... I this can't guy, remember yesterday. How do you remember... Yeah, how many no times joke. has this guy seen the McRib come and go? Oh, boy. <laughs> this, guy's, this guy's been around a long time. Damn, um, man. But, but, so when were, the, when were car automobiles... Car automobiles? I mean, when were they really taking <laughs> over the streets? Would that be... 19, 19 teens, I think? Maybe? Yeah, so this guy... Especially, and he's from Puerto Rico, yeah. Which mm -hmm. I'm sure was a little bit more primitive then, sure. Than now, um, wow, that's just amazing. Well, good luck to him. My thoughts on Puerto Rico is it hasn't changed all that much. But I'm an ugly. American. Well, they had a very tough time with a hurricane not too long ago. Is this guy aware at all? Man, I, I don't know. I can't imagine. 112. 
Um, man, oh, man. Emilio said the super cent centenarian, super centenarian, <laughs> believes that to live happily. Oh, yeah. oh, here oh he does speak. Oh, okay. We, we can all benefit from this. You need to have an abundance of money. No, you <laughs> abundance of love and to live without anger. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Have you seen Hilarious. a picture of those guy? useless vagaries? Uh, no, I haven't. Yeah. What's he look like? Useless. Oh, my God. Absolutely useless. He's got to look like a mummy. Well, he <laughs> he looks like no, a mummy. He, you nailed it. Yeah. yeah. Come, here, come here and look he at this. He literally has. He looks like a mummy. But yeah. he's got a little hat on. Yeah. Yeah. Like he's, he's, oh, he doesn't know he has a little hat on, though. It's like when they dress Stevie Wonder. <laughs> Stop <laughs> it. It's in Puerto Rico. He's got to keep the sun off his face. Wow. Yeah. I know Stevie Wonder doesn't know he has those beads in his hair. He'd be <laughs> embarrassed. The interesting lot, this guy has hands that are uh, uh, way too big for his body. Very weird. Well, Things maybe they were, you they were okay yeah. until he shrunk all up as an old man. <laughs> no, well, you know, you're, <laughs> that man is in constant pain. <laughs> your hands and your nose and your ear continue to grow. Oh, that's false. I think that guy's 85% arthritis. Oh. oh, no. He just, he looks, he does look like a mummy. But hey. there's a picture of him back in the day. It looks like kind of like a zoot suit. Yeah. Oh. Handsome guy. He's got the mustache yeah. and Those were the days. big, wide lapel. A big, colorful tie. Looks like a great guy. I just hope he was a bully back then. And mm -hmm. all the nerds that he beat up are lined up outside his back. <laughs> There's another picture of him. Take a punch at this. He's, no. he's, he's lying down. He, he looks yeah. like he's in his casket. The yeah. previous, oldest, look, previous <laughs> oldest living man was recognized by Guinness as Romania's Dimitru Cormanescu. Who Don't you immediately think vampire? Oh, if, it's, if they're that old. Oh, Roma and Romania. <laughs> yeah, exactly. On, who held the record for less than one month before passing on June 27th <laughs> last year at the age of 111. Oof. The oldest person ever to have lived, Jean Calment, of, oh, I'm sorry, Jean Calment of France, who, uh, or Parisville, who lived to be 122 years old, 164 days. Wow. We have some audio on from her. I am tired. <laughs> oh, yeah, I bet. I bet. <laughs> I look like Roger Waters. You do. You do kind of, sir, yes. <laughs> Roger Waters looked uh, like 80 back in the 70s, didn't he? It was, that was so weird. He's very handsome. He yeah. looks better now than he did then. He's, He's a he very grew handsome guy. That is not true, Tom. What That's is wrong true. with the, you? The guy from you stop kissing Pink ass Floyd? these people who never give me on the show. It's David not Gilmore happen. was a handsome man. Gilmore was good looking. Yeah. Roger Waters never had. No. Oh. <laughs> I, kind of, I sat next to him at a restaurant one time. Um, we was, were at an adjoining table. We I weren't mean? sitting next to well, him. Okay, he was at the next table. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't, that is a pretty good looking guy. Okay. Nice head right. of hair. Kind of Cro-Magden Cro Cro features. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah you also, you get turned on when you see Easter Island photos. <laughs> <laughs> you should have heard Waters talking. Well, I, I consider my music a, a, a different colors. And, <laughs> now, whatever, Roger. <laughs> you know, Just put Chick a new album out, will you? Chick he does look better older yes, than he does. Yes, he does. Hang on, stop everything, Ace. I have said next to Roger Waters. That's amazing. Oh. Tom, back to you. I'm jealous. <laughs> I'd love to talk to Roger Waters. I'd rather talk to you. I'll talk to you now that you've insulted him. Well, he knows he's ugly. <laughs> he knows he's he ugly. He probably thinks it's funny. <laughs> oh, God. He does look much better with grayer he's hair. Very handsome. the wall's about. Build a wall around that ugly ass guy. <laughs> all in all. <laughs> it's just another brick in the wall. <laughs> okay. Tom? Took More another, sports coming. Just up. took another brick in the face. <laughs> um, I like it. Uh, this summer, Bespoke Post. Is here to take you. Christy you, had this yesterday. It's like Christmas uh, out of the blue every yes. month. It's a new adventure every month. Uh, the new thing is the so-called Box of Awesome, which you find at boxofawesome.com. Enter the code Bob and Tom. What on earth am I talking about? Well, a Box of Awesome is a box of uh, stuff. It starts when you take the quiz. You go to boxofawesome.com. And you answer some questions about what you're into, and uh, you will be provided with a gift every month. Um, and uh, each box costs about forty-five bucks, but has uh, more than seventy dollars worth of stuff inside. And uh, it's stuff that is in the sort of sphere of things you've said you might be interested in uh, trying out. Yeah. So what uh, could I, it could be? I don't know. It could be cigars. It could be skincare stuff. Maybe you're into uh, booze. Whatever it might be, you get the uh, you get the box. You get cool stuff in there. It's like uh, having an adult Santa Claus every month. Yeah, Secret mm. Santa sends you, you gifts. Go. The Box of Awesome. Once again, 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com. Enter the code Bob and Tom when you check out. That's boxofawesome.com. The code is once again Bob and Tom. 20% off your first box from travel to outdoor gear. 
to uh, cool stuff that's appropriate for the season. So there might be some uh, interesting summer style stuff in there. It's the Box of Awesome. And once again, it's all based on what you're into based on the quiz. So find out. Take the quiz. Uh, it's very simple. Boxofawesome.com. And the code is Bob and Tom. Coming up, Ace will be interested in this. Yeah, we have coupons in the news, Ace. There's a huge coupon crime yes. ring that got busted. Oh, really? Oh, yep. and it's, well, I, I wonder who the leader of that was. <laughs> and, it's, and it's millions of dollars. Uh, we'll find out about that. And also, uh, interesting news, Mr. Bill Cosby. <laughs> Back home. Wow. We'll find out about that, too. This is the Bob and Tom Show. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Text us at 888-262-8661. More Bob and Tom next. Thanks for listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Coming up this morning, Scorched Earth. That's right. Jessica Allsman will be joining us this morning in the 8 o'clock hour, as well as our West Coast Mountain correspondent, Al Jackson. You can catch up with him at aljacksonlive.com. When he's not calling into our show, he's the co-host of the nationally syndicated daytime talk show Daily Blast Live, perhaps seen in a television market near you, and comedian Allie Breen about relationships and your questions. Should I continue dating this person? I'm having an issue. Well, we'll help with that later this morning right here on Bob and Tom 24-7. Good morning, I'm Mark Allison with things you may have missed on the Bob and Tom Show this morning. Bill Cosby has been freed from prison after Pennsylvania's highest court overturned his sexual assault conviction. It's a stunning reversal of fortune for the comedian once known as America's dad. The state Supreme Court in Pennsylvania said Wednesday the prosecutor who brought the case was bound by his predecessor's agreement not to charge Cosby. The 83-year-old Cosby served nearly three years of a three- to ten-year sentence. Cosby was promptly set free from the state prison in suburban Montgomery County and driven home. The NCAA has cleared the way for athletes to profit off their fame and celebrity. The move comes just as legislation is set to become law in a dozen states that would allow for that kind of compensation. The NCAA wants to have federal laws or its own rules regarding the issue known as NIL. It was forced to seek a temporary solution. The decision applies to more than 450,000 athletes across all three divisions of the NCAA. And those are things you may have missed. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob and Tom. Who says shore lunch? Who loves to ski in Vail? Mm. Who's obsessed with Michigan? Who eats smoothies with kale? Who has a pie lady? Who has 
as a cake lady who wears SPF 100, even where it's shady. <laughs> Not me. Guess who? Tom. Tom. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Bob and Tom. Five. Four. Three. Two. two one. one. <laughs> <laughs> they put the F in professional. Yes, it's time now for another exciting episode. Oh, no. Of, of Murray Whiskey. Frontier Funeral Director. Oh, no. My hero. In this episode, Murray Whiskey has just gotten married. Hmm. And he brings his beautiful new wife to their honeymoon room, their suite. Mm-hmm. And they're getting undressed on their wedding night there. Murray Whiskey drops his trousers, throws them over to his new little bride, just put those on. She looks at him incredulously. He says, go ahead, put them on. She puts on the trousers. She says, they're too big. I, I can't wear these. Mary Whiskey says, that's right. Remember that. I wear the pants in this family. Don't you ever forget that. She says, fine. She takes off her panties. She throws them over to Mary Whiskey. She says, you put those on. He tries. She says, you made me do it. You've got to do it. He says, okay. So he tries to get them on. Can't do it. He says, I can't even get these past my thighs. He says, I can't get into these panties. She says, yeah, and until you change your attitude, you're not going to either, partner. <laughs> a true tale from the Old West. That concludes another exciting episode. Uh, Murray, Murray Whiskey. Murray Whiskey. <laughs> Fred 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 pyromaniac idiot. over here. What are you, are you lighting up the studio, Yeah, Bob? this thing, it's not working. I'm sorry. Nothing. Just... Brought to you by that new Japanese-Jewish restaurant, Sosumi. <laughs> Thank you very much, Maria. <laughs> Hi, this is Dr. Will Miller, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. It's time once again for People Who Suck at Small Talk. <laughs> hey, nice weather we're having today, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, it, it is rather amazing the cyclical manner in, in which meteorological trends manifest themselves. <laughs> Jeez, sorry I f ass. <laughs> Join us again next time for People Who Suck at Small Talk. Hey, guy, it's Kid Tarmac. Oh, You're listening man. to Bob and Tom 24-7. Take that to the bank. <laughs> I, uh, let's see. Let's get this thing back in the rail, shall we? Let's start over, okay? Got a lot to get to. I got a letter over here. Um, this is the Bob and Tom Show. This is Top Speaking. There's Willie G. Son number two right next to me. Hey, Willie. Hey. Looking good today? Thanks. God, you lucked out getting your mother's hair, Gene. Yeah. Oh, There's Pat Godwin. You didn't luck out, Pat. You, nope. you and I got died. We're my probably dad, distant. My dad died with a full head of hair. <laughs> How about that? Well. <laughs> I'm going to check that. Let's dig him up. <laughs> yeah, my dad. We can't died. do that. My dad died with a lot more hair than I got. Sure that worked. Really? Uh, well, it skips a generation, I heard, right? That's BS. You didn't oh. have polio either, right? No, I didn't have polio because oh. I got vaccinated like a smart person. Uh, let's see now. Uh -oh. um, uh, there's uh -oh. Christy Lee at the Navy Federal Credit Union News Desk. Uh, coming up, Christy's new theme song should be tomorrow or the next day. Oh, I have a theme song. Wow. Uh, kind of. Oh. Uh, uh, Josh Arnold is over there. You can see him from here. Uh, Hello. It's good to see you, Josh. And uh, let's see. Did I mention Ace Cosby's over there? Did I cover everybody? Uh, mm -hmm. any, did I forget anybody? <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, okay. Let's uh, get right to our letters. Josh, you said you had a letter of uh, from uh, someone in the military? Oh, yes. Scott here. Sergeant Major, 24 years, U.S. Army. Mm. Thank you, Scott. At the gym at 5 a.m. He oh, is. Let me get a set in. He says yeah. He's trying to keep fit like a good soldier does. Mm -hmm. He's listening to Bob and Tom 24-7, catching up on some uh, some of the stuff he missed. And now he's struggling to not end the workout early so he can get home and eat a buttered Pop-Tart. Oh, That's right. Oh, <laughs> he goes wow. on to say, you're negatively affecting the physical readiness of the armed forces, oh. you fat bastard. Oh. <laughs> Now you're harboring the troops, Joshua. <laughs> I'm just kidding you. You know that. Well, he did, then he says, love you guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah, thank you very yeah. much, sir, for uh, everything. Yesterday, we had an interesting news story. I believe it was a uh, 
A Los Angeles Angel that uh, unfortunately Los Angeles Angels vo vomited. Him. Pitcher Dylan Bundy was so bothered by the uh, Yankees and the Heat in New York, he blew chunks all over the mound. The 28-year-old struggled to pitch uh, to his first few batters of the night in the first inning, giving up four hits and two runs. Then late in the second, Tom, if you <laughs> can describe the scene there. Oh, on the mound. oh yeah, God. that's rough. Why did I have to see yeah, that? Yeah, you this don't have to, uh, We get it. Now, normally, when you vomit in public, <laughs> you uh, you swallow it back. Right? Oh, I mean, could, you, could we? Uh, I did not. What's the matter? No, what? not in this case. I had a letter it's here. To ground. Yeah. Um, it's a solid stream. It's, Mouth to it's ground. from a listener um, remembering a uh, famous trip that we took with the radio station. A whole bunch of us got in a bus and went to see Bruce Springsteen. And I want to say, I believe it was... Lexington. In Lexington, Kentucky. No, I, were you on the same bus? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> See if you remember this, Ace. Uh, the, our writer puts... the, the Ace writer. was on the bus? Uh, okay. The, 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 oh. 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 What? I always, what? That was that that's was just where he happened. That to be was just sitting. where he happened to be oh sitting. My. That's where the cool. Everybody knows that's where the cool kids. Sit. That was absolutely oh, yeah, the case. Yeah, well, yeah. that yeah. is cool, true. Yeah. That's where all the action happened. Well, Bob and I, Bob and I, would <laughs> see the Cubs and the Dodgers in Chicago. We sat in the back of the bus. Did you know? Well, we're both. <laughs> Bob and I are both really dark, but still, we did sit in the back of the bus. Uh, let's see. Wasn't the topic vomiting? Yes. Isn't that the? Uh, yeah. We have a, we have a letter. Uh, the the tr the trip was great. On the way back after the Springsteen show. Uh huh. We had a large blue plastic half barrel full of beer on ice. Oh, no. 15 minutes into the ride home, one of our winners started making retching noises and sure enough, vomited <laughs> into the half blue barrel. No. <laughs> uh. I believe that did not stop us from imbibing. Yeah, the cans were closed. Sure, yeah, sure. Sealed up. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember this, Ace? I remember the tub, yeah. Oh, man. I don't remember. I wasn't on that trip. Oh, it was a good trip. It was a good show. Uh, sorry. Uh, I only man. saw Springsteen so, once. That there, was there we go. Uh, you can go see him right now. He's on Broadway. Yes, he is. Uh, back to the sporting scene yes. with Chick McGee. Yeah, I agree. Uh, the woman who ma caused that massive pileup during the Tour de France, mm -hmm. which means the tour in France, what? has been arrested. An unidentified female spectator says here she's 30, arrested after she presented herself at a police station. According to Reuters, it she reported on yesterday she remains in custody at a police station in an area in Brittany where the uh, tour held its first four stages. The woman's arrest comes just days after law enforcement officials from the Finestel area announced on uh, <laughs> social media <laughs> that they opened an investigation into the cause of involuntary injuries with disabilities not exceeding three months by manifestly deliberate breach of an obligation oh, of safety boy. or oh, caution. God. Holy hell. Adding that the viewer causing this accident left the scene before investigators arrived. The uh, tour deputy director, Pierre Fouval, yes. told reporters, we are suing this woman who behaves so badly. <laughs> we are doing this so that the tiny minority of people who do this don't spoil this show. As forever. opposed to a large minority? <laughs> Sacre bleu. Uh-oh. <laughs> wow. So there you go. She has been arrested. Wow. And she, and is it's there, a firing squad for her. They're holding her? Yeah, she's uh, she's in uh, custody. Yeah. Wow. Okay. All right. The fine for the spectator could reach uh, seventeen hundred eighty dollars, about fifteen hundred euros. Okay. So she's in jail yes. for holding up a sign. Bill Cosby. No, don't. <laughs> out of jail uh, on a legal technicality. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that coming up in we'll, detail. Uh, we'll get that uh, mm -hmm. that story coming up. Did you also? Did anybody see the story about the? the uh, this sounds like the beginning of a joke. A deer walks into a Walmart. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> uh, we get stories of this every once in a while. And well, this, you know, they like saving money. Uh, sure. I, savings ever so. Uh, this, yeah. this is a they really... like the saving dot or whatever it this is. This is a real quick story, really good, and we'll get to that coming up. Um, and uh, anything else in the world of sports? Uh, today in sports history coming up and another uh, world record now. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, we got a, a dose. Yeah. Uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Stay tuned. Who knows who will be next on the Bob and Tom Track Phone Hotline? This is the Bob and Tom Show.
Hi, man. This is Donnie Baker. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Hey, Donnie Baker. Mark Allison with you rolling through a Thursday morning. It is July 1st, 2021. Hope you're having a great day. So glad you could join us. It's going to be fun this morning. We're loaded all up. Jess Alsman, Al Jackson, Allie Breen, all on the way on a Thursday. Can't wait. Glad you're here with us. Bob and Tom, 24-7. Hi, everybody. Christy Lee from the Navy Federal Credit Union News Desk. Bill Cosby's sexual assault conviction has been thrown out by Pennsylvania's highest court, which ruled he was unfairly prosecuted because a previous district attorney had promised he would not be charged. The justices found Cosby relied on that promise when he agreed to testify without invoking his Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination in a lawsuit brought against him by Temple University employee Andrea Constad. A wildfire amid a record heat wave in western Canada has forced authorities to order residents to evacuate a village in British Columbia. Mayor Jan Polderman of Linton issued the evacuation order saying the fire was threatening structures and the safety of the 250 residents of the community, which is located about 95 miles northeast of Vancouver. Linton's temperature hovered around 102 degrees Fahrenheit yesterday, but that's down from Tuesday when the village recorded a new Canadian high of 121.2 Fahrenheit. And what you write in a private email or text may be not as private as you think. A top official with Microsoft says federal law enforcement agencies often asked secretly to obtain data from its customers. Tom Burt told a House panel the company gets between 7 and 10 secret requests a day. Microsoft is fighting such requests, saying law enforcement agencies are exploiting technology to skirt freedom citizens have from unreasonable searches. And that's your news. I'm Christy Lee. More of the Bob and Tom Show on the way. Hello, this is comedian John Evans, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Comedian Roger Naylor is our guest <laughs> from the Ohio Valley. Mm-hmm. I'm, trying to, I'm trying to remember, is your wife a cop? Yeah, it's not the traditional uh, job like we were uh, talking about. I mean, it was very, you know, very romantic. We met at a uh, Dunkin' Donuts. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she wow. hates that job. She I'll bet. hates I'll that I'll job. I'll bet she yeah. does. It is a weird job for a woman to have, but it has its advantages. I mean, what other job can you think of where the woman comes home every single night with handcuffs? So sure. hey, hey. we got a little game we like to play called Held for Questioning. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On the downside, yeah. my wife carries a gun. Oh, good point. Which makes PMS a whole different ball game <laughs> in my house. <laughs> Our toilet seat stays down. <laughs> <laughs> I take no chances. I pee in the tub or out in the yard. I don't even, I don't even mess with it. I don't blame you. Yeah, my wife is a, 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 a cop. It's very weird being in bed with a cop. Do you know how embarrassing it is to be in the middle of making love to your wife and all of a sudden you hear, what's your hurry, pal? <laughs> Do you know why I stopped you? <laughs> Do you know how fast you were going? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta wear radar detector on my wiener. <laughs> it's a fuzz buster. <laughs> Bravo. Bravo! Morning laughter <laughs> just might be the best medicine. If you wanna turn your daddy parts orange, eat some Cheetos and watch some porn. Bob and Tom 24-7. <laughs> And Jesus said, take this bread and eat it. It is my body. And the disciples said, Jesus, we're all on low-carb diet. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you dying for our sins, but we're all trying to slim down. Like <laughs> we want to look good in the painting. I'll tell you what I sound like when I make love to a woman. Yeah. I'm actually pretty bad at it. I call it making like. When I make like to a woman, I sound like a very scared man who's crossing a very thin sheet of ice. <laughs> And all he's trying to do is get to the side alive. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> Sounds something like this. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm so scared. I can do this. Oh, thank God that's over with. Oh, my God. I have to lay down. That's hot. Yeah, that's hot. You know you're too high when you're eating cereal naked and your girlfriend tells you to put some clothes on, you realize it's not your girlfriend, it's just a woman on a bus. Sure. <laughs> that's how you know you're too high. Essential morning radio. All day and all night. Really? No, seriously. Really?
Bob and Tom 24 <laughs> USA. Uh, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks very much for joining us. Ace Cosby is our engineer. Chicks at the sports desk. There's Josh. Hello. Ciphering or drawing or something. This is Tom. There's Willie. Uh, Pat Godwin is in the Oxford Gold Performance Room, which means that uh, coming up today, we're going to have our Oxford Gold Golden Oldie as we uh, do a tribute to... Uh, Something in the realm with a... Well, put, put, it'll be a musical tribute. Okay, good. To something in the news. Glad to hear it. And uh, just call the Oxford Gold Group right now, 855-710-GOLD, to get your uh, free gold and silver investment guide. How about that? Christy Lee's at the Navy Federal Credit Union News Desk. Yep. And uh, we are still dipping our toes into the world of sports. Is that correct? Time now for Today in Sports History. We just had the uh, the world's oldest guy, is that right? The world's oldest man. Yeah. 112 year old man of Puerto Rico. Uh, he was born in 1908. Well, on this day in 1904, the third Summer Olympic Games are held in St. Louis, Missouri. Hmm. The third. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? The third. Now the third summer, of all of all time. The third. So, yeah, third of all. The third summer. Hmm. Peren modern Olympic. Right. Oh, okay. Of course, of course. I was going to say. Well, I'm surrounded by jackets. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, well, I mean, when you're talking uh, Rome, uh, <laughs> so this three, is the, the, uh, the original. Yeah, they were fully clothed and right, <laughs> right. So that doesn't count. Can you imagine if there was a movement to get them to take their clothes off and compete? <laughs> The Naked Olympics. Do you think that could get any traction, as they say? I, uh, I don't, don't they think so. Women's volleyball have enough issues with yeah. uh, people complaining. Uh, that's true. Yeah. That's very, very true. How, does it say how many uh, countries were represented? Mm -hmm. It was a part of the Olympic Games and part of the World's Fair. In 1904, the poster says, The Louisiana Purchase Exposition in St. Louis, USA, in 1904. And this... This poster is so 1904. Oh, I don't wow. know about you, but yeah. That it's almost great. looks like, looks like, like a, a Jefferson Airplane yeah. poster. Yeah. Like a Monterey Pop poster. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Very, very yeah. San Francisco, 1966, yeah. 67. Bill Graham came up with that, I guess. I Josh, is there any, uh, is the arch put there that year for the World's Fair? When did the arch, the arch come to the arch was Louis? in the 60s? Yeah, know? it was later. It was okay. a few decades later, but it was... Um, uh, there are still some things from, uh, they, they, there was a giant Ferris wheel of the 1904 World's Fair that they ended up burying, I think, huh. in uh, Forest Park there in St. Louis. What? So, yeah. I had bad juju, right? Bad, bad magic? <sighs> yeah, they took it down and buried it. Now, did you think that the, I thought that the arch went over the river? I just, for some reason, I thought that it was put there during the World's Fair. Are I don't you, know. Are you kidding me? No, I thought it went over the river. Do you know how wide? Oh, well, I know I didn't. Big, <laughs> big muddy is at that point. I know I didn't know that. I just, just, I'm an idiot. Sorry. It doesn't go over the river. No, it doesn't. No. no. I mean, who would, who would it be? It would it be. Didn't some guy fly an airplane? Under it? it? Under Through it? it? Once. Yeah. I once. Think they've, uh, helicopters. Yeah. I think they've tried. Yeah. Not, a, not a great idea. People have, uh. Tried climbing it, and uh, have you ever gone up in the thing? I have. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I've you been up in the little top. tiny car. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's no fun. <laughs> yeah, but I'd, I'd, uh, I'd be terrified. And it sways. The arch sways. A fair Does amount. it really? Yeah. Oh, and there's then, no way. But you want it to. If it didn't sway, it would crack and then fall. Oh. So you want it to sway. It the has windows to give are a little like bit. The, yeah. the windows are like trailer park windows. They're not really. He's got a. Yeah, like cigar boxes. Like yeah, a little, you, is it like a little car? That, yeah. It's like a... a it's a round little capsule. Car, yeah. capsule, elevator, egg thing. Ooh. That, it clicks uh, when it goes up. Yeah. Oh, it's leveling itself out. The whole time <laughs> you're thinking it's going to get stuck. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> They're going to have to... Boy, it's uh, been get me years since I've been up in that. Yeah. Some guy told me uh, St. Louis, the only city with a handle. <laughs> and I lost my mind. <laughs> That's <laughs> funny, baby. <laughs> <laughs> On this date, 1920... Washington Senators pitching legend Walter Johnson. You remember his nickname? Uh, Big the, J. <sighs> close. Big Train. Oh. Call him the Big Train, Tom. Okay. He no hit the Boston Red Sox. One nothing at Fenway on this date, 1920. The only no hitter of Walter Johnson's career. And on this date, 1941, outfielder Joe DiMaggio on his way to a record 56 game hitting streak. He tied today in 41. We Willie Keeler's 44-game Major League Baseball hit streak in a 9-2 win over the Boston Red Sox. Of course, Willie Keeler's nickname, We, because the tiny size of his penis. <laughs> 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 
we <laughs> skeptical. We Willie Keeler <laughs> delivered so seriously. <laughs> and uh, another world record to wrap this uh, stuff up. Uh, a twelve-year-old boy, twelve years old. What are you doing when you were twelve, Josh? Oh, uh, maybe <laughs> oh. learning a thing or two. Yeah, he's uh, this <laughs> boy. This twelve-year-old's become the world's youngest chess grandmaster. Yikes! According to ESPN. Abhimanyu uh, Mishra from New Jersey broke Sergey Card Cardjackins. He's a card yeah. thief. Yeah, yeah. He is. Record of 12 years and seven months after earning his grandmaster title at 12 years, four months, and 25 days looking for Bobby Fischer indeed. Ab Abhimanyu Searching, yeah. and his whatever. His father, <laughs> they've been staying in Budapest since April in pursuit of the title, and after earning two. This is scoring in chess, I guess. After earning two norms over two months, his final norm. How's everybody doing? <laughs> was that, is that your Norm show? Crosby? No, Norman Cheers. Ah, oh. Yeah, I was Norm! There. George Wendt, yeah. <laughs> uh, his final norm came after a win over Indian Grandmaster Leon. Leon? Leon Mendonca. It was the tweens' uh, final tournament uh, opportunity. Board, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, I was after suffering through. Did you today. say yeah? Oh. After suffering through today's Did you just history. say yes. yeah? I know. You piece of oh. greasy brown. <laughs> I don't get out. That's, and that's, uh, the, 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 that's amazing. This kid's got to be brilliant. He's a nerd. 12 years old. I was 60. It was 1969. Well, I was listening to Casey Kasem. Ah. Grand, Grandmaster is kind of a... I was telling a story. Did you want to be well, a DJ even at 12? Oh, uh, just about that time. Wow. Yeah. They used to think people who played chess were sort of magical, and they would call them grand wizards, but they uh, changed that. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh. You yeah. see that where I was going with that. Yeah. There was a problem. Uh, another organization. But too afraid to. Copy. Very, very And that's sports, Tom. Hit my new theme. Hey! Ladies and gentlemen. Chick Muggy and the sports, 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 all with Chick Muggy and the sports, sports, sports. <laughs> Whatever you do, wherever you go, sports, sports, sports. sports. <laughs> be a good, be a good sport, sport, sport. <laughs> oh, the lyrics are good. <laughs> sure, they need a little work, but the tune's catchy, man, catchy. Well produced. Christy! Nice instrumental, thank you very much. Well, the story everybody's talking about today, Bill Cosby's been released from prison. Pennsylvania's highest court threw out Bill's sexual assault conviction, ruling that the prosecutor who brought the case was bound by his predecessor's agreement not to charge Cosby. You'll recall Cosby was arrested in 2015 when a district attorney filed charges against him with newly unsealed evidence. The comic's damaging deposition in a lawsuit brought by Temple University sports administrator Andrea Konstad in 2004... <clears throat> The charges were filed just days before the 12-year statute of limitations was about to run out. Justice David Wecht said Cosby had relied on the previous district attorney's decision not to charge him when the comedian gave his potentially incriminating testimony in Constat's civil case. Well, so what this is all about is he made a deal. Right. He had made a deal earlier and yep. it was if binding. You, if you talk on this topic, we will not use it against you. And they did. So... Man. The court said justice and fair play and decency require the district attorney's office stand by the decision of the previous DA. Well, I wouldn't go that far. Well, I'm just saying that's what they said. <laughs> they should say on a legal technicality. Yeah, let's not throw the word justice around. Maybe. Cosby had served nearly three years of a three to ten year sentence for drugging and violating Constat in 2004. She and her lawyers called the ruling disappointing and expressed fear that it could discourage sexual assault victims from coming forward. District Attorney Kevin Steele said Cosby went free on a procedural issue that is irrelevant to the facts of the crime. Questioned under oath as part of the lawsuit, Cosby said he used to offer quaaludes to women that he wanted to have sex with. He eventually settled with Constat for $3.4 million. And of course, since then, more than 60 women have come forward to say Cosby violated them. So he's, he wasn't released because he was not guilty of anything. No. He was released on some legal stuff. So um, I wouldn't, uh, if I were you, I wouldn't drink the jello shots at the uh, 
celebration in his place. Yeah. 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 Ladies. That's, that's going to be a little, <laughs> a little dodgy. Um, yeah. Yeah, so uh, we'll see what happens. Um, Production uh, on the final installment of Indiana Jones has ground to a halt with uh, Harrison oh, Pat, Ford. Uh, Pat, what are you doing? I had a little oh. something for Bill Cosby. Oh, you oh, do? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, hey. hey. How'd you get free, Bill Cosby? Why are you home? Tell me, how did you get free? Sixty women came forward, said what you did. Now you're loose on a technicality. Oh, remember those many evenings you spiked their drinks by putting quaaludes in their tea. Oh, your lawyers are slick. You'll have a special on Netflix. <laughs> Bill Cosby, how did you get free? <laughs> yeah. A fair question. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't think they'll do the Netflix special. What do you think? I think they might. I don't think so. No. Well, boy, there were he did a couple shows after, He sure did. after the accusations. Right. Did he really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, and people uh, went to see him and they Oh, uh, I mean really, not on TV. They right, were really on his okay. side and uh, oh. Yeah, he still has a lot of supporters. Hmm. Wow. Okay, so we'll, well, we'll have to wait and see what happens with that one. And we'll wait and see what happens with Harrison Ford coming up. Okay. Uh, yes. He's okay, right? He, well, he had shoulder surgery, but Everything's it's going to make fine. the okay. Indiana um, Jones movie a delay a bit. Um, Just yeah. a piece of quiet away from Callista, I tell you that. Yeah, uh, we also so, have some, did you read the whole Cosby thing? You, 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 no, no. He's blaming it on his brother, Russell. I, uh, mm. <laughs> this is my brother, Russell, did <laughs> Okay. Is that how it was? That what he used to do a, back in the? Is that, I don't know that. A famous album. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Famous sorry. Cosby album. <laughs> but, I didn't uh, know to that. my brother Russell, who uh, I slept with, with or something. Yes. Yeah. Mm, yeah. What? what? I know the mm -hmm. uh, Wafre related. <laughs> uh, right now, I'll remind you that uh, Napa is out there. Napa Auto Parts stores want to keep you uh, moving. They want to keep that truck moving, that car moving. Move if it's it, got move it, move wheels, it. it's got an engine. Napa wants to help you keep it on the road. They've got parts for it. In fact, they have over 500,000 quality auto parts. And if you need a part fast, you can get it fast with Napa's famous curbside pickup or next day delivery. Napa's got what you need because when it comes to serving you and your car and your truck, Napa's motor never quits. That is... What we call Napa know-how. Curbside pickup, of course, available at participating Napa Auto Parts stores with in-stock items only. Get all the details at NapaOnline.com and find out more about Napa know-how from our friends behind the counter at all those great Napa Auto Parts stores. Uh, coming up, it's not a joke, a deer walks into a Walmart. <laughs> Uh, and interesting things happen. Uh, we have a shark attack update, and we have um, an amazing story. Did anybody see the thing about the dog? The fire. It's this. This sounds like the title of a book. The dog, the fireworks, and the doorbell. <laughs> no. Ooh. Have you Aww. seen this? I'd, I'd read that to my kids. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's Aww. true, uh, huh. and it's it's fascinating. And we'll have the story coming up. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hey, it's Roy Wood Jr. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. What up, Roy Wood Jr.? I'm Mark Allison. It is Thursday, July 1st, 2021. And a special thanks to everyone who came out for some laughs and helped with the benefit last Friday night in Indianapolis at the Irving Theater. It was a benefit project to send kids to summer camp. That's right, Crosley Camp. Pretty cool. And also, nearly $10,000 was raised by the Bob and Tom Show to help those kids get to camp. And Willie Griswold was on stage. If you'd like to see Willie, he'll be on stage again next week. He's going to be hosting for Megan Gailey at Helium Comedy Club in Indianapolis coming up on July 6th and July 7th. That's next Tuesday and Wednesday. Tickets are at the link in Willie's Instagram bio at Willie.Griswold, W-I-L-L-I-E, Griswold, G-R-I-S-W-O-L-D, at Willie.Griswold. That's his Instagram. Again, tickets available for the Helium Comedy Club. Willie's going to be hosting for Megan Gailey July 6th and 7th. Again, that's Tuesday and Wednesday, 8.30 p.m. Tickets at the link at Willie's Instagram. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. I'm Chick McGee with your Bob and Tom Sports Update. The Tampa Bay Lightning lead the Stanley Cup Final two games to none after beating the Canadiens 3-1 last night at Tampa. Andre Vasilevsky made a playoff career high 42 saves to keep the defending champions in the game. And Blake Coleman scored the game two winner on a highlight reel diving buzzer beater in the second period. Half of the NBA Finals are set. The Phoenix Suns are headed to the championship round for the first time in 28 years, defeating the Clippers 130-103 last night in L.A. to close out the Western Conference Final in six games. Chris Paul tied his career playoff high 
of 41 points. And Milwaukee Bucks forward Giannis, he's doubtful for Game 5, the Eastern Conference Finals tonight in Milwaukee after going an MRI on his injured left knee. Bucks officials say the two-time MVP hyperextended his left knee in the third quarter of that 110-88 Game 4 loss to the Hawks on Tuesday night. Major League Baseball, Washington beat Tampa Bay 15-6, to that in interleague action. American League winners, Detroit, Boston, the Angels, the White Sox, Seattle, Baltimore, Oakland, and Detroit. And National League winners, St. Louis, Milwaukee, Colorado, San Diego, Atlanta, and Miami. I'm Chick McGee, and that's your Bob and Tom Sports Update. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you just ruined it. <laughs> with us in the studio, comedian Doug Stanhope. I wanted to talk about something fairly mundane, actually, with what? Doug. You hate baseball. Am I correct? Uh, baseball players always, they just, they, they look like cops so much. They're so... <laughs> <laughs> no, they're so joyless. Are you out of your mind? But no, you watch you, you watch any other sport, and they're happy, and they're pumping up the crowd, they're high fiving. And baseball guys, they just look so joyless and smug, and they just sit there in the dugout, and they look like cops. You know how you know someone gets pulled over, they have no registration, and you need nine officers, and they all stand around with their arms crossed, and self-important looking, no joy in their face. So what do you do during? Because like, I can tell you, love I mean, I, I'll so bet much. on baseball. Because it's, I think that's the only reason people watch it is because it's the only thing on in the summer. I, I, I hate the I, I hate the Yankees. That's the only reason I watch baseball is to hope the Yankees lose, and that's I guess that's probably a miserable just because they buy their team and their fans are so obnoxious. Like if you're gonna just be cheering in the stands, pick an underdog and have some character. If you have money on the game, it's different. That's like having stock in a company. Yeah, but if you're just gonna be a, a Loud mouth, you know, beer fueled ass bag in the stands. Pick the underdog. Rooting for the Yankees is like going to a casino and cheering for the house. You're already supposed to win. You're standing behind the blackjack table going, oh, dealer busted your ass, bitch. Oh, that's my dealer. I got my dealer jersey on. This is Bob and Tom 24 7, 24 7, 24 7, 24 7. My most recent marriage was a disaster. It made the wreck of the Edmonds Fitzgerald look like a fender bender. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Sorry, uh, hello. And you remember Lord's famous line about uh, gun control. More ah, yes. yes. It, it, the relationship taught me a lot. It mm -hmm. taught me they won't sell you a handgun if you're crying. <laughs> <laughs> Bob and Tom. You can pick your morning radio show, and you can pick your nose, but you can because of <laughs> Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Hey, there's the king in the name for a reason. Uh, where was I? Kingsford Charcoal. I don't believe you. I want to know what really happened. The charcoal wouldn't light. I told you what happened. I don't think charcoal goes bad. You did not buy Kingsford. You bought a different I bought the off I bought brand. Off brand because I went to a gas station. They didn't... Could we get back to the show? Welcome uh, back to the Bob and Tom Show. There's Willie. Left. I'm Tom. That's uh, Christy Lee over there. Josh. Hi. Has, has something for us, apparently. And then uh, Ch Chick McGee that I mentioned is at the sports desk. Uh, Pat Godwin is getting ready Hello. for the Oxford Gold Group. It's the special Oxford Golden Oldie coming up today. Christy Lee at the Navy Federal Credit Union News Desk. Now, uh, uh, Josh, what's going on over there? 
Well, uh, uh, Christy, yesterday you told us a little bit about a Hollywood auction happening. Yes, uh, the Prop Store, one of the world's leading film and TV memorabilia companies, is holding the auction. Ends today, 1,200 iconic lots under the gavel. And one of them, well, we talked about the Statler and Waldorf puppet heads from the Muppets. They went for $95,000. Oh, wow. That's already sold. Amazing. But Harrison Ford's fedora that he wore in Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom oh. was expected to draw one hundred and fifty dollars to $250,000. Yeah. I took a look at this site. Man, there's a lot of uh, pretty cool stuff yeah. on there. Hmm. So uh -huh. I thought I'd share with you some more items oh, that cool. are uh, for sale on this auction. Yeah. From the set of Apocalypse Now, Dennis Hopper's cocaine straw. Oh. Is, uh, wow. You can get that. That'd be nice cool. to have. Yeah. Uh, from the movie Cats, Dame Judi Dench's prosthetic feline anus is uh, oh. up for auction. How much is that? How much? Is that? Uh, it was, uh, they're expected to get f a fifty grand. Oh, I can swing that. Yeah. Now, those were only visible in the secondary release. Right. right mm -hmm. Exactly. The yeah. first one they, yeah. they pixelated all the anuses out. Right. Yes. Yeah. From the set of House of Cards, Kevin Spacey's Zac Efron calendar <laughs> is. Uh, <laughs> from the set of Fried Green Tomatoes, Kathy Bates' back razor is uh, oh. going to be auctioned off. Isn't that something? Uh, from uh, Deliverance, Ned Beatty's hemorrhoidal pillow will be... Uh, yeah. uh, from the set of the TV talk show The View, yeah. uh -huh. an unopened bottle of Midol is... Uh, uh. Hey, is that still a thing? What, Midol? Is Midol still out there? Uh. I looked it up, it is. Okay. It is, but I don't think people... I mean, it's right. just basically a it was supposed know, to pain be, reliever. Uh, my doll was supposed to be for menstrual cramps. For menstrual cramps, cramps yeah. but it's just a great marketing campaign. Oh, this is, here's a movie we all love. The great action movie, True Lies. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. From that, you can get a roll of athletic tape used to fasten down Jamie Lee Curtis's weird lady wiener. <laughs> <laughs> weird, <laughs> weird lady wiener. <laughs> <laughs> the rumors. Uh, yes. Yes. So yes. From the set of the Kaminsky Method, oh. mm -hmm. Michael Douglas's Dental Dam is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, from the TV show Malcolm in the Middle, Frankie Munez. Oh, yeah. You can get Actually, Frankie. Yeah, you can, you can get Frankie. He's available. Okay. He will come so, sit on your bed. So yeah. interested. Uh, from the movie The Revenant. Remember that? Oh, sure, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's Frontiersman coat, oh. hand-sewn, period-specific, oh. and covered in grisly bear semen. Oh. <laughs> that was quite the wrestling match, wasn't yeah. it? I think uh, the thing that made hand, that yeah. hand-sewn. Yeah. Right, right. Yes. And finally, uh, from the set of Murder, She Wrote, Oh. Angela Lansbury's vast collection of interracial poems. Porn is now available. So okay. that's, uh, I, 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 good for her, I say. Good for her. Very progressive. I got to rewatch Murder She Wrote. Wow. And by the way, speaking of her, if you haven't seen the original Manchuria Candidate with Lawrence Harvey, please go visit that sometime. She won an Academy Award for that. She's day. amazing, and he's amazing. I guess she was only a year older than Lawrence Harvey. And she was playing his mother. And yeah. It, it's fa it's amazing. And Frank Sinatra's in it, Tom. Huh? It's a great movie. That's right. Uh, yeah. The Manchurian Candidate. Did Nothing you? from there in the auction that I saw. No. From that movie. But Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, we, we now turn back over to the Navy Federal Credit Union News Desk. Well, speaking of Harrison Ford, production on the final installment of Indiana Jones has ground to a halt. Harrison Ford recovering from an injury he suffered during filming. I tripped. A 78-year-old Star Wars actor hurt his shoulder while shooting a fight scene for Indiana Jones 5 last week. And Disney confirmed in a statement that apparently the team had initially suggested the mishap wouldn't detail or derail filming too badly. The Oscar nominee and franchise film icon, though, is going to be sidelined at least three months after Ooh. he undergoes Ooh. shoulder surgery. Uh, you yeah. don't feel like you did, you know. You yeah, you. sure. Turns out a pretty important part of the Indiana Jones movies is Indiana Jones. He's yeah. Make sure yeah. He's good. yeah. Yeah. Haven't yeah. they gotten to a point where they can write around... The entire movie should have been written from the start with him some advisory capacity and Not young Indiana or something. Well, they, he's, he's great. It just obviously he can't be wearing the last a, one he did was the, he can't be wearing a sling. It was pl right. uh, I played spot the stunt man during the entire movie. Oh, I and don't. you can ask Chick. Shoulder surgery is not easy to oh, forget. It mine still hurt. What? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah same both thing. of you. I'm very much recover. aware of that. That's what I'm saying. He, he can't. Three months is that's not that long. Yeah.
my left one's ripped up, and I'm taking it with me. I mm-hmm. decided. Well, it's, really? in this, well, the movie's called Indiana Jones and the Rehab Center of Doom. Oh, okay. Well, that's a, lot of it'll take, a lot of it will take place. He's, he's a, a big rehab. Uh, Don't tear yeah. that rehab center up. Yeah, a lot of that uh, shoulder rehab. Did you ever, did you go to the rehab when you had it done? I did. I I, I enjoyed it uh, for I, what, five or six sessions, and I think along that time, the lady... Sort of found out who I was and uh, wanted me to come over and uh, talk to people uh, on a Saturday oh, oh. for free. Stuff like that. What? So I thought, well, I'm not so doing this anymore, and I left. not my experience at all. Well, no. you. Uh, but it's much, like, it's, it's, it's much like cleaning. Are you fly-by-night rehab? You've been over? Oh, never mind. Much, you, what you, do you mean? A lot of the exercises, it's like cleaning. It's, oh, okay. They put, yeah. in, they, they put a thing in your hand and you rub the wall and you. Yeah. After after a while, you felt like you were. Well, yeah. Well, scrubbing th- scrubbing the place down. Hey, listen. While you're doing that, would you mind putting a little Ajax on it? And, they didn't have you paint a fence, did they? Yeah. <laughs> no, but it worked. I'm very. I'm happy. sorry, you're. Re- <laughs> so, well, best of luck to Harrison Ford as long as he's not flying any air. Well, I appreciate you on the set. <laughs> That's um, good. <laughs> we'll, 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 have, we'll dig up our Harrison Ford tribute. How about that? Greek oh, police God. have recovered two paintings by Picasso and Piet Mondrian. Nearly a decade after they were stolen, the works have been stripped from their frames during a well-organized overnight heist (laughs) at the National Art Gallery in Athens on January 9th of 2012. According to authorities, the two paintings were in the hands of the police but provided no detail on their condition or whether any arrests had been made. The stolen Picasso was a cubist female bust which the Spanish painter had donated to Greece in 1949. Cubist? I prefer my female busts to be round. There we go. Yeah, well, Picasso we was go. dealing in... <laughs> he was a boob man. Yeah. He was a yeah, boob man. Yeah, he liked him. Yeah. He was a cube man. He really Isn't liked that the, uh, news confer- the news conference <laughs> they had and they dropped the painting on the floor, yep. I think, or something? Yeah, that was hilarious. Christy, is Mondri and the guy with the colorful squares? Yep. yep. He's all about the colorful squares and the lines. This mm-hmm. is an uh, earlier work, but that's exactly very good. Very thing. good. Did you take art history? I had a really good art history teacher she almost ruined my life. I had a teacher oh. that almost made me major in art history, and I'm very glad that I didn't. Oh, my. But yeah, Carol Rogers, she was number one. Huh. Cool. Yeah, just cool. Nothing funny or interesting about no, it. No, it's very interesting. Uh, we have, um, uh, you, but you're right, Chick, the thing did, they were doing a... Uh, it's hilarious when it happens. Uh, they were doing the uh, press conference yesterday, and they, yeah. <laughs> they've got this... Mega million dollar Picasso painting. <laughs> they, it's just leaned up. It's they, leaned up against something uh, like on a, a table, and <laughs> and it falls down. It just falls. It hits the ground. Is it and okay? And you hear a. <gasps> <laughs> Did it get damaged? No, it was fine. He, he picked it back up and put it up yeah, on the table. Yeah, you think they you know, they take a little more they care? They would treat it like some frat boy Scarface poster. <laughs> you think they might, might? I don't know. Velvet rope and. That Picasso uh, was donated to Greece back in 1949 with a dedication in homage to or homage to the Greek people for their resistance to Nazi German occupying forces during World War II. Greek people prefer to be called Greekersons. Greekersons? Yeah. Oh, okay. You know I apologize for I the mistake. I'm so sorry. Mich- Mich- there's Michiganders and there's Greekersons. That's yes. Right, yeah. The Greek police! I was just thinking the same thing. Come on the back door. The Greek police. The police song? Is that the dream police? Sorry, it's... Dream police is cheap trick. Yeah, cheap trick. Yeah. Police, Um, police. uh, Leave my butt alone. In any event... uh Okay. Greek, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so <laughs> a nice, a nice gift from Picasso. Yes, uh, for, to the country for not getting all Nazi'd up <laughs> during World War II. I think <laughs> I'm glad that they've got it. Together. They've got their painting back. But yeah, the, the press conference thing is kind of humorous. They don't really, I think, treat it with the delicacy that it deserves. <laughs> but uh, it's back in, the, it's back in the right hands. Thank you very much. Now we were talking about um, the Harrison Ford thing. Yes, and it reminded me of an, an occurrence on the show featuring one of. Uh, one of your good friends, Greg Warren, a oh, very fine right. comedian, and uh, what another comedian uh, who, who is uh, famous for his impressions. And um, uh, the two of them were in here, and they were, uh, there was some kind of fight going on. I forget exactly what it was all about, but uh, you'll you'll see who's involved and what happens. Greg Warren is our guest. You're single. You're a former wrestler. Huh. Um, what do you do on the road? We were talking to Mike about his activities in the road. Watch television a lot? Uh, do you rent movies from SpectreVision? Or y- you do not, too. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm trying to get, I just got a DVD player recently. Mm-hmm. I love watching those because of the deleted scenes. Those are my favorite oh, really? <laughs> parts of them. That's, I, I just, that's all I watch. But some of them are really like, they're the scenes they cut out of the original movie, but just sort of can tell why, you know? 
We rented The Fugitive the other day with Harrison Ford. Great movie. <laughs> yeah. There's a little deleted scene in there where he's running from Tommy Lee Jones and he runs into Subway and orders a sandwich. You know, that's like the, <laughs> just weird, weird to see Harrison Ford in there. <laughs> All right, listen to me. I need a six-inch turkey sub on wheat with bacon, no mustard or mayonnaise. All right. Oh. Oh, uh, lettuce, tomato, <laughs> green pepper. I didn't kill my wife. You, like, all right, I see why they cut that out of the movie. Yeah. You, 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 Indian Jones. Uh, you, Indian Jones. You, Indian Jones. Uh, well, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Harrison Ford. I no, no, you, Indian Jones, man. I seen you. Right, in the, I seen I, Indian Jones one, Indian right, Jones two, well, Indian Jones three. Then you didn't right. work for a long time. Well, actually, and then I did see you in a movie last year, uh, Hollywood Homicide. Right, yeah. That, was that wasn't that I good. <laughs> <laughs> you should well, have done Indian didn't. Jones 4. Well, we're actually trying to You got to a whip, too. On. You like the whip man. Well, I, I <laughs> don't whip personally at? have the whip? whip. It's in the Smithsonian Where Institute. You, right you now. look old, too, now, man. <laughs> you, you, All you, right, listen to me. <laughs> I didn't come here to be talked to by some deranged fan, all right? <laughs> okay, man. <laughs> Indian Jones. Uh, all right, fine. Get your whip out. Jones. <laughs> That's Greg Warren and, and Mike McRae. Ah, just... Greg doing his uh, Huey Baker yeah, as his best is... friend. God, that makes me laugh. Yes, that's so good. Uh, and a great premise as well. <laughs> Harrison Ford. Well, still, is... still a very good movie. Yeah. Uh, now, but Mr. Harrison Ford is okay. He has a pretty good. serious shoulder injury. Uh, he's one of my favorite actors. Don't you guys love him? Sure. I love yeah. him, yeah. yeah. Early it's... on, yeah. It's good. Uh, it's unbelievable. I cried when he died. Oh, wait. Yeah, that latest Call of the Wilds. Oh, uh, man. What? With the, with the CGI dog? Oh, you watched boy. that? Oh. I loved it. CGI really? dog sounds like a detective thing. They <laughs> couldn't get a real very dog? Special CGI Do you dog. A little more difficult. Uh, a secret about my buddy Josh is that uh, he is a pushover. For a horse movie. I swear. I, I love horse movies. I, <laughs> any movie about a horse I'm in, I cry. It's a, I don't know what's happening. Wasn't Animated there... too? I, I've watched Spirit. Yeah, that's the Stallion <laughs> of the Cimarron. <laughs> We were, we were, I actually watched that too. I can't. I can't. We were at some movie and uh, I hadn't really been hung out with you very often. And they showed the preview to a movie called Pete about a horse. Uh, lean on Pete. Lean Thank on you. Pete. And I went, <laughs> and he's crying. Next to me. I went and saw it myself. <laughs> yeah. Was it good? Loved it. Okay. Yeah. What was Pete's issue? Uh, Pete was, uh, well, a young uh, a boy, a teenager, had decided that he really liked Pete, and Pete was going to be sold. And so oh. instead of letting that happen, the boy uh, takes him, and they go on a road trip. He stole him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wow. So a horse thing. Oh, boy. It killed me. Do they play Lean on Me during the song? Is that a pun they're going for? No, they, Weird Al does Lean on Pete. Oh. Uh, <laughs> lean on Pete. <laughs> if you need hay, <laughs> he'll come your way. <laughs> he is a good horse. Oh, yeah, Pete. <laughs> Very really, touching. You guys get to work on Very touching. Tell it, touching. Pete. Tell uh, it, Pete. Oh, can you, uh. can you grab that phone? Hello, Bob and Tom Show. Hey, thank you. Hi, Floyd. Hi, Floyd. <laughs> I have enjoyed your Pete program. <laughs> and Josh, I'm not you. I like horrors and movies, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you well, know, we've got our nation's Independence Day coming up this weekend, something we should all be talking about. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nothing gets my red, white, and blue blood to pumping like the good old Fourth of July. Yes. It's <laughs> a time to celebrate our victory over those... Tax happy English state tote Democrats. That's right. They were going to rule. That's right. All right. Yeah, not that I don't enjoy a good lifting sun tea when it heats up outside. But sure. <laughs> sure. The tea's good. Yeah. Although I'm not as much a fan of the fireworks as I used to be. Oh, what's that? Gets our little dog Rita all nervous. <laughs> She always ends up circling in company squad on the living room rug. Oh, boy. Of course, my am being so riddled with arthritis, it's not easy for me to get down there to clean up the dog mess anymore. <laughs> so I have to wait for it to harden and <laughs> next morning kindly kick it out the sliding glass door. 
That's a good strategy. Uh, that just makes sense. Yeah. Well, Big D calls me Pele the Poo Patrol. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Pele. Pele. The Poo Patrol. So the other day I was paging through my parade magazine. Sure. Boy, they've got some funny quips in there, boy. Oh, yeah. Reminded yeah. me of some of my favorite Fourth of July jokes. Ace, you may want to take a few notes. Oh. oh. Ace, right. ready. Are you ready? Yep. yep. I read what's red, white, blue, and green. Mm, I give up. Mm. Uncle Sam, after eating tater salad, it was left out in the sun too long. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's funny. Get it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you'll kick a shine on this one. <laughs> what do you get when you cross the brontosaurus with fireworks? Oh. I give up. Dino Matt. Oh. <laughs> hey. Dino. Yeah. yeah. Hey, so I'm starting to think maybe those fellas are there the problem and not your joke book. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of dino, Matt, boy, I sure do miss Jimmy Walker being on TV. <laughs> yeah, you ain't a fan, are you? And that film it was easy on the eyes, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, what relative do you want to invite to your Fourth of July barbecue? I don't know who. Your Uncle Sam. Sure. <laughs> All right. Pretty, pretty cute. Yeah. Oh, okay. What's the official <laughs> official NBA team of the 4th of July? The uh, 76ers? 76ers? Yeah. yeah. Well, you'd think it'd be the 76ers, Chick. But on account of this weather being what it is this year, it's the Mammy Heat. Oh, oh. Heat. I see, yeah, another, <laughs> another smiler. <laughs> How about I try one on you? All right. Try this and like a four-year-old digging in his nose. Hopefully, I'll pick a winner. <laughs> How did the pandas stay cool on Independence Day? Oh, I don't know. They turn on the bar conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ace, I'm pretty sure it's them and not. <laughs> you turn on the what? Boy, bear that Elon oh. Musk is sure hound himself, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it sure is. <laughs> you know, you'd think with all that money, he'd know there's other stores beside old Davy. <laughs> he kind of dresses like Josh when you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Chick, tell us more about Wee Wee Keeler. I'll take <laughs> well, Wee Wee Keeler was... Oh, oh. <laughs> Thank you, Floyd. Uh, give me the teaser, Christy. Well, we have a dog fireworks story coming up. I can't oh. believe Floyd actually referred to his little puppy, Rita. We have a deer in a Walmart. We have a flying car. And we have coupons in the news in a big way, Ace. Yeah. Anybody say coupons? <sighs> no. Not okay. Um, Back when I was a kid, maybe. I believe the, yeah, the it's correct coupons. Right. But I, but I think it's... I grew up saying coupons, but yeah, now I, I say coupons. My grandma says uh, it that way. I think it's a, it, a big yeah. crime. Yeah. Yeah. A big crime? A big crime. Uh, who knew? A counterfeit Coupon coupons crime. Oh. are apparently a very big deal. Yeah, Ace, you know any of uh, any uh, counterfeit coupons? I have, I have no knowledge of this. Mm. Mm. Um, mm. And uh, we have a request for Ace's underwear story again. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure why, but we can certainly <laughs> get back to that. Super. Uh, uh, coming up, we have the Oxford Gold Golden Oldie. We'll take a classic song from Pat and uh, and relive the moment. Sometime coming up real soon, this is the Bob and Tom Show. This is the Bob and Tom Show, brought to you in part by Navy Federal Credit Union, proudly serving the armed forces, DOD, veterans, and their families. Our members are the mission, insured by NCUA. This is the Bob and Tom Show.
say we didn't warn you. <laughs> There's laughter ahead. You guys want to grab lunch? We yeah, can't go anymore. anymore. Holy That's God. a good day's work, everybody. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. Uh, we have fun here on the Bob and Tom Show, don't we? Yes, we do. July 1st, 2021. My name is Mark Allison. Rolling through a Thursday, Jess Allsman, Scorched Earth, and comedian Ali Breen on the way. Plus our regular Thursday guest, West Coast Mountain correspondent Al Jackson. Catch up with him at aljacksonlive.com. That's where you can also purchase his children's book, Where is Baby Ford? Portions of the proceeds benefit the Firefly Autism School in Lakewood, Colorado. That's Al Jackson joining us on a Thursday. And comedian Allie Breen has been rescheduled for today. She'll be in the 9 o'clock hour this morning. You can reach her at AllieBreen.com. Hi, everybody. Christy Lee from the Navy Federal Credit Union Entertainment News Desk. Britney Spears leveled serious accusations last week about the people overseeing her life. One of those, her dad, James Spears, said in court documents it's critical for the court to confirm whether his daughter's allegations are true. Brittany told a judge her conservatorship is so restrictive she's not allowed to get married or have a baby. She says she's forced to use birth control and take medication against her will. Although James Spears has been her conservator for most of the past 13 years, he says for the past two he's only overseen his daughter's finances, not her person. Jody Montgomery was appointed by the court to oversee Britney's personal life, and Montgomery could not be reached for comment. Roy Acuff's primary fiddle has found a home at the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum in Nashville, thanks to Vince Gill. Gill found out that the granddaughter of a member of Acuff's band was going to sell the fiddle, so he bought it, believing it belonged at the museum. It was a gift to Acuff from U.S. Army members who discovered it in a bombed-out music store in Frankfurt, Germany at the end of World War II and is now on display in the museum's permanent collection. And why did Richard Branson name yesterday's Virgin Orbit mission to space Tubular Bells? Well, it's because that was the first album his Virgin Records label released in 1973. Yesterday's mission delivered satellites from the U.S., Netherlands, and Poland into space, Virgin Orbit will do three more test flights of its rocket ship this year before taking paying customers into space next year. And that's your entertainment news. I'm Christy Lee. More of the Bob and Tom Show on the way. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob and Tom. Here's some Donnie Baker 4th of July tips and tricks to keep you safe. Oh, good. Well, number one, alcohol and fireworks do not mix. No. So make sure you do all your drinking beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> and number two, practice food safety. Two years ago, my cousin Tabitha came down with scabies after our Fourth July party. <laughs> and she blamed my Aunt Putty's pea salad, said the mayo went bad. <laughs> which we all know, mayo can't go bad. Basically, anything they put in packets is safe. <laughs> Pretty dark. Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Hi, everybody. This is Mark Sweeney, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Are odors in your home a constant problem? Do you live with a smoker, have pets, or simply have annoying kitchen cooking odors that just won't go away? Do you ever hear comments like this? Gee, Janet, I never thought of fertilizing houseplants with cow dung. <laughs> or has a house guest ever said... <laughs> Great room freshener, Bill. What do you call it? Early American locker room? <laughs> You've tried carpet deodorizer, spray mist, incense, stick-up fragrance dispensers, and even plug-in devices that temporarily mask the smells in your home. Nothing seems to work. That's why Home Products Incorporated, a division of Frigamall Industries, is proud to announce its latest innovation. Le Clip. With Le Clip, foul-smelling odors seem to miraculously disappear. Simply put Le Clip over your nose and the nose of visitors to your home and see what a difference it can make. Hi, Mary. How you been? <laughs> Wonderful, Janet. Hey, your house smells great. See how easy? If you pick up Le Clip today and if you're not delighted with the results, we'll send your money back. Le Clip by the same company that brought you Le Blindfold, the product that makes messy, cluttered homes look more neat and organized. Gosh, I need to... The house has never looked better. Live <laughs> <laughs> and lay clip. Pick yours up today. <laughs> okay. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24 7. <laughs> 
Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks very much for joining us. Uh, let's see now. Ace Cosby is our engineer. The topic will be Ace Cosby in a matter of moments. Right now, we'll say hello to Josh Arnold. He's over there. Christy Lee's at the Navy Federal Credit Union News Desk. I'm Tom. That's Willie. Uh, let's see. Oh, there he is. I was going to say, uh, through the glass there, it's the Oxford Gold Performance Room, which is going to come in very handy because it is indeed time for the Oxford Gold Group and their presentation of the Oxford Gold Golden Oldie, in which we take a uh, news story from the past, and uh, we'll hear a song from Mr. Godwin on that exact topic. And by request, the topic of underwear came up. In fact, just the other day we were talking about it. And um, Ace uh, made the point that uh, um, his underwear had holes in it because of um, uh, excessive flatulence over the course of time. Right. And uh, when he first made this admission, we, we actually have the audio. Uh, you'll hear Ace, then uh, Josh will counter with, um, I think, a logical objection to Ace's point. You, you, should, yes. pre you should preface it by saying Josh was talking about his uh, how worn his underwear were. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, okay, here, and here we go. Need <laughs> holes from flatulence? Do I get the holes from flatulence? What? Yeah. Does that oh. happen? You farted a hole in your underwear? <laughs> okay. See a doctor. Get That's your diet checked. <laughs> <laughs> So you see the problem there. Right. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Ace claims that um, the, the holes in Josh's underwear for, were from excessive flatulence. Who can which, listen which to that and go, oh, yeah, that's reasonable behavior. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay, well, let's do it again. That's human being. Uh, well, let's listen carefully. Here we go. It starts with Ace. Need holes from flatulence? Do I get the holes from flatulence? What? Yeah. Does that oh. happen? You farted a hole in your underwear? <laughs> okay. See a doctor. Let's die a chance. Okay. Uh, there, there you go. Now, um, you know, oh. We now uh, apply that uh, that uh, story to this song. It's Cosby is our engineer, and he's always telling jokes at Tommy G's insistence. <laughs> There's a joke a day in spite of protests. <laughs> Still a suggest. Chick shakes his head at most of them, but AC does his best. He says they're not jokes, which doesn't make much sense. <laughs> Ace Cosby says his boxers have been ruined by his gas. They are full of holes and shredded from his toxic flatulence. They're mutilated when he cuts one in his cheapness <laughs> and his shame. I'm farting, I'm farting, only the waistband still remains. <laughs> lie, lie, lie. It's a lie, 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 Boom. lie, 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 it has to be a lie. Oh. Oh. There it is, ladies and gentlemen, the Oxford Gold Group. I'm not so how proud they are, but they proudly present <laughs> yeah. uh, the golden oldie of the week. Uh, by the way, Oxford Gold is all about buying real gold and real silver, the kind you can hold in your hand. You don't just get a piece of paper saying, you own gold. No, no. no you got no. the gold. They'll send you the little bars, the whole deal. Call the Oxford Gold Group right now, 855-710-GOLD. That's 855-710-GOLD to get your free gold and silver investment guide. Get some information. Do some homework. Find out about the history of gold and silver and its value. And perhaps that's for you. Find out more, 855-710-GOLD. That's 855-710-GOLD. Tell them the Bob and Tom Show sent you. The Oxford Gold Group, proud to present that tribute to both Simon and Garfunkel and to Ace's underwear. What color do we have on today, Ace? Um, I think purple. Purple underwear? Oh, oh how cool. Wow. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, power blue Josh. yesterday, purple today. Mine are black and white. Checkered? Black and white? Uh, stripes, I think. Stripes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Boxers? Yeah. Vertical or horizontal? I think they're vertical stripes. Okay. I, yeah, they are. Yeah. yeah Make everything look longer that way. Oh, I didn't, I didn't, <laughs> why? didn't consider that. Why do you think the Yankees always win? <laughs> there, you go. Yeah. Well, there, there we go. I, I, I had no Old idea. Pinstripe. Thank you, Pat. Uh, uh, Christy Lee, once again, at the, uh, at the Navy Federal Credit Union News Desk. What have we got over there? A frightened dog who ran away from home has safely returned. Mary Lynn Whiteacre and Ryan Washick of Simpsonville, South Carolina. Simpson, eh? Yes. <laughs> said their dog named Raja was playing outside when she got scared by fireworks going off and jumped over their fence. USA Today reports after hours of searching, the couple awoke in the middle of the night to their doorbell ringing. When they opened the door, 
They found Raja sitting outside. <laughs> That's awesome. A ring camera outside the home captured video of the dog leaping up and ringing the doorbell. Awesome. That's how you do it, Isn't right? That great. What kind of dog do you know? I don't know what kind of dog it was. Um, how sweet. The yeah. cute kind. The yeah. sweet kind. Yeah. The smart, smart sweet. guy. I, the picture I can't tell, but it's uh, those doorbell cameras. What is the word? They're like a wide angle fisheye kind of thing. Yeah. And um, so you you get the kind of a weird uh, shaped dog face. Yeah. <laughs> hey, weird shaped dog face. Oh, what do you oh. got going on there, Patty? Uh-oh. Someone scratching at the door. <laughs> Somebody ringing the bell. Someone scratching at the door. Somebody ringing the bell. Do me a favor. Open the door. Let him in. Hey, Roger, where you been? <laughs> Fireworks scared a little puppy, so he jumped the fence. Aww. Poor thing got so frightened, his anal glands were expressed. <laughs> Do me a favor, hose him down first and let him in. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Aww. Uh, Rasha looks like a mutt. She's I... a lab Catahoula leopard mix. I was going to say, she's a got a leopard? The... She's got, the, leopards. she's got that very unusual. Um, yeah. Uh, but I don't know how to describe it. Uh, uh, what, how would you describe it, Christy? It, it, like leopard-like. Yeah. Fur. Yeah. But she's got cute floppy ears. I'd say she weighs probably forty-five pounds, yeah. maybe. She's a sweetie. A little little medium-sized dog. <laughs> medium-sized, a beautiful little dog, though. Yeah. God, that's oh, so funny. <laughs> oh, here's the video. Look at Dean. R ringing boy. the doorbell. Oh, my oh, goodness. Okay. That's incredible. May I come in, please? Oh. That's adorable. What's going on? Such a smart oh, at, dog here. Oh, yeah. Mm. At my, uh, the fireworks in my neighborhood, which are, have been going off now for a couple my one dog oh. is terrified of them. See if yeah. you can guess yeah, when. I got to deal with that. See piece. if you can guess when the uh, lady owner comes on screen by listening to. Uh, by listening to Pat Godwin when he sees the woman on the screen. Did, did you so catch that? So there the we have the dog. There's the dog. <laughs> There's yeah. the dog. The dog is open. I was, I was yeah. ringing cuts, the doorbell again. Uh -huh. to... Listen for Pat. Mm. Is it ringing the doorbell again? Yeah, mm. come on. So let me in, Mom. That. Ooh. <laughs> Yeah. Now, is, that is, is that the mom or is that no, the reporter? That's the reporter from <laughs> Inside the reporter. Edition. Yeah, she's, <laughs> There's the mom. I knock on that. Where's the mom? Right there. Oh, oh I saw, I'm sorry. Okay, there you go. Okay. Um, <laughs> Good, couple. Is, Good for that. That's a, yeah, that dog's a, beautiful. That, that brindle is sort yep. of leopard-like. How it? smart is that dog? Oh. I'm not sure the dog really understands the camera thing. I think it just likes to jump know. up and well, I know, but it seems you to never know. It does, it does it look. Does. It looks like he understands that there's a camera. On. I'm Roger. Right. Hello. <laughs> it's you know it's it's really noisy out here. I want to come back inside. Aww. Does anyone else have a dog terrified of the fireworks? Well, I have that I puppy, some. and I'm really worried about it. Well, you can. Yes, yeah. I know they have some vets will give you a medication. For, well, but there's also have, how those, can you expose them? Like I have to go to a fr um, a fireworks thing on Friday, and I was going to take her, and I thought if she's with us, I, I tried that once. Oh, didn't yeah, go I think well. That's worth, worth trying. Yeah, though. I think well, I'm no, try I, that. I, I honestly I did that, and uh, when we I used to live over by the that dam over there, mm -hmm. and, the, and Elvis uh, ran away. But Elvis was older, right? Wasn't a puppy. That's true. Yeah. But yeah, the one I, do those jackets work? Those, whatever they're called? Yes. I think they really are. Are they called thunder jackets? jackets? Yeah. yeah. I've got to get one before the fourth. Oh, I know they work for me. Don't you? Like oh, when you get, you get x rayed at the dentist? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's so comfortable. Oh, heavy, yes. heavy. Little weight. Mm. I need to buy one. <laughs> I have weighted blankets. They it make could... those for people. Gravity blankets? Yeah, they make weighted blankets for people. <laughs> what? Yeah, oh, yeah. To oh, make yeah. I love safe. mine. You never heard of a weighted blanket? I don't. Know. It sends you back to the womb. Oh, it's awesome. It does, yeah. Well, all I know is that the fireworks drive the my dog crazy. She wouldn't even go out this morning. Mine has really? a plastic like square through it, so I have a womb with a view. No, wait a minute. Your oh, dog nice. didn't go out this morning because it <laughs> was raining. It wasn't because it. of the fireworks. Yep. yep uh, the last couple of days, I got to drag her outside, day and night, rain or shine. Oh. She's terrified of the, no. the the noise hurts her ears, I guess. Poor thing. Well, anyway, if you want to see the video, it really is great. Um, it's a uh, beautiful little doggy ringing the front doorbell. Hi. We're way loud out here. Yes. Do you guys have any terrifying. snacks in there? Can I interest you in some new roofing? <laughs> <laughs> new jokes there. New roofing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> new jokes there. <laughs> coming up, we have uh, a shark attack, flying car update, and um, the next wedding you go to... 
you might enjoy the wedding and then have to uh, have to work it. <laughs> work it. <laughs> yeah. That's apparently the new trend. Hmm. We'll find out what that's all about when we come back. This is the Bob and Tom Show. More Bob and Tom next. Got a comment? Our email is Bob and Tom at Bob and Tom dot com. Hi, this is Dr. Will Miller, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7, which begs the question, why do you need Bob and Tom 24-7? Ah, it makes you feel good inside, doesn't it? Yes, it does. You know, Bob and Tom have several podcasts you can download and listen to for free. The Bits and Pieces podcast to dive into the archive with Willie G, Jason Hoffsetz, Jessica, and Jess Hooker. Also, that Josh Arnold podcast hosted by... That Josh Arnold and the Bob and Tom Show Extra podcast. That's something extra every weekday afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern. They're all free, all available at bobandtom.com slash podcasts. I highly recommend them, just not during the show. You are listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Good morning. I'm Mark Allison with things you may have missed on the Bob and Tom Show this morning. Bill Cosby has been freed from prison after Pennsylvania's highest court overturned his sexual assault conviction. It's a stunning reversal of fortune for the comedian once known as America's dad. The state Supreme Court in Pennsylvania said Wednesday the prosecutor who brought the case was bound by his predecessor's agreement not to charge Cosby. The 83-year-old Cosby served nearly three years of a three- to ten-year sentence. Cosby was promptly set free from the state prison in suburban Montgomery County and driven home. The NCAA has cleared the way for athletes to profit off their fame and celebrity. The move comes just as legislation is set to become law in a dozen states that would allow for that kind of compensation. The NCAA wants to have federal laws or its own rules regarding the issue known as NIL. It was forced to seek a temporary solution. The decision applies to more than 450,000 athletes across all three divisions of the NCAA. And those are things you may have missed. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob and Tom. I don't know if it's on the news. There's a small meteorite heading toward Legoland. Uh-oh. Damn, it should be limited to 50 square blocks. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad. I like that. I like that one. Okay. Ace, hope you got another one. Oh, my God. I think anger. Joke of the day. Well, Chick was mentioning uh, the pirates on the helmets of the buccaneers. And yeah. The smiling and the winking. Mm -hmm. yep. Pirates are great singers, Chick. You know that? No, I didn't know that. They can hit the high seas. <laughs> Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24 7. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24 7. Yeah!
Essential Morning Radio. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. 24-7. 24-7. For Batman, it was Batgirl. For Superman, it was Supergirl. And now, meet Spider-Man's female counterpart. From Bob and Tom Productions, it's the superhero women have known about for years. All right, toots, this is a stick up. Hand over all your money. Oh, dear. Yeah, come on, lady, hurry it up. Somebody's gonna get hoit. <laughs> help! Oh, please help! Won't somebody help me? Let that young woman go, you two ruffians. Yeah? Who's gonna make us? I am. <laughs> Come on, lady. You must be in your mid-50s. <laughs> yeah. What do you have going? Some kind of superpowers? Yes, I do. Take a look at these. <laughs> oh, gross. Let's get out of here. <laughs> it's spider Vane woman. <laughs> oh, God, no! <laughs> Spider-Man got his superpowers from being bitten by a spider. spider Vane woman got her powers from working as a waitress for 17 years. Don't make spider Vane woman show you her legs because if she has to, she will. Look at this one. Uh, I think I'm gonna puke! Mm -hmm. Oh, here, hold my purse. I'll show you my hysterectomy scar. Uh. When you need help, call on the only superhero who wears long polyester pants, oh. comfortable support hose, and sensible shoes. She's Spider Vein Woman. Coming soon to a theater near you. They don't say we didn't warn you. Oh my God! There's laughter ahead. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. Yeah, but it turns out I'm, I don't I don't sleep well anyway. I've been grinding my teeth. Doesn't he? Mm, I didn't know I grind bad. my teeth until mm. I woke up. My husband was pouring coffee beans into my mouth. <laughs> that, that was, what a weird way to save time in the no morning. No kidding, but it's fresh coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Bob and Tom. With it, FanDuel Sportsbook. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Thank you very much for joining us. Let's see, there's Chick McGee across the way at the sports desk. Ace Cosby is our engineer. He's also responsible for the famous Ace Cosby joke of the day. Just had some coaching lessons from Floyd. Yeah. Hope you heard that. Uh, did you take some good <laughs> notes there, Ace? Uh, Christy Lee is at the Navy Federal Credit Union news desk. Yes, sir, President. Josh is sitting over there. Mr. Godwin is in the Oxford Gold Performance Room. Willie G is next to me. This is Tom speaking. Let's and Jessica. Now. And uh, yeah. on the big screen, it's Jessica Alsman. Hey, Jessica, hey. how are hey, you? Jessica. Hi, Alsman. It's weird to be here on a Thursday. Well, coming up, we're gonna have, we have brought you in because uh, your uh, icy responses to the letters that we get from Allie Breen oh. are necessary. Uh, a lot of stupid cheaters out there. <laughs> stupid <laughs> cheaters. Yeah. Stupid and stupid criminal cheaters. women. Okay, now, <laughs> All right. we look forward to talking to you Going on that to topic coming thing. up later. Right now, we... I think we should just uh, break it all down, ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado. Oh. Yeah, baby, yeah! Oh. 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 We kind of touched on this subject before, but uh, what do prisoners use to call each other? Oh, I don't know. Cell phones. Oh! oh. Yeah. Oh, sarcastic laugh. Chick's That's trying a, over there. He's that, working. That was real. He's got to work. Got that work. was real. See, he knows. He knows. He's smart. Smart guy. <laughs> you know what cell phones have, Chick? Hmm? They've got good bars. Woo! A lot of bars. <laughs> a lot of bars. Baby. The ones in prison, I think, would be. Prison cell phones yeah, is how okay. you should have yeah, probably so said that. Well, oh, that's how yeah. we, we... And don't they... Uh, how do they, how do they, smug, how do they smuggle them in? Their butts. Oh, what they do get, they call that? The butt purse or something? Yeah, they got to be happy that the... Uh, remember the back in the days when those Transformers were the size of a toaster? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they were smuggling them then. Well, because that'd be... Wow, you really gotta, I yeah. got to... Hey, yeah. hey, Spike, Spike, I got your phone, but uh, the brick? bad news. I, I'm, there's no way I'm bringing in that <laughs> charger. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're figure, figure that out on your own. Um, they're much much smaller now. Thank you very much. <laughs> Is it the lightning cord? Is that what that thing's called? Can you hear me, man? Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, actually, these are a lot bigger. Remember, our little Motorola flip phones were awesome. They were Well, tiny. they have prison phones, remember? Yeah, We've, they had somebody oh, that's us right. We had one. Yeah. 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 The size, size of a tube of lipstick. Yeah. Yeah. They're but small. Fits but, right up there. But back in the day, my point was Are the chargers know? used to be the, the thing that you would plug into the wall was right. the size of a couple packs of cards. 
Um, yeah, we got your point. Apparently, we didn't respond the way you wanted us to. No, no, I thought <laughs> you said transformer. I mean, you already right thought down. I was. He did talking, say transformer. Christy thought I was talking about the phone, not the actual. I okay. thought you were talking yeah. about uh, what's a transformers guy's name? Optimus Prime. <laughs> <laughs> you said transformer. What do you got over there, Christy? <laughs> <laughs> Very go. good, Tom. <laughs> a prototype flying car has completed a test flight between two cities in Eastern Europe. The so-called air car was built by a company called Klein Visions. The air car spent 35 minutes airborne as it traveled between Nitra and Bratislava Those in Slovakia. Places. After landing in Bratislava, the aircraft transformed into a car and was driven into the city center by the company's CEO, Stefan Klein, and company co-founder, Anton Zajac. 35 per minutes is impressive. That is impressive. Perhaps they shouldn't use the uh, words, it, it flew into the city center. Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps they should say it landed at the city center. No, it didn't. No, they, he, they drove they, into they, the They city flow center. to the outskirts of the city, then they fold the wings in. Yeah. And it becomes a car, and, and then they drive it. And it's technology. Why do they call uh, It's the air car. Yeah. Let's call it the air car. What would you call it? Yes, what would you call it? I don't know. Something interesting, like a, a turbo uh, odyssey. A or Skylark? A, a Thank Skylark. you very much. <laughs> bad. Ladies and That doesn't get the car part in there, does it? Oh, because the car it's part. It's a Buick, oh, the Buick Skylark. 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 Ah. Very good, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Again, uh, have you seen a picture of this thing? This reminds, Yes, it's th really cool, actually. You ever feel like you're speaking Portuguese? <laughs> you ever feel like... Okay. It's, I just don't think this is ever going to happen. It's happened. Well, right, no, no but, no, but I mean, widespread on, use. on the consumer level, this is... A, I used to think it was a bad idea. I, th I, No, it's a good idea. We can't fly our car. It Believe is. Believe me. Yeah, oh, but think man. about the number of times I've run, I don't a, want run you. out of gas. <laughs> You're going to take that gas gauge seriously. No, yeah, but being a pilot is much more difficult than driving a, a car. Can you imagine a tailgater in the air? Come on. Yeah, the average You're idiot. I mind. mean, the, the people can't drive anymore anyway for the, mm -mm. like, for what is it, two years in a row, the number of deaths per mile have gone, has gone way up. Everybody's texting and... You know, I you're, could... You're going to get some jackass texting with his flying car <laughs> flying into the side of a building. Oh, uh, sorry. I, I can see these being used at places like Hawaii where there's just a lot of island hopping. Mm. Um, so you, no, you, you have a fly in an airplane. <laughs> this is just like those boat cars that no, never. No, took I appreciate off. you hearing me out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I see your stupid point. Uh, yeah, oh, go ahead. What no, if it's no, a no. merit system? <laughs> what if you qualify to drive an air car and then you're able to fly it? I mean, you're able to drive and fly. Just get an airplane and then park your car at the hangar like everyone else does who flies right now. <laughs> Well, they're combining a little cumbersome. Things, combining things. Hey, look, my cell phone's also a toaster. No, it's also a computer, and yeah, that, that works that, well. That makes sense. <laughs> oh, that was pretty good, Christy. <laughs> the, the, the cell phone toaster did not take off. No. <laughs> I put my bread in there, and it did lays there. <laughs> <laughs> Are you tired of making calls that don't end with a crispy piece of bread? <laughs> I mean, we can't get enough people to drive sober, let alone fly in their car. And I, I keep going back to the same thing, which is the boat car. Yes, yes they made them. And they never took off. They weren't that popular. Well, first of all, what are the... First of all... You mean the water car. The water car is only applicable to a very small percentage of people. What if you live on Staten Island? Well, that's okay. Well, Le leave okay, your garage. Well, 12 people? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Staten Island has hundreds of... Whatever. <sighs> I'm just saying, you, you don't see a lot of those... Um, although I have seen the boat cars. But yeah, they're at Disney World. You can take a ride in them right now. But they don't... Uh, I'm just saying this is not a practical solution for anything. Okay. By the time you pay for one of these car planes, you could buy a car and a plane. Please, Tom, air car. <laughs> did, they, uh, did they give an estimate on what they no, might charge? No, and it's years away from being... Yeah, these are rich people toys. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine trying to teach a teenage kid how to... How to drive an air car? No, no. Have, no, you, ever, I can't. have you ever given driving lessons to a kid? No, it's I've not given it to an adult. It was, I think, probably harder than giving them to a teen. It's terrifying. This is why the pe the people who are drivers ed teachers uh, often give, mocked. They shouldn't be. Give it some gas. <laughs> give it some gas. Let up on the clutch. Let, yeah, yeah. Oh my God! Dear God, pay attention. <laughs> put your put your phone down. Don't. You're going to take me with you. <laughs> <laughs> to investigate this more. I wonder how they do fly it. Um, oh, interesting. The, the wings fold up. I know, but I mean, 
Yeah, never mind. One My day, driver said, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, one day it's going to be a cross of Demolition Man with the cars that drive themselves and the fifth element, how they're all, you know, the streets in the sky. That's our future. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, yeah, my, my driver's ed teacher was oddly too calm when we would uh, take. <laughs> oh. Don't. Like there would be, oh, <laughs> may, I don't know. But I remember one girl was driving so erratically, and we and I was in the back seat because like three of us would go in the See, car. I, I, I never liked that idea. Yeah. Right. Why right. endanger the other three kids? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I remember he goes one time. He said this line: "Avoid that truck." Avoid that truck. <laughs> <laughs> Will you please yell at her? <laughs> Has there been a high quality uh, movie made with a driver's ed instructor? Are there any good funny? There ones? are some funny ones. A Naked Gun has a funny driver's ed scene. Uh, Coneheads has a funny. Coneheads. Ed Beldar's the driver's teacher. Okay, I didn't. Oh. I didn't. Borat has yeah. a funny one. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. oh, yes, that's right. Borat's is really Real funny. funny. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Summer School has a good one. Okay, okay. Summer I, School. I've forgotten. About I love it. Summer School. Carl Reiner directed it. Um, in any event, uh, a rare misstep. Well, we'll see. I, I don't no. think the, the average American is going to be having a flying car. Speaking of flying, Richard Branson yesterday's Virgin Orbit mission was called Tubular Bells. Do you know why? Because he loves The Exorcist? He no, likes Mike try Oldfield? Again. The Mike Oldfield album? Michael, it was the first album as Virgin Records label released back in 1973. That's the Exorcist oh. theme. It yeah. is. Well, it was right. that album first. Yesterday's mission. And that, was, and that album was an incredibly big seller. Yes. Yesterday's mission delivered satellites from the U.S., Netherlands, and Poland into space. Virgin Orbit will do three more test flights of its rocket ship this year before taking paying customers into space in 2022. It's a creepy song. Tubular oh, bells. Is. Yeah. yeah. Boy, is it ever. I Remember the rest it. of Very the album? Cool. He, he go tubular bells, and they play, and then he goes, glockenspiel. And well, the, the, <laughs> the real popular part is the part from this part. Yeah. That's it. But this is real early in the world of synthesized stuff. It's just scary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Never, I uh, never, never scared me. This doesn't give you the... didn't scare me. Huh? What? The omen scared the hell of me, not this. Exorcist never... Uh, look, it was just... Nah. Wow. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can't say that. Uh, mm -mm. I, just, I just find that... Uh, maybe it's just the association with that movie, but... But that was a popular song before the movie. Yeah, huh? I had that album. The album was very yeah, popular. Yeah, very popular. Okay. Hmm. A Jordanian man was attacked by a shark while parasailing recently. The 37-year-old parasailing in Aquaba when the shark bit his right foot. Video circulating on social media appears to show the man hovering above the water Chomp. when a shark jumps up, bites his foot, drags him down into the water. Oh, boy. He was taken to Prince Hassan Military Hospital for treatment. Mohammed Khalil Al-Zabada from the College of Marine Sciences uh, said the presence of sharks in the Aquaba region is very rare. I mean, Chick and I had the same experience parasailing in the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. When you're way up there, you could look down and see huge sharks Ugh. swimming in your, what, how what we, maybe 2,000 yards off the shore of the hotels? Maybe, yeah. Maybe. And you're up in the air, It's you, you hear the whoosh. What was the name of that uh, outfit we were with? Uh, Rusty Harness. Oh, yeah, oh, Rusty, Rusty, Rusty Harness, Rusty Bahamian uh, parasailing. <laughs> but you could, you'd see the big sharks, and one of the funny things that they would do is they would slow the boat down. Because they, they they reel you out on the parachute, right? Mm -hmm. And then they reel you back in, so you never have to actually get dunked in the water. But they would slow down so you would hit the water. Real. So funny. I'm sure I'm sure these guys were doing that on the boat. Hey, yeah. hey, Muhammad, is this funny? Dip, and all of a sudden, <laughs> a shark comes and grabs them. Terrifying. They've been taunting these sharks for years. Yeah. You can't <laughs> flying those food sharks. above their heads. No, yeah. this, this, I said it yesterday. I'll say it again. This is like catching the shrimp when they throw it to you at Benihana. Yes, this, this would be celebrated. The shark, a feat. He did. jumped out of the water and got. Yes, it. shark's a hero in the Impossible. shark world. Oh yeah. This is why when I do this, I wear socks. Mm-hmm. Okay, the shark will bite the socks. Sure. It'll, you know, oh, just soy. like your water skiing. I used to skiing water ski. I would wear theory. socks in case the gill man came up from the bottom of right. Lake Michigan. You ever tried pulling off a wet sock? It's nearly impossible. No, no, the gill man reaches for your foot. It'll stick to your foot. Exactly. He's going to pull foot. you down still. It gives him a better grip, you <laughs> lunatic. <laughs> if anything. Well, Tom cuts his socks, so maybe his will come off easy. Your, your foot's all slippery and slick. I can't can't hold on to your foot. He's got those webbed hands. He's all slimy. <laughs> oh, come on, use your brain. Hey, Shaq, you ever oiled up a woman's foot and... Um, oh. And what? what? Enjoyed yourself? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> you oiled up a woman's foot? <laughs> he said no comment. I said no comment, and Josh is the one that thought of it, so don't look at me. Never, uh... Really? You oiled it up? Well. Did the toes stay visible? 
that. Uh, the result, the, everything's they visible. They stay visible. <laughs> what are you doing? No, with she the became fun? invisible. Wait a minute, you, you freak! What are you doing with the foot? <laughs> well, I'm asking. Did Josh do a little God. play hide the toe? Oh, oh no, no. You I know, I've gone back and forth <laughs> with you on this. Uh, <laughs> I've gone, and, and I am convinced you have had sex seven times. <laughs> I, I, am, I am certain of it. Well, uh, let's make another one. Here we go. All righty, we'll have to do this for another four years. All right. <laughs> Weirdo. Man. Well, I don't know all of anybody's feet. <laughs> yeah. The FJ is better than you might think. Huh. <laughs> okay. See, that car never took off. The, 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 that car never took off. Had the, too big of a blind spot. <laughs> It was a, it was cool looking though. I kind of like the yeah, look. I of drove it. one. It was like a no? twelve foot blind spot. Okay. Uh, the FJ Cruiser. Right. Um, never mind. Oh, uh, I was like, what are you talking about? Yeah, cool looking car. Uh, by the way, uh, it, it's time to. Uh, they they call this great sleeping weather. Yeah. Uh, you get the fan going, crank yes. up the AC to refrigeration level, and time to get <laughs> some great sleep with your sleep number bed, especially. And Who by are the you, way, Mister Freeze, what are you doing? You don't you like a nice, cool room well, to sleep in the summer? Well, not that cold. You can't have the air conditioner and the fan on. See, this is why people have different opinions about what they like. For example, That's right. Give us our FJs, okay? Right. So in, in, in the firmness of a mattress... Chick McGee, uh, your sleep number setting is what? 100. What does that mean? It means a firm mattress and the sleep number bed stays firm, Tom. Now, uh, Christy Lee, your setting is what? 35. Which is like a marshmallow. No, it's perfect. Well, it's perfect for, for me. you. That's, That's right. right. And then it, and the sleep number bed has two halves like most beds. And you can adjust the firmness of either half to the way you want it and change it at the touch of a button. So if uh, you're moody and think you're in a uh, hard bed mood, bzzzt. Or if you want that soft bed mood, can't make up your mind. This is the perfect. This is the perfect mattress for the person who can't make up their mind. And the Sleep Number uh, bed has Sleep IQ data that'll help you make up your mind to improve your sleep and get quality sleep. Get the right temperature in your room, the one that you like. Experts, by the way, recommend setting the thermostat between 65 and 75 for optimal sleep. I'd go a nice uh, 65. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. The body is happiest when it's in a state of what they call being thermally neutral. Ah. That sounds like something from a sci-fi movie. It does. Yeah, it does. Ah, I see that we've uh, we've taken <laughs> Mr. Mondor to a thermally neutral level. Ah. Looks like he's having quite the sleep. <laughs> uh, discover proven quality sleep during our lowest prices of the season at the Sleep Number stores. The Sleep Number 360 smart beds right now on sale, starting at just eight ninety nine. Limited time. Find out all the details at sleepnumber.com slash BT show and find the Sleep Number store near you. Tell them the Bob and Tom show sent you. Once again, online, sleepnumber.com slash BT show. Coming up, sounds like a joke. A deer walks into a Walmart. Mm. We'll tell you what happens. It's kind of cool. This is the Bob and Tom show. Hi, this is comedian Rob Haney, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Because he's a big liar. That's uh, Rob Haney's uh, punchline from the lying dog, talking dog. It's a talking dog. He's a big liar. It's a bit much funnier when Rob does it. At any rate, good morning. I'm Mark Allison. You're tuned to Bob and Tom 24-7. Rolling through a Thursday, Scorched Earth, Jessica Allsman joining us. Also, our West Coast Mountain correspondent, Al Jackson. And next hour, comedian Allie Breen loaded up on a Thursday. Glad you can be here with us on Bob and Tom 24-7. Hi, everybody. Christy Lee from the Navy Federal Credit Union News Desk. Bill Cosby's sexual assault conviction has been thrown out by Pennsylvania's highest court, which ruled he was unfairly prosecuted because a previous district attorney had promised he would not be charged. The justices found Cosby relied on that promise when he agreed to testify without invoking his Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination in a lawsuit brought against him by Temple University employee Andrea Konstad. A wildfire amid a record heat wave in western Canada has forced authorities to order residents to evacuate a village in British Columbia. Mayor Jan Polderman of Linton issued the evacuation order saying the fire was threatening structures and the safety of the 250 residents of the community, which is located about 95 miles northeast of Vancouver. Linton's temperature hovered around 102 degrees Fahrenheit yesterday, but that's down from Tuesday when the village recorded a new Canadian high of 121.2 Fahrenheit. And what you write in a private email or text may be not as private as you think. A top official with Microsoft says federal law enforcement agencies often ask secretly to obtain data from its customers. 
Tom Burt told a House panel the company gets between 7 and 10 secret requests a day. Microsoft is fighting such requests, saying law enforcement agencies are exploiting technology to skirt freedom citizens have from unreasonable searches. And that's your news. I'm Christy Lee. More of the Bob and Tom Show on the way. Casting presents another Bob and Tom Olympic moment in history. The oldest gold medalist was in 1912 when Oscar Swan took home first prize in a shooting event as a 64-year-old. Mm. And while a 64-year-old Olympian is rather amazing. There was almost an 87-year-old winner at the first Olympic luge competition in Innsbruck, Austria, 1964. The fastest luge run was logged by an 87-year-old Austrian, Johann Liekensfinkter. <laughs> Johann amazed the crowd and the judges who nearly awarded him the gold medal oh. until it was learned that Liekensfinkter was not entered in the event or even on the team. It seems that Johann was a spectator who had slipped and accidentally slid down the track at a record pace. <laughs> Liekensfinkter left his mark in Olympic history as well as on the luge track itself. This has been another Bob and Tom Olympic moment oh. in history. Bob and Tom. Well, meaning, but... Yeah, they're... They're all messed up. More than slightly confused. Lord Coretta's a fine young comedian. Uh, are you a health yeah. guy? You run, you look very slender. And uh, I'm not a, a big health guy, although I'm healthy. I just uh, had a complete physical, and uh, unfortunately I'm at that age where you get the real intense physical. No, yeah. yeah. You know, I hope I'm not sharing too much, but mm -mm. the doctor actually stuck a camera in my rectum. Oh. It wasn't part of any procedure. He just suspected that his nurse was stealing from him. <laughs> I was in the Marines for a while. You were. Like, wow. And it takes a while to adjust as a civilian world when you come out of boot camp because you're so fired up. When I came out that same week, my sister got married. She had me seat people at the wedding. I accepted the assignment, you know? People would come walking up to me in front of the church like, oh, you must be Patricia's brother. Sit down! I don't want to be your friend. Get your eyes off me! What is your major malfunction? Two 200 people showed up. I put them all in the same row. <laughs> tighten it up. Tighten it up. Tighten it up. We're not comfortable. Outstanding. <laughs> Who's outstanding? Right, right. Comedian oh Greg Hahn is with us. God. Good morning, sunshine. Bob and Tom 24. This is the Bob and Tom show. Well, there we go. Look at this. Whoa. Whoa. It, would Whoa. it would appear that uh, Al Jackson has a job ushering at a Broadway theater. Yes, he does look like he's about to show us to our seats. Uh, we'll find out what I'm talking about in a second. There's Ace, there's Chick, that's Josh. This is Tom, that's Willie. Christy Lee's at the Navy Federal Credit Union News Desk. Ms. Jessica Alsman's through the glass behind the wall. And then uh, we have a Mr. Godwin in the Oxford Gold Performance Room. We are joined by comedian Al Jackson from The Daily Blast. Well, hello, screen. sir. Hey, Al, you've got a tie-on with a tie clip. Tie boss. Yes. 
and a uh, and a and a red vest and a white shirt. You look very very professional. Once again, well, like thank a, you. Like I noticed you didn't say nice, just professional. No, you look real nice. You look very yeah. sharp, very sophisticated. But I, I feel like you're gonna, as, as Josh said, uh, guide me to my seat. At a we could do shirt. that. I, I was going for the untouchables look today. Little mm. Kevin Costner, 1992, was that? Mm. I think you need a fedora for that, don't you? Mm. Yeah, and a Tommy gun. Fedoras are a very weird hat, and they only work for certain guys smoking a vape. You don't think you could wear one? I don't know, Al. You can pull off anything. I, I think if I did, it would age me, and I I turned 44 uh, uh, on yes, to on Monday. Tuesday. What? Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know what my birthday is, but yeah. <laughs> So it's like I I don't know I think a fedora like that's when it's time to get the uh, the 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 trench coat and um, just uh, start reminiscing uh, on my life which I'm I'm ready for. All right. Well, you look very nice, Al. Yes. Well, thank, thank you, you, sir. Now you asked me to fill out a special form. And yeah, Tom. We I wanted to do it a little different today, man. Uh, usually I quiz you, but today I sent you some homework. First of all, showing you what our kids have been going through, getting their homework from the teacher via email. Mm -hmm. So I sent you some questions, and I'm going to read everybody the questions that you sent. And you actually wrote this down. I have a screenshot that I wanted to post on the Bob and Tom Twitter after we're done. Uh, you, it, it was a very, uh, you did you did well. And what I wanted you to do is just translate some slang. So uh, <laughs> for everybody... Mm. In the studio and listening, I will read what I sent to Tom and it, what his response. Uh, the first thing I asked to Tom, <laughs> I asked Tom, I said, write a sentence where you say that you got into your car to pick stuff up for your party mm. and you have to grab some liquor and you have to use a slang word for liquor and some marijuana. <laughs> uh, you need a slang word for that. And we needed a slang word for the fact that it's going to be a fun party. And here's what Tom wrote. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Tom writes, hopped in my hoopty. We saw that coming. Yeah. yeah. To pick up stuff for my party. Had to grab some hooch <laughs> and reefer yeah. from the store. It's going to be jumping. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What are you doing, the 20s? He pulled he pull, he pull me back in with jumping. I mean, the, yeah. the, the reefer that threw me. Right. But are you guys happy with that sentence? I, I, I'm going to give him a check mark for that. Yeah, I would give him a yeah. check. How would you write that sentence? Instead of hoopty, what would you say? I hopped in uh, my... whip. Hopped okay. in my whip. And then how would you say grab some liquor and marijuana? Uh, you could call liquor just lick. Remember we talked about uh, Henny? That mm -hmm. would have been acceptable. Mm -hmm. uh, no, is that, you that, that's say, the specific type. That's the Hennessy, though, right? It is. That wouldn't be. Uh, yeah. So you're, you're having a limited limited amount of offerings for your friends. <laughs> what, oh. oh, my oh. God. Uh, no, it's like when people say Coke, but they just mean soda. Yeah. yeah. Al, could you say secured the bag? As an all-encompassing for booze and for for pot, could you say I secured the bag, went out there, got the all the party supplies? I uh, you could I associated with the bag with money. Got it. But I don't know. Do you and your because you're you're younger than me? It, do you and you your friends refer to it as just like every all the 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 all-encompassing party supply? Because I could see that the bag could be anything. I'll take a picture of the chicken wings sitting in front seat with the seatbelt over him saying, secured the bag. Ah. That kind of oh, thing. You, know, you know what the good. bag like was it. back in 1963? Oh, God. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, when Kennedy was in the car, the guy with the bag was a couple cars back. What bag? The bag that, and then, then you got to have the launch codes. The football? Yeah. Oh. They called it the bag. The guy's got the bag. And the bag has got the things in case what? the uh, in case the Ruskies attack. You got 15 minutes, buddy. I've never heard that. Yeah. Huh. They called it the you bag. You would take the launch codes with you? Yeah. The, I heard it's called the football. That was later. Huh. Back then yeah. it was called the bag. Wow. wow. And uh, yeah, it was. And then when Kennedy was shot, Johnson was in the car right behind him. And all of a sudden, some guy walks up to him and he didn't know any, He didn't really know much about the bag. And the guy's got the codes. Oh, it's very, very interesting. So Kennedy this, was put in the bag. Uh, yes, yeah. well, later, the body sadly, bag. sadly and tragically. Body, body bag. So well. uh, I'm sorry, Al. So you'd go. I hopped in my whip to pick up some stuff for the party. I had to grab some henny, and then what would you say for marijuana? I I'm a man of a certain age. I'd probably say some trees. 
uh, some green, probably. I wouldn't call it 420 because I feel like 420 has been correct. Like, I feel like news anchors know what 420 is, and that's like when your parents know what it's like. Okay. You can't use it anymore. Yeah. So you hop in um, your whip to pick up some stuff for the party. You grab some henny and some trees. This party is going to be fun. What would you say? This party is going to be? I would say uh, lit or live. Oh, this party is going to be lit. Dope. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Super bananas. Okay. Now, my second one, I answered the question. You want to read this one? Yeah. This was uh, the, this was an interesting answer, Tom. Uh, <laughs> it was it was interesting uh, because I I said in Tom in a complete sentence, I need you to tell me that you have a, a date with an attractive curvy woman, but you're worried because you do not have a lot of money. And I needed slang for attractive, curvy, and not having a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And Tom writes back, this was almost like when you yell into a seashell and you hear your own voice back. <laughs> Tom just really repeated. I, okay, so here's what Tom wrote. He writes, I have a date with an attractive, which was the word I needed a synonym for. <laughs> he just gave me the word right back. <laughs> I don't know if that's even... He did write something, so that's not an F, but it just... Uh, yes, I, uh, that was I, the word I needed to, to be... With uh, an attractive Rubenesque woman. Yes, he said, <laughs> I have a date. He replaced uh, curvy with Ru Rubenesque, yeah. which I'll take, I guess. So some some would say Rubensesque, but that's an argument for another time. Oh. <laughs> well, the artist is Rubens. And then Tom goes... And now he, this is the big part I wanted him to say, but he's worried because he does not have a lot of money. And he says, but I'm worried because I'm broke. So <laughs> it's really broke, the same broke, sentence like, with the word yeah. Rubenesque in it. But uh, I, I, Chick, what do you give that sentence? I give that. Um, uh, he tried, but he tried. Well, I'm going to grade on a curve because I know Tom too well. I, I just fail him out the entire course because he, <laughs> he, he well, didn't how, do anything. How would you just, say an attractive, curvy woman, Chick? Uh, thick. Yeah. No, thick. Thick is thick means curvy. What about attractive? Uh, hot, hot and thick. <laughs> That sounds like a thick and hot. Sounds, sounds like a, a restaurant. <laughs> like, like, a, like a big, like a big bowl of chili. Am I right, Al? So, and then, and then, sorry, sorry. Well, how would you say? You didn't, how would you say? How would you say you were worried about the date because you didn't have a lot of money? Uh, I'm, um, I'm, I'm between the eagle right now. Oh, <laughs> oh. how Whoa. about that? Huh? What does that mean? Well, the eagle flies on Friday. <laughs> Oh, so... On, on payday. Between yeah. paydays. The I Alman, see. The Allman Brothers taught us that. I'm trying to help <laughs> you. The eagle flies on Friday. That's what that means. I love that Fridays. phrase. I've never heard that in my life. I love that. Let's yeah. start it. Let's see if we can start the eagle as payday. Okay. Well, the eagle flies on Friday, so that's a legit phrase from that song. Yes, I know. I know. put it together. That's <laughs> interesting. I'm thinking. Is I the, take is in the, oxygen. Is the, is the, I'm flesh and blood. Is the eagle on any major bills? Uh, I think it's on all of them. Yeah. I think Isn't so, yeah. It? With the, the, the uh, arrows in his tail. Oh, that thing? Oh, that's okay. Very that's good. an eagle. What did you think it was? A pigeon? What do you think? <laughs> I mean, but like, there's no bill that has the face of an eagle where the. Well, it's not like Andrew what? Jackson. No. Well, I think he's a, a little avian. Well, he has a bill. Yeah. Yeah. So, Al, how, how would you say in a complete sentence I had a, in a date with an attractive, curvy woman? Thick. But I don't have any money. How would you say it? Uh, I'd be like, uh, <laughs> dude. I got a date with this fine, thick, thick, super thick, oatmeal thick girl. But, bro, mm. I got, I'm flat until next Friday. Oh, that's yeah. good. So you Josh, actually, what would you say? You, you, could, you could mix the metaphors, couldn't you? I'm sorry. Between, eagles, you go, um, between eagles is strong. Between eagles is better. It's awesome. you say she's thick, but I'm flat? Uh, that's what he just said. Right, right. But, I mean... Uh, in putting the two things together. She's so thick, I got flat. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh. oh he, she, like she, she sat yeah. on me? Yes. She, yeah. she flattened oh, me. Hey, <laughs> Willie, <laughs> hates fat people. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tom and Michelle Obama hate hurricane. fat people. I said, I said, I said Rubenesque. That's a very classy way to say it. I could have Zaftig. <laughs> Zaftig? You yeah. sure could. Nice. Corpulent? Yeah. <laughs> beef cadet? Beef, oh. beef cadet is one of no, his favorites. I, I, track, I, think, I think attractive Rubenesque is a nice way of saying a curvy. Sure. Right. A little, a little more tasteful. Right. 
And how would you say you didn't have any money, Josh? Oh, uh, broke. That's what I would say. Okay. Yeah. Christy? I don't speak Jive. slang. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Willie, how would you say that? Yeah, it's like, I, I have no money right now. Or I'll say, like, I'm waiting to get paid again or something. Well, how would you say you had a date with a, uh, uh, as, as as Al put it, a uh, a fine, thick, curvy woman? I went out, she's a little thicker milkshake, I think is what I would oh. say. Oh, yeah. that's oh. nice. Yeah, I would say she's thicker than a snicker. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's good. good. I liked my between eagles and uh, thick and hot like a bowl of chili. I liked them both. Okay. Ace, yeah. you, want, Ace you want to tackle this one? You've got a date with an attractive, uh, got curvy date with guy. A Got a date with a heavy set beauty, but uh, got no money. <laughs> a heavy, <laughs> heavy, heavy set beauty <laughs> sounds like you know, sounds she's... like he plays. She plays for the Browns. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> a heavy set beauty sounds like a breed of Saint Bernard. <laughs> Uh, that there's a heavy set uh, beauty. They live uh, four years. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, now Al, that was a, that was a part three to your quiz. Yes, and th this was the hardest one. I, this, I think, I blew this one. I don't, I don't know the the code words with the letter things, the acronyms, et cetera, et cetera. So. Yeah, you the could just tell, and everybody that hears this will, you'll see that Tom just starts strong, and then you can just tell. <laughs> you can, you see the exact moment when he just quits and goes, "I have stuff to do this morning." <laughs> uh, very busy this morning. Yeah. Uh, uh, the sentence that you wrote. Uh, is so here's the question. I, I said, in this hypothetical scenario, I send you this text. What does it mean? And here's what the text would say. This is, imagine this on the screen of Tom's phone. Okay. All right. I say, Chick wrote something mean about you on Instagram, but he got ratioed. TBH, you got the W I M O. I think I've got a better idea what it means now. Or, okay. Okay. What do you think I, it means now? I bet you don't. Um, <laughs> uh, Chick wrote something mean about me on Instagram, but he got ratioed, meaning that more people disliked what he said, uh, and the, it reflected badly on him That's more exactly. so That's than right. me. Yeah. Exactly right. That is right. Amazing. I, is TBH to be heard? It's no, close. you got the first two you're, right. You're, you're, you're close. close. Um, it's something you never are. Honest. Oh, <laughs> hey, 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 dude, that's your wow. son. Okay. <laughs> to be honest, yeah. And is it you got the Wemo? Wemo. Um, w i m o. No, no, no. no it's no. you got the W and I then I m o. Oh, you yeah. got the win. Yes. In my opinion. Yeah. There you go. Oh, you, I wasn't going to say that. The Wemo. Why That's what it say says. I like Wemo way better. Uh, Wemo way, a Wemo way, a Wemo way. Like Wemo way, love to you. TBH, to be honest, you got the win in my opinion. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, there there's a go. space between the W and the I. Now, Tom, can I tell the people what you wrote? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay. That should be good. This is what Tom's response the first to that part question right? was. Chick wrote something bad about me on Instagram, but his fans ganged up on him because they were on my side. So far, so good. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, ratioed. Right. To, to be heard. All right. That's <laughs> one uh, wheel, train wheel off the track. Mm -hmm. You got to have a big wiener. <laughs> I mean, enormous. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I mean, I mean, enormous. Well, yeah, that would I, be really big. Again, I was under pressure. Dean was hovering oh over me. God. We had to get out of the commercial. It was entertaining. <laughs> uh, yes, but I, I, I came back, though. Uh, TBH, you got the Wemo. Okay. Yeah. All right. And I think I think our listeners need to come up with an acronym for Wemo. Uh, okay. Well, it's not win in my opinion. Okay, very good. Well, thank you, Al. Uh, Al you Jackson good, is a very Tom. fine stand-up comedian. You, you'll see him daily on a show called The Daily Blast. If it's not on your TV, it's on your computer. Uh, do you have any live, any more live gigs coming up, Al? I do. I'll be at the Comedy Bar in Chicago August 13th through the 15th. I'll be in Cleveland at the Hilarities uh, August 27th and 28th. And I'll be in New York City August eighth, so uh, it's filling up. That's Good. great. Now, have you have you done any recent live gigs? Uh, I not this week because you know my daughter was in town last week, so I'll be uh, in Fort Collins uh, doing a full set uh, tomorrow 
Fort Collins, Colorado. Come to the Comedy Fort, F-O-R-T. Uh, if you're anywhere in the Colorado area, come out and see me tomorrow. Okay, Al. Al is also uh, an author. Where is Baby Ford, which is a, uh, a benefit project for uh, Firefly Autism. Al, you're the best. Can't wait to see you. Get get yourself back into the studio. Yes. And I'll work on my Wemo. <laughs> All right. Love you guys. I'll Bye. see you soon. Bye. Yeah. You look very handsome. Uh, TBH, I think I did great. Okay. To be honest, uh, yes. Well, thank you very much, Christy. Uh, now, Christy, can you give me the teaser, please? Yes. Coming up, we still have a doll. A doll. A deer in a Walmart. We have Japan trying to do some matchmaking because their birth rate's low. And would your toddler ever ask to have their diaper changed? Or would you ask them permission to change their diaper? That story coming up. Did you see that story? So ridiculous. It's completely ridiculous. Completely ridiculous. Excuse me, Excuse mother. me. I need my yeah, diaper Yeah, they, they want you to ask your kid about For permission. Changing, uh, before you actually change, change their mm -hmm. diaper. I don't think so. Right now, I want to remind you about our friends at Oxford Gold. Charlie'd still be sitting. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, he'd still be Sorry. sitting in a pile. Of uh, buying real gold and silver is the way to go. Check out the Oxford Gold Group. They have course, are responsible for that room in there. It's the Oxford Gold Performance Room. Buying real gold and silver, the kind you can hold in your hand, that's what they're all about. And it's easier than you think. Oxford Gold Group wants to send you their guidebook, 855-710-GOLD. Talks about the uh, history of gold, the history of silver, how things go up and down. And uh, you can make up your mind. Is this something you've always wanted to do? The real key to this is you can also hold this gold in your hand. You actually get the gold. You get the silver. If you'd like it, you'll just have a certificate. If you want to have that gold in your hand and do what you want with it. It's yours and they'll buy it back with no weird fees involved either. That's really important. 855-710-GOLD. That's the Oxford Gold Group, and they would like to introduce you to the world of gold and silver. Once again, gold and silver you can hold in your hand. And once again, they're responsible for the Oxford Gold Performance Room. In that room, I look through the glass right now, I see Mr. Godwin, and I see the beautiful gold suit hanging on the wall. Mm -hmm. That is really nice. And we've got some nice videos on the Bob and Tom website of Pat in that suit singing. There's even a duet with Dean in a gold suit. There's a lot of gold, a lot of gold out there. You want to get your hands on some? Oxford Gold is the way to go. Educate yourself. You make up your mind. If it's something you've been thinking about for a long time, do some homework. 855-710- G-O-L-D is the number for the Oxford Gold Group. Tell them the Bob and Tom Show sent you, won't you? When we come back, there's a huge uh, world of, uh, of coupon crime. We'll find out about that. This is the Bob and Tom Show. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Chime in with an email. Send to Bob and Tom at BobandTom.com. More of the Bob and Tom Show next.
Hi, this is Bob and Tom 24-7. My name is Jim Gaffigan. I have to go and, well, I just had a so you know where i'm going jim gaff again right there on bob and tom 24 7 my name is mark allison did you know that the bob and tom show app is available on your phone did you know someone who might like to have the bob and tom show app on their phone you should tell them it's free and available in the itunes or google play store once they download the app they can tune into their local radio station listen to us here on bob and tom 24 7 even set an alarm that'll wake you up with the show let them know christy lee could be the first voice they hear in the morning oh yeah it's thursday july 1st and we roll on right here on bob and tom 24 7 i'm chick mcgee with your bob and tom sports update the tampa bay lightning lead the stanley cup final two games to none after beating the canadians 3-1 last night at tampa andre vasilevsky made a playoff career high 42 saves to keep the defending champions in the game and blake coleman scored the game two winner on a highlight reel diving buzzer beater in the second period. Half of the NBA Finals are set. The Phoenix Suns are headed to the championship round for the first time in 28 years, defeating the Clippers 130-103 last night in L.A. to close out the Western Conference Final in six games. Chris Paul tied his career playoff high of 41 points. And Milwaukee Bucks forward Giannis He's doubtful for Game 5, the Eastern Conference Finals tonight in Milwaukee after going an MRI on his injured left knee. Bucks officials say the two-time MVP hyperextended his left knee in the third quarter of that 110-88 Game 4 loss to the Hawks on Tuesday night. Major League Baseball, Washington beat Tampa Bay 15-6, that in interleague action. American League winners, Detroit, Boston, the Angels, the White Sox, Seattle, Baltimore, Oakland, and Detroit. And National League winners, St. Louis, Milwaukee, Colorado, San Diego, Atlanta, and Miami. I'm Chick McGee, and that's your Bob and Tom Sports Update. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob and Tom. Who says shore lunch? Who loves the skiing veil? Mm. Who's obsessed with Michigan? Who eats smoothies with kale? Who has a pie lady? Who has... As a cake lady who wears SPF 100, even where it's shady, <laughs> not me. Guess who? Tom. Tom. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Hey, guy, it's Kid Tarmac. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. Kid Tarmac. Morning, Bob and Tom Show. Hey, gang, it's Kid Tarmac. Kid! Hey, we just landed. I got a call on the white courtesy phone. I'll tell you what. What? Corporate has spy goggles today. Uh -oh. They can find me anywhere. Really? So I'm on the plane. I'm on the 620 guy. Like uh -huh. I was saying, uh -huh. I'm next to some guy that kept going on and on and on today. Yeah. And almost ruined. Oh, gosh. Oh, I have another phone call. You do? Oh, and it's Tobik. Uh oh And I don't want to take this one. Why not? Hey, you want to hear a trick? Well, okay. Watch how I lose them. All you have to do is duplicate your voicemail greeting, and they have no idea it's not you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just listen to this. All right. I'm going to click over. Okay. Listen. All I've right. got to memorize it, though. Okay. Okay, get, Okay. hang tight. Hi, you've reached gold level sales leader Kenneth Tarmac. <laughs> I'm sorry I can't take your call at the moment, but your call is very important to me. I check messages every quarter hour unless in flight, in which in case I'll answer upon landing. <laughs> so after the tone, please leave me your name, two numbers, and a brief message. Or you can Skype page, text, or preferably email me at ktar underscore backslash closer dot com. <laughs> <laughs> He's still talking. Is he talking? Yeah, he's still chatting me up. Oh, God. I'll catch you later. I'll oh, bye. I'll get it off of this. All right, bye. We just landed and I pulled it off again. Oh, you oh, did? Great. I okay. I called Bob and hey, this is comedian Ron White, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. I just went on a date with one girl, uh, and she was wearing a skirt and a pair of jeans under the skirt. And, like, yeah. she was trying to say, hey, Matt, here's two things you're not getting into. <laughs> Bob and Tom. For your information, these are two of the worst kids I have ever encountered in my life, and I worked the state fair. We were stupid before. <laughs> <laughs>
Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. It's great to be here. My balls are hot. Oh, oh boy. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Christy Lee is the lady of the house. She's right there at the Navy Federal Credit Union newsroom desk and chair. Through the glass over there in the former Navy Federal Credit Union newsroom, I should say. It's Jessica Halsman. There's Chick. Ace Cosby is our engineer, of course, and proprietor of the Ace Cosby joke of the day. This is Tom speaking. That's Willie G, Patty G, of course, next door through the glass in the Oxford Gold Performance Room. Coming up, another song, Pat? Sure. Okay, good. We'll get to that in a second. Christy, what have we missed in the world of news? A Walmart employee in Wisconsin talk, tackled a deer inside the store. Whoa. KABC. Where news is a vision of what television should be. Reports after the deer ran inside the Walmart in <laughs> I Baraboo. Give it a Wait, you don't like that one? I like that one. An employee tackled the animal and bent it to the floor. How about news from the neighborhood? That's fine. It's short, at least. The power of information. <laughs> yeah. What Once else? other How workers opened a back door for the deer, the employee let the animal go, and it left without further incident. No injuries reported. No, wait, sorry. It's a so big deal. This is a story. Tackled it, pinned it to the ground, and then yeah. just let it go? Yeah. No, but this is and a good story. story. Let it go. That's the story. That's the story. Can you imagine tackling a deer? Yeah. Was it a full-size deer? Or was it a full oh, size deer? Yeah, but still, oh. that's, the, deer, the, the yeah. hooves on a deer could slice your face off. Well, I don't know about I that. Think I don't really, think you really could well, be that accurate for for starters. <laughs> Have you ever talked to anybody who's hit a deer in a car? A uh, deer hit me before, and it left a big dent. Yeah, well, if if they get in your through your windshield and start oh. rotating their legs, you can get. Well, of course. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, you can get if, kicked to death. Yes. If it breaks through your car and it's carrying a chainsaw, <laughs> it's going to cut you up. Yeah. The, the moral of this story, a deer goes into a Walmart. Uh, this guy tackles it because, and he s saves it, which proves that Walmart's a great place to save a buck. There we go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's coming. Okay. Now, if you had told us you had something fun like that coming up, we no, would have laid off oh, a little bit. It's a full-size deer. No, that's it's a full-size deer. Let me He's see. He's laying right on top see. of her, man. I don't know if you can see it small, but... Uh, yeah, that's uh, crazy. I like to hump deer. I do. <laughs> that's I do. What what it looks like. It's just me. Yeah. It's what I, I mean, like if, it, it, <laughs> I, if this guy's a younger guy, if it had been one of those greeters, the guy'd be dead. Don't just... Is that a deer? A deer in here? <laughs> <laughs> or do I have to change my meds? <laughs> Are my glasses all fogged up? Or am I dreaming still in bed? Uh, it's, uh, Stan, Stanley, you're fine. Right. I'm a greeter at Walmart. I know, I know. I know. Now I'm tackling wildlife. Oh, <laughs> Stanley. I hope what happened wasn't a fart. <laughs> Was a fart. Uh -oh. And now that brings us back to Tom. Yeah. <laughs> Good work, I, I didn't Stanley. realize that whole thing. I'm sorry. I didn't either. Love it. Um, uh, this is, if nothing else, good training for Black Friday. I'll see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tackle a deer. That's okay. really dangerous. Oh, deer. Yes, it is. You don't want to mess get, with Couldn't deer. you get deer ticks and stuff? Oh, yeah, riddled with them. Yeah. Lyme disease. Oh, yeah. Lyme <laughs> disease, no joke. Dead in an hour. You can get, well, you can get anything at Walmart. You do not <laughs> want die to. in an hour. No, but it can be Deers miserable. have syphilis. Deer is a quality. Oh, boy. Mm. Get on. Uh, okay. Get the with the deer. I give up. I, th I just think it's pretty crazy. I don't know. Have you started watching that TV show yet? Half boy, half deer? No. I watched the little <laughs> I ain't going to watch that. Why would you? <laughs> I watched of course 10 minutes. Not. Isn't it based on a cartoon or something? Comic book. We, Comic we book. got Thank 50 you. email. Oh, it's a great show, yeah, man. I'll, I'll, I'll check it out. I'll let you guys know. Oh, shut up. What's the show called? <laughs> Sweet Tooth or something yep. like that. Yeah, very Sweet good. Tooth. A post-apocalyptic country. It's, it's, I'm, I'm it sure starts. it's uh, allegorical. And, uh, oh, it it and means something. And he's it. not half deer. He only has deer antlers. Uh, he was half deer. Hate. hate. Well, Josh, I can't watch stuff with allegory. I, too much blood. You know, I can't do it. Oh, yeah. yeah. You get a little yeah. uh, right. squeamish. I like, uh, Next. I like Ali Sheedy. Oh, the oh, Japanese sorry. government will fund matchmaking AI technology in an effort to boost their declining birth rate. The government will allocate $19 million to local authorities that use machine learning programs to pair people up. You know, I, I can fix this much quicker than they can. How's that? Well, have you ever seen Japanese porn? They mm -hmm. pixelate all the good stuff. Right. No wonder they, if the only one you've ever seen is yours, you don't know what to do with it. <laughs> All right, so you're saying, hey, just depixelate the porn. And, well, as soon as they bring I think in, you can tell you know, what they're BS, doing. Yes, everything has got, oh, it's, oh, they're using AI now, and that, that's not going to do anything. I like the term in the story, machine learning. Yeah, yeah it's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, I did some of that machine learning, and let me tell you. It's Jap a dead end. <laughs> Japan's population projected to fall from a peak of 128 million in 2017 to less than 53 million by the end of the century. The end of the century. Why is that bad? 
Well, um, I think it has something to do with the number of people that are going to be around to be working to support right. the number uh, of old people. Gotcha. I think there has to be some kind of a formula where, yes, you know, for every ten old people, there's one guy working. And of course, in this well, country, that would only be about four of the states at this point. Uh, <sighs> okay. <laughs> Coming up. They're being paid not to work. <laughs> Let's take. No, us. no, yeah, yeah. yeah. We know. Mm-hmm. Okay. A child care chain has sparked controversy after suggesting parents should ask their toddler's consent before changing their diapers. This is silly. Only About Children published a blog post about, quote, respectful diaper changes and how to teach children about respect and consent from an early age. They should take a really moist, wet diaper and tie it around the face of whoever wrote them. (laughs) The article, Tom. And then put them out in in downtown Portland when it's 116 degrees. Let's let's, let's hear why. Maybe just hear them out. Maybe it's it's a parody or something. Toddlers don't like to be interrupted when they are playing. Wait. For oh, a okay. gap in their playing before starting the diaper changing yeah, process. Okay. You've said right? that. Yeah. You've said that forever. What are they doing that's so fun that they are sitting in poo? Oh, I can remember. I can remember Charlie playing in video games, and I walked down the basement. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Let's. You know, how much fun is something that you want to sit in your own fecal festival? Uh, Especially when you're 14, like he was. Uh, <laughs> that's quite funny. Um, no, I, it's ridiculous. Yeah, well. You, you be a parent. Take charge. Yes. Hey, your your diaper's full of poop. Right. This, what we do in civilization is <laughs> we change this. Yeah. In uh, whatever world you're living in, where he, I'm sure they probably also want him to be able to vote. Just do what my parents did. They What's would take that? my they'd take my diaper off and rub my nose in it. Oh. That turned out just fine. <laughs> you see what you did? Oh. You filthy. <laughs> yeah. Then they hit your nose with a paper, right? Oh yeah. Boom. Do you want me to change your diaper? Or do you want to watch TV sitting on top of Mount Poopmore? <laughs> Didn't Willie used to do that too all the time, just sitting in his own filth? No. Yeah. I bet he did. I would change diapers and. Oh, okay. every, and every parent has a, a horrific diaper changing story. Sure, I've got a great one. You know, Cedar, Cedar Point, the wonderful amusement park. Sure, it was a, uh, it was a horrible lightning storm, <laughs> and everything was kind of semi closed down. It was humid as hell. And one of the kids had a massive diaper explosion. Up yeah. the, uh, up the and back, I'd, I'd forgotten the diaper bag. Oh, oh man! Yeah. Uh, Did you ever go begging strangers? Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Can you I bum a diaper? Me, you, you've got a kid that looks... <laughs> Could I please have a diaper? I, I bet know, they the, were happy to help you, though, because they're like, oh, I know what you're going through. Yeah. Oh, especially when you get the ones that explode all the way up the back. Uh, yeah, you know what I'm talking those about. Those are rough. No, but it'd be a parent. Make the choice for your kid. They don't get to vote. No, they don't. Yeah. I think I'll keep this one until tomorrow, Mom. I'm enjoying it. Diaper oh. rash is a thing. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And You're des- helping your and kid. And desitin is the cure, by the way. Oh, okay. That yeah, product, they, they couldn't charge enough. It's such good, great stuff. Uh, when we come back, we have uh, m- many things coming up, including a chat with Allie Breen about sexy time and who's doing what and where, and also a weird story about weddings. Anybody been to a wedding recently? Yeah, I haven't. I don't I really have. have. I, I have. Just, yeah. Actually, a couple weeks ago. Uh, yeah, you didn't have to clean up afterward, did you? Nope. Well, that's what happens to these people. We'll find out about that. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Got something to say? Send us an email. Bob and Tom at bobandtom.com. This is the Bob and Tom Show.
don't say we didn't warn you. There's laughter ahead. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. Ah, loving the Al Jackson and the quiz for Tom, but don't go anywhere. Comedian Allie Breen coming up in the next hour along with uh, Scorched Earth. It's always fun to listen to the relationship issues that folks have. The pandemic sort of starting to wind down, and that's good news for everybody. We'll see how the relationships are doing with Allie Breen. Coming up right here on Bob and Tom 24-7. Hi, everybody. Christy Lee from the Navy Federal Credit Union Entertainment News Desk. Britney Spears leveled serious accusations last week about the people overseeing her life. One of those, her dad, James Spears, said in court documents, it's critical for the court to confirm whether his daughter's allegations are true. Britney told a judge her conservatorship is so restrictive she's not allowed to get married or have a baby. She says she's forced to use birth control and take medication against her will. Although James Spears has been her conservator for most of the past 13 years. He says for the past two, he's only overseen his daughter's finances, not her person. Jody Montgomery was appointed by the court to oversee Britney's personal life, and Montgomery could not be reached for comment. Roy Acuff's primary fiddle has found a home at the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum in Nashville, thanks to Vince Gill. Gill found out that the granddaughter of a member of Acuff's band was going to sell the fiddle, so he bought it, believing it belonged at the museum. It was a gift to Acuff from U.S. Army members who discovered it in a bombed-out music store in Frankfurt, Germany at the end of World War II and is now on display in the museum's permanent collection. And why did Richard Branson name yesterday's Virgin Orbit mission to space Tubular Bells? Well, it's because that was the first album his Virgin Records label released in 1973. Yesterday's mission delivered satellites from the U.S., Netherlands, and Poland into space, Virgin Orbit will do three more test flights of its rocket ship this year before taking paying customers into space next year. And that's your entertainment news. I'm Christy Lee. More of the Bob and Tom Show on the way. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob and Tom. Here's some Donnie Baker 4th of July tips and tricks to keep you safe. Oh, good. Well, number one, alcohol and fireworks do not mix. No. So make sure you do all your drinking beforehand. <laughs> And number two, practice food safety. Two years ago, my cousin Tabitha came down with scabies after our Fourth July party. <laughs> and she blamed my Aunt Pootie's pea salad and said the mayo went bad. <laughs> which we all know, mayo can't go bad. Basically, anything they put in packets is safe. <laughs> for God. Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Hello, this is comedian John Evans. Padoom, 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 and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. I bet you were fun in school. You had a good time in school. Yeah, I bet the teachers loved you. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. did. They uh -huh. did. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh -huh. right. Yeah, I went to school. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you about this. <laughs> You look like you spend a lot of time lifting weights. Are you a fitness Oh, buff? yeah, I like to pop a little iron. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I drink the protein shakes, take the vitamins, take the St. John's for my wart. I do the whole thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you got a wart, dude. I like to go out and chalk up. The whole key is chalking up. You got to chalk up when you go. You got to chalk it up. I got the weight belt on. Chicks dig the weight belts. They dig the weight belts with a name on the back. You know, Steve. <laughs> I don't know who Steve is, but he's missing his weight belt. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you were waiting for? That's the, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I like to pump it up. You got to be in top shape because I play golf. You do. You guys know the golf bit. Oh, yeah. I love, I love golf. golf. I got a lot of golf. I got some new golf jokes. I play yeah. a lot of golf. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Every hole, like 14,000 strokes. That's a lot of golf. You know what I mean? <laughs> I look like a propeller out there just swinging away. <laughs> I love golf. <laughs> I swing with one hand. I don't even use two hands. I don't care. The instructor's always trying to change your grip. Like, hey, you're not the boss of me. <laughs> <laughs> I hit that ball as hard as I can, walk six feet, and hit it again. <laughs> Every hole, I use the driver. Par three, I don't want to see a seven. And iron. I let the big dog eat. I grip and rip it. I got the weight belt on. Steve's playing some golf, baby. You give me a golf cart, a 12 pack, and a lake, I'll show you how to have fun all day. You ever wonder how far a golf cart can go on a lake before it sinks? You ever wonder? 13 feet. I love golf. What a sport. It's a good sport. Hi, this is Greg Warren, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Are the stars out tonight? I don't care if it's cloudy or bright. Because I'm blind. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Bob and Tom, 24-7. Lock up, it's July 4th weekend. 
Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks very much for joining us. Oh, yes. It sounds like the Ace Cosby Private Dick TV show. You ever hear that phrase, private dick, instead of private? Look I'm... at that dick. Look at that dick. Oh, He's so private, Ace Cosby. Look at that dick. <laughs> I, maybe we'll call it a private eye. How about that? Oh, oh. Look, Look at that, that dick eye. the private <laughs> eye has. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's, I meant to turn that into yeah. Yeah. something humorous. Okay. No, that was very funny. Doesn't this sound like a TV cop music, though? It does. Yeah, it's cool. All right. Something from Steve Ali. Look at that, Ali. Uh, Chick McGee is right over there. There's uh, Josh singing about uh, private eyes. Did Steve Ali ever have an album called Ali Ali Oxenfree? <laughs> oh, my God. That'd be a good title for an album for this. Ali or nothing. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Ali Oops. Yeah. It's all loopers. Alley, yeah, they all, just nothing it's but all clams. Clams. Thank you very much. Uh, that's uh, Willie G. And then let's see, we've got uh, 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 Christy has had to run a very specific errand. In the meantime, we do have Jessica Alsman, who Hello. is going to be weighing in shortly with Allie Breen when it's sexy time, <laughs> talking about uh, the world of dating, et cetera, et cetera, where things go right and things go wrong and things get hot. Yeah, lots of panty raids. It, it's all it's all Whatnot. coming up right now. I'll I'll do some of the news duties if you don't mind. <laughs> I got a couple things of interest over here. Uh, this is an uh, one of those things on Reddit. A uh, Reddit user has published her account of a wedding she went to. She was invited to the wedding. She describes it as a gorgeous and expensive venue. Yes. However, the cost of hosting the beautiful ceremony meant apparently cutbacks in various areas. She was shocked to discover she and the nine other guests were asked to help wash up the tables and do the dishes after the bride and groom chose to self-cater their wedding and failed to hire anyone to clean up the mess. All right. Well... Sounds kind of fun. I mean, you know, why not? Fun? Roll up your yeah, sure. Roll up your sleeves. I don't know if it's fun, but it's different. That's it's kind sure. of fun. The maid of honor is actually a maid. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if there are only 10 people there, it's, you got to be pretty close friends to be. Yeah. Yeah. It's it got a nice little, nice small wedding party. Sounds like fun. But uh, I often, don't you find yourself sometimes at restaurants wishing you were working there instead of eating there? Never. No. No. <laughs> what do you mean? Never. Huh? Never. Oh, I think Never. Maybe that's just me. Yeah, I'm, I think it's just you. I tried to be a waitress once and I cried. That was like four days of training and an old older lady after church was very rude. Um, yeah. Made you cry? I cried. Go to the walk in fridge there. Day. Tough job. Wrong strategy. She talked for everybody at the table and I brought out what she said and apparently that was still wrong. Now you put pubes in the oatmeal, yeah. she'll shut up. <laughs> yeah, yep, that'll do it. <laughs> the old tricks. <laughs> um, what's the thumb trick, Chick, for a waiter? Yeah, you, know, you come over and say, hey, can you take your thumb off my steak? And the waiter goes, well, if you want it to fall on the floor again, I can. <laughs> <laughs> what happens? Yeah, these, it's these, already got floor are, spooge on it. These are classics. Oh. Here's a nice story. A taco truck owner in the great state of Washington... Has died. It, <laughs> oh, no, sorry. Video has gone viral. He called to check on his best customer when she had stopped showing up. She, she had died. died. <laughs> she did? Did I say this was a happy story? Well, maybe it was the a bad person. explained that she had known the owner of uh, Taco Tom's Lunchera for 12 years and picked up food from him several times a week. She was stuck under her car? She'd been suffering from some health issues that prevented her from visiting the truck for a while. Oh, Tom she, tracked her down. She was dying. Just to see how she was doing. He was concerned. Well, it was food poisoning. <laughs> <laughs> food poisoning. <laughs> truck, <yeah>. Taco. <laughs> taco. <laughs> it's fish taco uh, Tuesday. Uh, pork pork yeah, burrito. Oh. That's how we're going to know you're dead, Josh. How's that? Oh, boy. oh geez. Uh, Buckle up, Josh. <laughs> Will you stop ordering food? Uh, yeah. uh, the guy, oh, I see. Yeah, the guy at the Wendy's drive-thru. <laughs> and what happened to Big Fella? The Baconators finally... Big got. Fella, they call him. <laughs> <laughs> big, 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 big Fella. Big Fella. Where's Big Fella? Uh, big Fella. <laughs> do, they re do they recognize you at certain places? Uh, that, uh, for example... <laughs> Trying to backpack. <laughs> no, backpack. Yeah, you? in other words, okay, I'll do it this way. Willie, when you oh, you, well, you get all your Starbucks, you always do it on the online. In the drive through sure, yeah. But I mean, if they if you walk in, is there a restaurant you walk into? They know what you're going to get. I've had this happen to me. The burger place I go to in Chicago, I forgot to order fries or whatever one time. So, oh, can I get an order of fries as well? And I had already paid. And the guy goes, Oh, dude, don't worry about it. I'll just give them to you. You come in here all the time. Uh -huh. And I go, Thanks. And he goes, Oh, uh, I didn't. Not like all the time. Like you come in here a regular amount. Okay. I'm so sorry. I'm like apologizing. But I mean, do you go to into place and they know what you you always get the same thing? No, they no. Uh, I I but I would like that. I think that's cool. You like that though, don't you, Tom? Well, I mean, that's you me. You go in. You I get don't the same thing every time at the same places all the time. Right. Yeah. 
there's a place that I where I know uh, some of the servers and stuff because I've, I go in regularly. But it's like, hey, man, how are you? Yeah, good, good. You're going to get something different every day? Yeah, I do. I, I always get something different. You read the menu? Yeah. Well, that's yeah. hard. That's too, that's too much work. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Alsman, you do that? Do you go into a place to go, oh, Jessica's here, she's going to get whatever, no? Nobody, I think uh, maybe the Culver's drive through they're like, shocker, another <laughs> vanilla sundae with strawberries. Yeah, but they can't um, see you, right? Oh, uh, I pull up to that window, <laughs> it's usually the same guy. A lot of them have cameras now. Yeah, at some the, drive throughs do have cameras. Right, right, they're they're watching. A lot of them have Tom, cameras. Not, not food, but uh, back in the day, I, certain bars I would go into, they like, go sit down and they just bring out what I always order. What did you always order? Uh, Middle of Light and Shot of Jack. Yeah. All right. Is there that's a name? Cool. Is there a name for that? Yeah, it's Cosby. <laughs> well, that's no, no. They made no, sure the, to call that one the Ace Cosby. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the, the Cosby's a shot of Cosby Jack. tastes of horse drop of horse tranquilizer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> and the Cosby comes with a medicine dropper <laughs> <laughs> and a good lawyer, apparently. Yeah, Ace, uh, I would have that. The bar I ran my old open mic that have a boiler maker for me, ready to go. You get the beer, you get the shot. But you see this story. This this lady would come. All the time, this guy got worried. Yeah. Something's yeah. wrong with her. I'll just make the news. Yeah. Because, it's, because <laughs> then they did they did a GoFundMe sure. thing. Oh, never mind. GoFundMe for it, what? The sweet. lady? I wonder how he got her phone number. Yeah, this guy's a creep. <laughs> <laughs> he always said, never mind. I'm not going to even read his Sounds name. Sounds like he's harassing her. How'd this, uh, how'd this end? Everything all okay? Yeah. Everything's okay. The lady, she had a minor illness, and she's okay now. I, <laughs> all right. He doesn't know. He gave her a minor <laughs> illness out of the clear blue sky. Ah. Uh, she had, um, this just says, health issues that prevented her from visiting the food truck. Doesn't go into anything, any grinny great detail. Uh, okay, um, there's a, now Ace, you're the big coupon guy, right? Mm -hmm. Now, do you have coupons on your press, on your person right now? There's one on my desk. Uh, what's it for? Uh, Zequil. Okay, what is Zequil? It's a liquid melatonin. Uh, okay. it, it's oh, a Zequil nice with a sleeping aid. Oh, I see, okay, okay, okay very, good. very good. How much are you going to save with the coupon? Dollar fifty. Okay, very nice. <laughs> Authorities in Texas have identified over 80 people in an illegal coupon ring. There we go. KPRC. News with a vision of what news can be. Reports the investigation <laughs> began last year when a person had purchased over $200,000 worth of stuff using counterfeit coupons. Preliminary results indicate almost $10 million in losses from these things. Wow. They seized a truckload with over 4,000 items, including cleaning products and toys. And you know how this worked? No. They would uh, print fake coupons, buy a bunch of stuff, and then they would sell it all online at a great profit. Oh, geez. What a, that's yeah. a lot of work, I, I would think. Well, a but, lot uh, of profit they were. It's, I, I guess, I guess. Um, I, although if you go to jail for counterfeit coupons, that's probably not a lot of street cred. No. Yeah. What are you in for? I knocked a buck fifty off of Lysol. Especially I, if you have two cellmates. I guess it's buy one, get one, pal. <laughs> Bogo. Yeah, Bogo. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> More like Bofo. Uh, okay. Well. Do they, do, Ace, do any places still have double coupon day? No, they pretty much went away gotcha. years ago. When they realized. They used to have double and triple every now and then. How about that? Do you, uh, do you um, have. Uh, um, the coupons that you print off offline. Uh, I'd, they, say, I'd say ninety five percent of my coupons are on you know the apps. Okay, and so you, you don't. The last paper coupon I used was uh, at the place to get my oil changed. So it was half off. So how about that? Wow. Significant. Save, save twenty bucks. You've are given we, me coupons to places that you know I go yeah, to. Are we talking about coupons? <laughs> That's right. There's, yeah. a, there's a huge coupon, coupon cutting <laughs> and saving coupon. money. Uh, and you need, and you need to check out the TV show Extreme. And coupons coupon. and coupons. There was a comedian who uh, had a joke about how you know how coupons say they're worth like one one hundredth oh, of a one tenth of a, a mil cent or, or something. something. Yeah. He said that he used to go into gas stations when gas would have fractions on it and he'd go and pay with exact change. <laughs> Hilarious. Why did they do that with gas? Do you remember that? Yeah. It was like 209 9 tenths or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that is odd. Yeah, that was it? weird. Uh, uh, when we come back, yeah, we're going to uh, hang out with Allie Breen. <laughs>
I'm going to choke chick to death. You park on a driveway and drive on a parkway. Isn't that weird? Yeah, man. He's just making conversation. <laughs> a coupon save you money, huh? Uh, dead man talking. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I ain't scared. Uh, coming up, we have uh, we have Allie Breen with Sexy Talk. Ooh. We'll find out about what's going on in the world of dating and uh, romance, love, shacking up, yep. going down. Shacking up. <laughs> going, going down. down. Wow. I mean, getting down. What am I saying? <laughs> no, going uh, down. Uh, you said going it. Down. Okay, well, going up. Genie, uh, uh, when, when we come back, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Morning laughter <laughs> just might be the best medicine. I can hear you. Oh, no. You're talking out your ass again. Bob and Tom, 24-7. <laughs> and again, a special thanks to everyone who came out to the Benefit Show last Friday night to help send kids to summer camp. Nearly $10,000 raised at the Irving Theater in Indianapolis. Willie G on stage. He'll be on stage again hosting for Megan Gailey at the Helium Comedy Club in Indianapolis. That's the upstairs room, July 6th and 7th at 8.30 p.m. That's next Tuesday and Wednesday. If you're interested in going, tickets on the link at Willie's Instagram bio at willie.griswold that's w-i-l-l-i-e dot griswold g-r-i-s-w-o-l-d at willie.griswold for tickets to see willie hosting for megan gailey at the helium comedy club that's coming up next tuesday and wednesday night at 8 30 july 6th and july 7th get out there and support the young man you were listening to bob and tom 24 7 Good morning, I'm Mark Allison with things you may have missed on the Bob and Tom Show this morning. Bill Cosby has been freed from prison after Pennsylvania's highest court overturned his sexual assault conviction. It's a stunning reversal of fortune for the comedian once known as America's dad. The state Supreme Court in Pennsylvania said Wednesday the prosecutor who brought the case was bound by his predecessor's agreement not to charge Cosby. The 83-year-old Cosby served nearly three years of a three to ten year sentence. Cosby was promptly set free from the state prison in suburban Montgomery County and driven home. The NCAA has cleared the way for athletes to profit off their fame and celebrity. The move comes just as legislation is set to become law in a dozen states that would allow for that kind of compensation. The NCAA wants to have federal laws or its own rules regarding the issue known as NIL. It was forced to seek a temporary solution. The decision applies to more than 450,000 athletes across all three divisions of the NCAA. And those are things you may have missed. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. There's a small meteorite heading toward Legoland. Uh oh. Damn it, should be limited to 50 square blocks. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad. I like that. I like that one. Okay. Ace, hope you got another one. Oh my God! I think anger. Joke of the day. Well, Chick was mentioning uh, the pirates on the helmets of the buccaneers. And yeah. The smiling and the winking. Yep. <laughs> pirates are great singers, Chick. You know that? No, I didn't know that. They can hit the high seas. Oh. <laughs> Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. You don't say we didn't warn you. I'm warning you, don't do that. There's laughter ahead. I should be having a better time <laughs> if this is a party. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. I'm sick <laughs> of being sick. 
This is comedian Tim Cavanaugh, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. I actually uh, have a, a sexual fantasy associated with the earthquake. Go. All right. Woke chick up. Uh-huh. Mm. Uh, in my fantasy, I am making love to this woman, yeah. and then all of a sudden she feels the earth move beneath her. Mm. Ah, yes. And then she rolls over on top of me and shields me from debris. <laughs> 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 Safety first, everybody. Safety first. <laughs> Bob and Tom. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Ace Cosby's right over there. He's our engineer. He's the proprietor of the Ace Cosby Joke of the Day. That's Chick. I'm Tom. There's Willie G, Patty G, through the glass in the Oxford Gold Performance Room. Nice performance today, Pat. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have Jessica Allsman uh, sitting in, getting ready to uh, hang with us today. Yeah, howdy. Because uh, I think we have sexy time coming up at some point with Allie Breen. Uh, We'll surely look forward to that. Right now, I have a special request. Um, uh, for those of you that have been uh, driving this summer, pretty much wherever you are, you're probably running into an orange barrel or two. Uh, Got to fix the roads. Uh, sometimes things slow down a little bit. Orange barrels, orange barrels, everywhere I see. Orange barrels, orange barrels, looking back at me. Look at Larry, Daryl, and Daryl, standing next to the orange barrel, looking back at me. They have signs that say slow down I drive 25 through town Their faces are dark and dirty and brown They're looking back at me (laughs) Orange barrels, orange barrels Everywhere I see Orange barrels, orange barrels Why can't I be free? Look at Larry, Daryl and Daryl Standing next to the orange barrel In their orange vest apparel Looking back at me They stand in their stinking sweat I haven't seen them working yet They have to pee in a portalet And their butt crack smiles at me (laughs) If I could fly I'd leave this world behind And I'd free up my mind From this debris Any orange barrels looking back at me Orange barrels, orange barrels Everywhere I see Orange barrels, orange barrels Looking back at me Look at Larry, Daryl and Daryl Standing next to the orange barrel In their orange vest apparel They piss off my girlfriend Carol Who's sitting next to me We drive through the rain and snow To orange barrels Here we go with the work get done Well, no one knows it remains A mystery Orange barrels, orange barrels, orange barrels, orange barrels. Todd Yon and the Bob and Tom Band and Orchestra. A great arrangement by Steve Ali. A great song from Todd. Well done, sir. In honor of um, parking while driving, which is happening right now. Now, we got uh, sexy time all hooked up here, I think. I can see in the big <laughs> we, screen. Stop saying we've, yeah. <laughs> we've, we, we've hooked up with, like with Allie Breen. Allie, uh, I give up. Where are you? Atlanta, through the forest. Okay. Are you in a hotel? No, no, no. I'm in the... I'm in the Guest room or where I'm sleeping, it's just the I match the background. Uh huh. Are you okay. underwater? At all? <laughs> underwater? Yeah, it's, it's not not. I know. Great. I don't know. 
it's not great sound, but we'll we'll persevere. Um, Allie Breen is a stand-up Perfect. comedian, and she is the host of uh, Sexy Time. And uh, yes. uh, we have letters about love troubles. What have you got, Allie? Dear Allie, my husband and I have been married for 15 years. We have a happy marriage all around, including our sex life. However, lately he's been wanting to spice things up. He wants me to look at solo erotic photos or videos of men that I find attractive. Specifically, well-endowed men. Just by themselves, not with each other or even other women. I was very confused, so he explained he wants me to look at them while he watches me play with myself or while he speaks at the Y. Oh. Is this weird? I'm not opposed to it necessarily. I just don't know what to say. What should I do? I'll take the answer. Yes, it's weird. <laughs> Your thoughts, Chuck? Weird? Uh, look, if you, it, it, it's his thing. Uh, if you're comfortable doing it, do it. If not... Uh, don't do it. Well, she already says, I don't know what to think, so why think about it too much? Then? I mean, it's going to turn him on. So if you if that's your, if you would like to do that, then... Uh, just, uh, <laughs> he, let, let me ask you this. Is he, bringing the, uh, is he bringing the appropriate literature to the event? Or yeah, do you have right. to go research this? Uh, yeah, exactly. Do you have to hunt for the uh, photos you... Right, does he have the suggestions? Yeah, yeah, he yeah. wants specific people for her to look at. I'd say it's more his thing. He well, wants yeah, it's definitely his thing. Afar. I found this on uh, Donkey D. <laughs> 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 yeah. That's a little odd. I, I got to right. tell you. Yep. Okay, well, let's just get to our next letter and hope it's... <laughs> Less <laughs> weird. <laughs> Dear Allie, I just moved in with my boyfriend, and for the last month or so, I keep having sex dreams about my ex while I'm lying next to him. Yes. Last night, I was so turned on, I woke him up to have sex, and now I feel really bad about it. Should I tell him what's going on? It's just a bad sign. Do not, no. Yeah, no, it, don't, do not tell him. No, it's neither. It's neither, mm-hmm. all right? Some, a dream interpreter would tell you that you're not really dreaming about your ex, that it's something else going on, that it's that represents something, you're fine. Was she dreaming or thinking about him? Dreaming, right? But that means she was thinking about him if she was dreaming about no him. No way! I've had dreams where I'm uh, friends with a lizard, and I, w- I hadn't been thinking about being friends with a lizard. Oh, yes, God. it does! <laughs> can, I, can we just say that I hope it just stopped with friendship? Well, the lizard was very sweet to me, and I was considering... Oh, well. No, but yeah, no. Dreams don't mean really any. You're, yeah. you're fine. It probably means a fear of change or commitment. Exactly. So you're trying to backtrack. Read the, I'm sorry. I'm confused. Read the read the first part of the letter again, please. I just moved with my boyfriend, and for the last month or so, I keep having sex dreams about my ex while I'm lying next to him. Uh, okay. No, you woke up. You had sex with your current boyfriend. Uh, that if you would. Wow. Well, do you, are you thinking about him during that, or are you calling him that name? Any of these things coming out? Well, she said she got so turned on by the dream, she had sex with her current boyfriend, but that doesn't mean she's still thinking about him, I yeah, guess. You can't she's help you have a dream. Yeah, you can't help your dreams. Yeah, as long as she's not like, texting him. Exactly. Now, if you start pursuing your ex, then you've got problems, but... You're not doing that right now. And your boyfriend's happy to reap the benefits. Yeah, but do not tell your boyfriend about these dreams. Yeah. <laughs> There's no reason to. It's a no win. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Okay, next letter, please. Dear Allie, my birthday was last week, and my best friend threw me a Greek-themed party. Uh, my Greek boyfriend themed? gifted me... I didn't hear Greek you. Themed. Yeah. Greek? Greek? Like, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Greek-themed party. My boyfriend's gift to me was a mariachi band that was a surprise for everyone. Uh, a Greek he mariachi. Thinks it was romantic. Yeah. <laughs> he thinks it was romantic, but I think it was the worst gift ever. It doesn't even match the theme, and it literally annoyed everyone. I'm upset, but I feel crazy getting mad at him when he was trying to be romantic. What should I do? I think it's very cool that he did it. I think it's funny and fun, and if it was a party, yeah. it's okay, I and mean, you don't have to stick to the theme that uh, do you think you'd, I mean... I'm not familiar that much with the Greek culture, so maybe that would uh, pass. But at least he put effort into it. A mariachi band is always fun. Yeah. Really? You- <laughs> <laughs> oh, I t- do you don't like a mariachi band? You should say, I feel uh, like a mariachi band is always well, fun. Well, I always, if, uh, if I wouldn't not be saying it if I... Not everyone feels that way. 
I mean, there's a time. I think when you're at a place. Mexican restaurant and the mariachi band shows up at your table, it's so uncomfortable. This... Or like in New York, they're on the trains all the time. Yes. Yeah. Singing. And the train thing is but, not fun. I mean, Tom's the one saying oh, one who God. likes magicians at the table, too. So This don't, lady, this letter is not about a mar mariachi band. What is she, what are you really? She because she, she didn't get what she wanted. I think. Your yeah, what, friends are embarrassed. Something That's else is happening. Is. Your friends were like, "Oh my God, he did that to you. That's so embarrassing." And no, now you're fun. embarrassed. <sighs> yeah, but she hated it. Yeah, because she cares what other people. <sighs> you're think. mad about something else. Nobody gets. Yeah. yeah. She's like, if you're gonna do something in front of my friends, bring me a bunch of flowers, probably. Not a mariachi band. Right. Right. I have an idea. I kind of want to tell her to get over herself. Yeah, uh, hire a mariachi band. And the next time you guys are having an intimate moment, invite them into the room. Yeah, see how he likes. <laughs> <laughs> that is what they're great at, is ruining intimate moments. Um, no, I'm, I'm a big fan. Um, we should do mariachi, uh, mariachi Day on the show someday. Oh, mariachi Mondays? Yeah, how about a Saturday? Um, <laughs> what else do we have? Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's do it every week. That'd be perfect. I didn't say every week. It's just fun. Just, it's fun. Come mariachi on. Monday. Celebrate um, another culture. We look forward to that morning. Chick, we'll start it this Monday, okay? Five perfect. days from now. Okay. Perfect. Another letter, please, Allie. She should be happy it distracted from the Greek theme of the wedding because things could have ended. Yeah, very well, yeah. When you said Greek theme, I thought there was going to be a plug device and yeah, maybe Crisco. Yeah. <laughs> game of that was so cute. We've got away from that. <laughs> All right, dear Allie, my boyfriend thinks I'm uptight because I don't like it when he poops with the door open. Is this a stage that all couples really have to get to? <laughs> this is a this is a standard. Problem. I, you're not uptight about it. No. You what, can, was the, what was the show Jim Gaffigan played in a so-called open door dumper? Sex in the City. Okay. I, didn't, I never saw the episode, but I remember Jim talking about it. Um, yeah, that, yes. Yeah. I don't think you're being uptight. Uh, I, it's not unfair to say, hey, can you please close the door while you go number two? Or yeah. the next Keep time. Keep romance alive. Yeah. Next yeah. time you have to change your sanitary. Um, Napkin. Or, yeah, the tampon. Right. Just make him yeah. watch, and he can enjoy the what? What's your wrong show. With you? I'm just trying to get back at him. She's saying give him a taste of his own medicine. Right, and yeah. he's probably uncomfortable. Like, oh, I don't want to talk about your period. Now you can watch Or it. you could just like shoot him in the head. Out. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Chick, we get it. You're not going to play. Uh, yeah, I, uh, tell him that it's disgusting, and you don't want to see it anymore. Yeah. Get an outhouse. Okay, what else have we got? We got time for one more, Allie. Dear Allie. My boy, my girlfriend is on her phone all the time. When I come up behind her, she always does like a tilt away thing, so I can't see what she's up to. And recently, she got an actual tent for her phone, so I can barely even see her screen when she doesn't actually tilt it. Is this behavior that I should be worried about? Um, what do you the think? Tilt Josh? away? I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I you know me, I tend to give people the benefit of the doubt. Why don't you just ask her why she's being so elusive with the phone? Hey, what's what's the deal here? You you clearly don't want me to see anything. Should I be worried? That's Maybe she's she the one from the first letter, and she's hunting for more of those pictures. <laughs> Could be of you know yeah. don, of Donkey Dave and the <laughs> yeah, don, Donkey Dave and the four burrows. They're a mariachi band. Huh? The four burrows is so funny. Yeah. There probably is a mariachi band called the probably five is. the five burrows. The five burrows is hilarious. And the five burrows, and they spell it like <laughs> yes, yeah, they like the animal, but they, they play. We place that in Island. <laughs> That's right. Be in the Bronx this Tuesday. Come out and see. Them. Okay. Um, By the way, the devil. Just ask her ways. what she's up to. Right Talk to her. The, the devil's three ways right around the corner for that girl and that guy who wants her to watch the pictures. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's, 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 that's next. Yeah. yeah, that's very uncomfortable. That is true. Okay, I, 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 we have time for one more, Allie. I forgot. I'm looking at the clock. Dear Allie, my dog hates my new girlfriend, and it's not getting any better. He growls and he tries to bite her, and I have to put him in his crate whenever she's here. My <laughs> sister keeps telling me to listen to my dog, and that. She's probably a rotten person. Is this right or wrong? This sounds like the premise of one of those Hallmark Christmas movies. Yeah. And Josh, how would you end this one? Uh, it turns out that um, it turns out that he has a tumor that the or she has a tumor. The dog is detected, and then uh, the, everything's happily ever after. It right, ends, and the ends with them in a sleigh with the dog uh, sitting in the middle. Yes, yeah. The dog's not actually doesn't actually hate. Yeah, the dog uh, detects the woman something, is trying to do. Yeah, trying to yeah. help in some weird way. No, but back to reality. Uh, do you, do you or went over the dog, went over the man, I guess. Couldn't it be anything? Couldn't it be her perfume or yeah. the, something? I would yeah. talk to a dog person, a Maybe dog she has trainer. Cat hair or... A dog trainer. There's yeah. something. Right. 
Dogs can also be attention. Uh, they can be very, depending on the breed, may look at uh, his owner as his and, uh, you know, gets very, very too loyal. Yeah. I so. don't know, man. Dogs know. Isn't it? Doesn't Bill Murray say that? Yeah. Dogs Sometimes know, man. I do. I've had a dog that loves everybody except the UPS guy. For, what's the yeah. reason? Is it is it perfume? Is it odor? Right. It, it, you know, with, with dogs, you tend to go that direction. How about the Hallmark movie? The girl used to be a cat in a former life. Oh, yeah? How about that? And I like she it. comes back as a woman this time. Mm -hmm. and she's reincarnated. The dog knows it used to be a cat. It's called Christmas Pussy. That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Merry Christmas. I, I, can, I like everything about it. It's Christmas I think pussy. we're going to have to work <laughs> the Christmas Pussy in the five boroughs. <laughs> with Anna Kendrick. There, that'll make it a hit. <laughs> <laughs> they go out Christmas caroling with the Mariachi Five Borough yeah. Band. And, uh, I don't think we've done any, done any, done any uh, good today. No, I, no, we sure uh, haven't. Not helped anyone. We got a title of a new movie. Okay, yeah. I tell you what, we have time for. Let's let's try one more. See if we can fix something. Go ahead. What have you got? Um, I think that's it for the letters this week. Oh, okay, but I will okay. Tell you, no, are you are you? But there? I'll tell you, we did have a follow up to remember the breast implant one where the eighteen year old girl wanted to get breast implants because her mom had them. Right. Someone wrote in that at this day and age, boobs, depending on the girl, are a way better investment than college. So to go for it, <laughs> which uh, oh, yeah, oh, <laughs> could be true. I... Spending if you want to be an Instagram star, get right. those boobs instead of that degree. I guess. Well, there are a lot of great people with their degrees using them to help humanity. I'm not sure how many Instagram stars there are, but not that many. A lot of great women with uh, uh, nice boobs helping yeah, humanity, too. Uh, okay. Okay. Spreading joy. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Spreading joy in their Again, legs, we, right, Josh? That's we right. did no good work today except creating that new band, The Five Burrows. <laughs> yes. No, Donkey Dave and The Five Burrows. Don't forget the new movie. And plus, I've just jotted down, make sure to get a mariachi band for Josh's birthday. Perhaps they could play for the new Christmas movie. Your Josh? birthday's coming up, right? No, it was May 16th. Oh, sorry, no, yeah, what's coming up? Oh, you're, I'm sorry, the 50th anniversary. Do we have the countdown? It's oh, 31 days. 31 How about days? that? That's right. Five years of Josh, wow. Allie. It's hard to believe oh, it's, only been, it's only been five. Seems like 20. <laughs> and remember, I, I don't want a mariachi band. I want a one-man band. <laughs> No, that's, that's right. that Donkey not, Dave. Not Get a, him to come solo. How about a, a five-man band? <laughs> how about a one-man mariachi band? Oh, oh boy. <laughs> now, I, now I've got both Josh and Chip, man. <laughs> okay. No, no, I think that'd be a great um, idea. <laughs> uh, thanks, Allie. Are you working this weekend, or are you going to be down there shooting off fireworks? No, I'll be back in New York this weekend. I'll be at Eastville Comedy Club in Brooklyn. Oh, cool. Well, great. We'll go see yeah. Allie in Brooklyn. Thank you very much, Allie. You can find her, by the way. It's A-L-L-I-B-R-E-E-N on all social media platforms. Uh, send uh, Allie your love troubles, and we'll try to take care of them. I think today's uh, show kind of a failure. I don't think it really did any, anybody, anybody any good, do you think? Didn't help one soul. Nope. Okay, good. That's, that's, our, that's, that's our goal. Thanks. We'll see you, Allie. Thanks very much for coming right back. This is The Bob and Tom Show. Stay tuned. Who knows who will be next on The Bob and Tom Track Phone Hotline? This is The Bob and Tom Show.
Bob and Tom. If you irradiate poop, it will be sterile, but it's still poop. You can pick your morning radio show, but you can't wipe Bob and Tom on the couch. Rolling through a Thursday morning. It's July 1st, 2021. My name is Mark Allison. Thanks so much for joining us here today. Having lots of fun. And remember, for everything Bob and Tom, check out BobandTom.com. All the latest highlights, news, information, links to our social media sites. And, of course, you can see things like the nocturnal Uranius Blues with Duke Tomato and Pat Godwin. Ace Cosby with his best jokes of the day. Unfortunately, the highlight is his... Joke of the day strikeout. That's three in a row. Hard to do, but Ace managed to do it. And it's right there on the Bob and Tom website at bobandtom.com. Check it out, won't you? Hi, everybody. Christy Lee from the Navy Federal Credit Union News Desk. Bill Cosby's sexual assault conviction has been thrown out by Pennsylvania's highest court, which ruled he was unfairly prosecuted because a previous district attorney had promised he would not be charged. The justices found Cosby relied on that promise when he agreed to testify without invoking his Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination in a lawsuit brought against him by Temple University employee Andrea Konstad. A wildfire amid a record heat wave in western Canada has forced authorities to order residents to evacuate a village in British Columbia. Mayor Jan Polderman of Linton issued the evacuation order saying the fire was threatening structures and the safety of the 250 residents of the community, which is located about 95 miles northeast of Vancouver. Linton's temperature hovered around 102 degrees Fahrenheit yesterday, but that's down from Tuesday when the village recorded a new Canadian high of 121.2 Fahrenheit. And what you write in a private email or text may be not as private as you think. A top official with Microsoft says federal law enforcement agencies often asked secretly to obtain data from its customers. Tom Burt told a House panel the company gets between 7 and 10 secret requests a day. Microsoft is fighting such requests, saying law enforcement agencies are exploiting technology to skirt freedom citizens have from unreasonable searches. And that's your news. I'm Christy Lee. More of the Bob and Tom Show on the way. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob and Tom. Who says shore lunch? Who loves the skiing veil? Mm. Who's obsessed with Michigan? Who eats smoothies with kale? Uh. Who has a pie lady? Who has a cake lady? Who wears SPF 100? Even where it's shady? <laughs> Not me. Guess who? Tom. Tom. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Don't, 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 don't. The essential morning radio. Don't. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. 24-7. 24 in the studio with us, comedian Mike McRae. I understand you're a big Indiana Jones guy, is that correct? Uh, oh, yeah. That's my favorite movie series ever, man. Mm-hmm. And th- those movies are always like, when I went to college, I'd watch those all the time. I'd be like, like that would be the professor to have sure. for any kind of class. Because he just, every you know, every semester he just, you know, takes off for three <laughs> or four weeks to save the world. Or yep. Find some Inca staff in Peru or something, you know. Like he walks into the first day. All right, class, my name's Dr. Indiana Jones. I'll be your professor for Archaeology 101. You know, his dad busts in the door. Junior! Dad, I'm teaching class here. Junior, there's no time. We're almost zombies about to uncover the sword of destiny in a vandalic horde in Tunisia. <laughs> Look, I can't just go chasing after some sword all the time. It's not just any sword, Junior. It's Balmung. Balmung. The legendary sword of Siegfried. <laughs> Bestowed by his widow upon Theodoric the Ostrogoth before the slaughter of the Burgundians. <laughs> and then lost for a thousand years. The class is like, I don't know what he's talking about, but yeah, go find it. Go see the world. We'll be here when you get back. We'll be at the bar or the speakeasy or whatever they had back then. You know? be perfect. The class is parting afterwards. Hey, man, what did I tell you? Every semester, day, 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 day. <laughs> hey, this is Frank Caliendo, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24 7. 
This is Bob and Tom 24. Works. Holiday break. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Welcome back. There's Ace, there's Chick, there's Josh. Through the glass, Ms. Jessica Allsman is sitting in. Uh, Christy should be over there, but she's uh, got an appointment right now. She'll be back tomorrow. She was sitting at the Navy Federal Credit Union News desk and chair. Pat say right about now, she is speculumed up. Okay. Uh, very good. Uh, <laughs> Feet up in the chair. Scooch down. Scooch down a little bit. So can you're you? speculating about... I am speculating about spec- Can you speculum- scooch down a bit? It's like a okay. cold duck bill. Um, the Oxford Gold Performance Room featuring Pat Godwin is right there. Uh, scooch. I'm Tom. That's that's Willie. And Ace, of course, is our engineer. Now, uh, Chick, we were talking with, uh, with Al Jackson earlier. Yeah, yeah. And um, uh, you had a, a nice slang term that I was not aware of about eagles. Do you remember what you said? Uh, the eagle flies on Friday. I said when I, you don't have any money, you're between eagles. <laughs> I was being stupid and silly, but apparently... Oh, you, I, that, I thought that was a real thing. No, no he made it up, but I no, think it I works. I made it up it's because pretty good. the eagle like flies on Friday from that Almond Brothers. The eagle flies on Friday. That means everybody get paid. They just tell you the whole thing? Holy I don't remember that version. That's Etta James. <laughs> that means everybody I was gets say, paid. That was not one of the Holman boys. <laughs> <laughs> that no. means everybody gets paid. That's wow. right. Told you. The eagle flies on Friday. That means everybody gets paid. Oh, that is good. Love it. That is uh, some wow. nice singing and some nice uh, guitar. I love it. They put the footnote right there for you because I had no clue what she was talking about. Then she mm. just tells you. I love it, James. Mm. You know, uh, her name often comes up in crossword puzzles uh, <laughs> <laughs> for whatever sure. reason. Last. Estee Lauder, a bunch of random names just come up all the time. Um, I, so here we go. Here's another one. Saturday who does what? I didn't use that. He goes out to play. He goes out to play. Greg Allman and uh, Dwayne and the Allman Brothers Band. Go out to Boogie. Uh, uh, Very nice. Uh, Now, uh, we have uh, to review today in history, as we are uh, required to do. Time now for today in history. Here's your correspondent, Thomas Uh, Aloysius Curzon. 1905, Albert Einstein introduces his theory of special relativity. Oh. Oh, yeah. He thinks he's so smart. Yeah, Is that your, when your mom has a, a special female <laughs> yes. friend and since you call her her your aunt? <laughs> right. Is that right? Special relativity. <laughs> special relativity. <laughs> Later on, of course, he came out with the extra special. Wasn't that something? Theory of relativity. It's like everything else. They had to do a sequel, then pretty soon. Sure. Oh, this is the last one, then all of a sudden there's Relativity 7. <laughs> and then, what's the new one? What is it, uh, the car movie you guys keep watching? F9, thank you very much. Oh, uh, with, oh Fast and Furious 9. Uh, F9, car, please. The car okay. movie that we keep watching. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, I'm glad that you guys enjoy that. That'll, thank you. Well, I would t- say. Tell me when you go so that I'll know that the roads are I don't think we're at the, to the safer. point where we're enjoying them now. <laughs> it's got oh, to become no. a job. Actually. I am really really still enjoying them. Are you oh, crazy? Fine, okay. okay um, uh, today out. in history, uh, <laughs> uh, 1967, uh, Pat Godwin, what album hit number one in the United States and stayed there for 15 weeks? Sergeant Pepper. That's right. Jesus Sergeant Pepper's Christ. Lonely Hearts Club Band. <laughs> Son of a gun. Who Na- did that one? Uh, 1979, the first Sony Walkman goes on sale. I what, loved my what, Walkman as a what kid. What day? What day? Today, 1979. 1979, Sony Walkman. The cassette, everybody. Yeah, yeah started as a cassette. The one that try as they might, they couldn't get rid of the wow and flutter as you're... Uh Trotting along. <laughs> there had to be. There, uh, did some have a radio? This, this is the, something only Ace Chick and I will get. Do you suppose somewhere there was a morning show? <laughs> wow and wow flutter. And flutter maybe. <laughs> I feel like my Walkman had a thing where I could, if I were going to be, let's say, jogging or whatever, I could hit the switch hmm. and it was like a wow and flutter. Stabilizer. Stabilizer. Stabil- yes, it was yeah. a stabilizer. I know that they, they, they had them on this bin. Stop. Yeah. Stop. You know what I'm going to say? I know the CD, I, the CDs didn't work either. They were skipping too. Right. Yes, yeah. I know what you're going to say about Josh jogging with his walk. <laughs> right, right. Okay, okay. Yeah, I think but we it, all, ha- it would happen when I was younger. You were jo- you were a jogger? I mean, I played soccer for six years. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't always been the amorphous blob you consider me to be now. <laughs> no, I was just curious if you're jogging. Just curious, yeah. Mm-hmm. So he's just curious. Yeah, no, yeah, your curiosity. <laughs> Stabilizing <laughs> mode. Use it while you're furiously eating things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so sparks flying off his fork. Uh, 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 the, um, the Canadian National Anthem uh, appeared for the first time on this date. Um, what year? Uh, 1980. What? 
Yeah. The Canadian national anthem is only yep. 41 years old? Absolutely. <laughs> I, I, Still I, sounds fresh. I don't believe that. <laughs> okay. You can Google it if you don't believe me. Oh, Canada, stand on God for these. Uh, it was written in it, 1980. I, I don't know when it was written, but that's when it became the official national anthem. Well, you got to like what? a national anthem that gets right to the point, though, don't you? Oh, Canada, right I mean, there? Yeah. yeah. You, all you got is the O, oh, and then you're there. Don't you think? If yeah, you sure. So. Yeah, that's oh, here it is. Oh, right there, you know this what country is 1880. you're in. 1880. Huh? This is 1880. Yeah, 1980 doesn't make any sense. Oh, it, can't, it, can't, it can't be 1980. Right. It says 1980 right here in black and white. Well, maybe it's a misprint. Is it, it a has typo? to be. I don't think so. Doesn't this sound like it was... Yeah, okay, it's a... Adopted in 1980, but okay. that's what I said. Oh, that is what Tom said. Yeah, officially well, becomes the national anthem. Well, thanks, Ace. You led us astray. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can tell it was, it was between it. that and uh, Kim Mitchell's "Go for a Soda." Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, that was. Not, oh, I thought it was going to be something from the Guess Who. Oh, okay, Some maybe another Canadian maybe band, little yeah. Joni Mitchell. Uh, sure, uh, celebrating 50 years. Summer '69 for us. Kim Mitchell was also Canadian. Um, <laughs> or blow. Now this is for just one day. One this of my is jokes good enough. This is for Josh Arnold. Yes. <laughs> um, in 1984, the PG-13 rating was created by whatever August body rates movies that gets paid under the table. Yes. Um, for what movie? 16 Candles. No. 1984. 1984, PG-13. It was created for this movie, apparently. Is Josh in the right realm of movies? No. Is it part no. of the Brat Pack? Okay. No. Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, Close. Yeah. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Okay, how about that? Um, I had the year. I, okay. Same uh, thing, though, right? Oh, no, I'm get, wait a minute. I'm sorry. It, apparently, there was outrage over the violence in Indiana Jones yeah. and the Temple of Doom. And then they switched the rating, and then they, I guess the Red Dawn was the first one technically to have it. Oh, okay. Uh, Wasn't remember. there M for a while? G? Mature. There was M for mature. X, M, yeah. And I think Midnight Cowboy was the first X-rated movie mm -hmm. to win an Academy Award. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which in today's world would not... So I'm uh, still mystified by it. <laughs> you saved me too. Yeah, okay. Uh, time now to reveal what we learned on today's show. Oh, no kidding? Yeah. Uh -huh. Time now for Things We Learn, brought to you by Napa Auto Parts. Next day delivery or getting involved in their local communities. Napa goes above and beyond... To serve you because their motor never quits. That's Napa know-how. A lot of arguing today. Um, no, there wasn't. Uh, uh, <laughs> what are you talking about? I Shut up. Roger Waters, I think distinguished-looking guy. Uh, Ace and I both sat next to him. Yeah, you said handsome, sense. and I, that's and like 30 you miles took of off on road. poor Roger. Poor Roger. Hey, get used to this uh, this word, <laughs> N-I-L, nil. Uh, instead of meaning zero in soccer, it means name, image, likeness. Part of athletes getting some extra cash. The NCAA is uh, now part of that, so it sounds like fun for the people that can make some money. Bill Cosby's out of jail on a legal technicality. Terrific. Um, Harrison Ford, they have to stop production for three months on the new Indiana Jones. I'll be back. They've, uh, he, he very badly injured his uh, sh uh, shoulder. What well, doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Uh, I know. Okay. Um, the, there's a great video of a dog trying to get back into the house, ringing the doorbell after the fireworks scared him. Uh, well worth viewing. It's a very... Raja, very the good pup. Uh, flying cars, I don't think will ever happen. And if they do, uh, there are too many idiots in regular cars. I don't want them texting while flying, I think that might be even more dangerous. <laughs> uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. This is the Bob and Tom Show, brought to you in part by Navy Federal